this theology, but I've just recently learned about black people, actually Israelites and everything. But you're not, you're not able to understand that because you're bucking against it. I hear you, but it doesn't seem like you're coming. No, you heard God. I'm just a messenger. You heard what God said. All right. Uh, you can also email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com for more information. I'm trying to deal with I'm trying to build up. You chose a bum, and now you're saying you're miserable for being with a bum that you chose. Really? Hey, that we really got on this subject because y'all, you know what? I really, because, damn, y'all really just, I'm trying to live my life, y'all. Now y'all making me being held accountable for. all these things that's to push stereotype it's called a caricature that's what that is so that's how i talk that's that's what i have to say about that now as far as hey, the hey, men that get women pregnant and don't and don't want to take care of one second the men that get women pregnant and don't want to take care of the child well the bible says this about that uh, i'm sorry judge just real quick uh so right now you good 23 so Rock 26, 23, real quick. Sierra, I hope you're listening because the Bible does have a solution, sis. Read that for me. Ecclesiasticus 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So when a woman gets with a man and he decides to have sex with her and leave her, well, she got what she asked for in this sense. She looked for that man in the wrong places. God says a wicked woman is going to attract a wicked man. But a godly woman is going to attract a godly man. That whole notion or that whole old fashioned, uh, uh, what they call those things, um, wives tales of, oh, you know, opposites attract. The Bible doesn't say opposites attract. God says, no, you get exactly what you ask for. The, the vibrations you put out, the spirits you put out of evil, you're going to get something evil. But if you put the vibrations out there or the spirit out there of being righteous, you're going to get righteous. So that's what I have to say about that. If our sisters want godly men, they must become godly. If our brothers want godly women, they must become godly. Okay, my bad. Joe, go ahead, sir. Uh, no, I was just going to touch on the statistics because when uh, the sister said, you know, how do you put that up with women on welfare and things like that? That's another uh, stereotype that's pushed out when you talk about the uh, welfare queens and things like that. You know, um, the majority of people that's on welfare definitely don't look like us. You know, it's Caucasians. That's the majority of people that's on welfare. A lot of these uh, Republican or red states, you know, all these people, they're on welfare. Now, some of the most poor, some of the poorest places Guess what? It's got a, a concentration of white people there that are on these programs. But just like what Dion was saying, what, what they push on the forefront is that it's our women that's out there on welfare and stuff like that. Nah, that's 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 they are our, are our women on welfare, but that's not the majority. And that's but they want us to think that just like a lot of just like women. I think Kevin Sandwich used to call it the color, the color, color purpling of America. Is where we they show these movies and then we think that that's what was happening every day in every life. Well, really, you got a lot of black women. They had a woman on that was saying she'd rather have six kids by six different baby daddies because she can make this much money uh, instead of having six kids from the same father when it comes to welfare. So this is actually a, a come up. And a finesse for a lot of black women. That's why, you know, we say, uh, I think we need to reverse it to black women ain't shit. Go ahead. I was going to ask her the same thing. Go ahead, Pentecost. Sierra, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome.
And um, I wanted you guys to know that you must uh, follow the room, Biblical Smoke, and you can also hashtag us on Twitter, Biblical Smoke. If you have any questions, you can email us at BiblicalSmoke at gmail.com. So we have Adriana on stage and Osakimi, David, and Cyrus. We'll get to you. Um, Adriana, you're hey, up. Hey, what hey, you real quick, real quick. I want to say this real quick, though. Before we before we get too deep into this, I just want to point out that my, I myself is, is married to a black woman. Uh, Jay married to a black woman, Yosef married to a black woman, Dion married to a black woman, Benjamin married to a black woman, Ibuka, I don't know if you're married or not. I think you're on the verge of being married or looking to be married to a black woman, correct? Yes, sir. And Pentecost? Married to a black woman. Married to a black woman. So when we say this, we I hope it's easy to be understood that we're not talking about every single black woman on the planet. So I, you know, so Sierra, you you may be one of these black women that we're not talking about, but we we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta point out the obvious sometimes. So I'm gonna meet my mic on that. Go ahead, Pentecost. Accountability. Accountability has to be accepted. It's the only thing that's gonna heal our community. We gotta look at ourselves. And when we're dealing with the black woman, she can't always say, Oh, well, what about the man? That's not accountability. Accountability is you playing your part. What is it that you're doing? Are you do you fall into the category of what we're discussing tonight? And if you do, then well, okay, now there's a mindset change. There's accountability that has to be taken. So I hope y'all supposed to do that tonight instead of coming on the defense and want to bl- blame blame the man. You know how y'all do. Oh, what about him? Okay, he ain't shit. What about you though? <laughs> you might not be shit either. You understand? And it's okay. You just gotta accept it. Then roll with it and get better. All right, well said. Um, Adriana, you're up. Black women ain't shit. Some of these black women, and I say that coming from um, yesterday's experience that I had interacting with another black woman who was blatantly throwing herself at my husband. And it was just like, come on, have some, have some decorum, have some respect for yourself. He's married. He's not interested, but she couldn't, she couldn't help herself, you know? And, um, I say that to say that that would be the type of woman that would be wailing and and twerking at the doggone clinic or whatever have you. And I'm not just a pick me or whatever one would feel because I'm saying this, this is again, an experience that I had yesterday as, as recent as yesterday. Um, and I heard someone mention that if any decent woman had a son, she would protect her son from these types of woman, women. And, and I do. I have a seven-year-old son and I have an acquaintance who came over who has six kids by several different men. And she thought that she was going to vet and pick my son for one of her daughters. And I told her, no, my son would not be marrying your daughter because I see what kind of tree she comes from. And that was no disrespect, but I want more from my son. And looking at his stock, he comes from a two-parent home. They're invested in him, a black father who's active and involved in his life. He got a little more stock than you, and I need somebody who can match him. So when you guys say that some of these women aren't anything, I I wholeheartedly agree because they're proud of their 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 discretions. They're proud of wanting to be able to sleep around and abort the baby because it didn't work out how she thought it was going to work out. They're proud of this, sleeping with married men and then wondering why he never ends up with her. Like, I know people like this. I see people like this. They're in my family. So I can't sit back and say niggas ain't shit without evaluating my sister. And I don't mean my sister. I mean my sister's. Um, I can't say it without evaluating it. I had ain't shit moments in my life. I can't say he ain't nothing and not look at me because it's the plank in the boulder thing. Hey, I wanted to ask you, since we got you on stage, what do you think about the topic about like how black lives matter never shows up when it comes to uh, abortions? Like we see them march for everything and, and collect money for everything. Like, why don't they, why don't they collect money to, to go against the ordeal of abortion? Why don't they protest that? Um, if you ask me, Black Lives Matter is a gimmick, but um, I feel like they can't go against topics that are too risque. It, w- it wouldn't be in their best interest to go against 
um, protesting abortions or not being able to abort. They want to be able to still get that money. A lot of people want to be able to abort their baby. So if the money is coming from people wanting to be able to abort their baby, they're not going to stand up against abortions, um, if that answers your questions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, you, you have, that was heavy what you said. It's not in their interest. But they have yet they have the label Black Lives Matter. I guess that only means the black lives that are already alive. It doesn't mean the ones that have not yet made it to the world. Damn. It don't mean the one that can't give them no dollar. I can't I can't support the one that ain't here yet that's not lying in my pocket. I got to make sure I get the one that can give me the money. And if that means killing this baby to get that almighty dollar, I'm going to do that. Wow. No, Adriana, just to be clear, you're saying that's what Black Lives Matter will do or because, you know, people will listen to the and think that that's how you think. So you just just to be clear, just to be clear, I'm, I'm speaking in the term of black lives, not not me. Yes, because people take stuff. All right. Hey, uh, you know, what? Ain't it, ain't it strange that like Jeff Bezos, uh ex-wife is donating all this money for black women to be able to kill their babies, why not donate money to schools, you know, in neighborhoods or for um, tutoring programs or for, you know, it's so many things that we need in our communities. Why are you donating money for women to be able to kill their babies? And you know what? Uh, they say that's the same thing that the U.S. and... Um, and Europe does in Africa, instead of them going in and bringing in things that the uh, women there actually really need, like hygiene products and, you know, clean water and stuff like that. They're actually bringing in stuff to either sterilize the women or to be able to for them to have abortions. So it's, it's the same thing. It's like they can be using money to help. You know, Lizzo could use that. That million dollars could be used to help. Um Black women not make black bad choices to end up in a position to where they feel like they need to have an abortion. But instead, it's just, hey, look, let's just kill the baby. So it's a it's a I don't know, man. It's, it's It seems like we got some higher powers around trying to make sure that, you know, uh, like that, like that uh, lady said, I think, speaking with Trump, that is a victory for white lives. Me, my mic. Hey, by the way, um, I made made mention of that link with the mother that um, took her daughter to her porno session. The link is at the top if y'all thought I was lying. You my mic. Oh, by the way, Jeff Bezos' wife, the number that Judd was talking about was $275 million. That's what she donated to Planned Parenthood specifically for black women to abort their feet. That's what, that's what she did. So Damn. she couldn't find nothing else better to do to support black women than provide $275 million to um, to murder babies. It could have been used for education, um, housing, uh, anything, but it could only be used. It was only Damn. used. It was only cared about. I'll say it like that. It was only cared about black women when it came to them murdering their babies. Yes, we have to fund that. $275 million. Y'all can look it up. Benjamin. 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 Yes, sir. They can't see that? I, like, I guess like not. The, the, the black woman can't see that? Like, you don't see the blatant disrespect and racism? Yeah. They'll it, give you race. money to kill off your own race? Yeah. But then you, and, but then you mad at us for speaking on it. But you ain't mad and, at her for donating money for you to do it. Come on, man. And then you have, then you have our sisters like Lizzo, that's that's adding on, donating more money. And I asked this today on the radio on our uh, our show, um, because um the language that they're using is okay. Um, you're taking away women's reproductive rights and health care. If somebody could please just ex what does that mean besides murder? What other reproductive quote unquote services does these abortion clinics provide 
where you're not murdering a baby. Uh, what is it? What is it? Condoms? What? Somebody, please help me out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, peace the room. Uh, this, uh, my children come first. Uh, you mean to tell me Lizzo's a Nazi now? Cause I could have. I'm looking at this article. Hey, hey my says, my children, real quick. You um the question that Benjamin just asked. You got the answer for that question? Man, I ain't ain't no fucking answer to that question. All That's right. right there. We That's gonna come like, back to you. We gonna come back to you in the queue. So we keep it rolling the same way. So the people that been on before right. you, we can we can get it. We gonna come back. Right, to right, you right. Right. Judge, judge, my children. Right. So, so judge. We got um so my children don't know maybe Cyrus David Osakima Sakami Rachel Sister Chosen Sierra maybe y'all got an answer because this is the language that you know I've been hearing all weekend from protesters uh, um liberals and different uh, white women black women protesting they mad Nancy Pelosi. Um, what, what's the black lady name from, um, California, the senator lady, the old lady? Y'all know what I'm talking about? The old lady. Man, I know. I A.T. Maxine. Maxine Walters. You see, y'all, y'all auntie, auntie right? Auntie. Auntie. Y'all call her auntie. auntie. Your auntie would be happy if you murder your baby. She would man, make sure you have the right to murder your baby. Imagine if your mama murdered you. You wouldn't even be here. <laughs> you know? So... These people, these are the folks that keep saying reproductive rights and health care services, reproductive services, instead of calling it what it is. If it's something different, please let us know, please. Hey, hey and Benjamin, you know how you know it's BS is because um, in most states, women can go to the hospital, you know, for certain for services. You know, uh, if you don't have insurance. It's places you can go. You don't have to go to a place that uh, that you know aborts babies, you know. So it's it's kind of it's like they do offer other services, but those same services are offered at hos- at local hospitals. So it's like they make this place. Uh, they put it in the hood, you know. They don't. They, they put them in low income, uh, majority black areas. Um, so it's a convenience to go and deal with this issue. So, you you know, what, why can't they just go to the doctor? You know, why you can't go to the doctor if you have an issue? Why do you have to go to an abortion clinic that also does other things? Right. So it's so a judge. I got, two, now I got two questions. So besides that one question I got there, the next question, if anybody can answer for me, please, for, especially the sisters, when have these, the dominant race, that's that makes all the laws and passes all the policies in this land. When have they done something good for you? And the history of abortion, do you know it? You know, do, do you know the history of abortion, how it came about, why it came about? These are things you should know before you become a sexual deviant, like many of us was before, you know, we came into the knowledge of God, you know, and how do you stop it? Are you do you continue that behavior or those ways in your life, or do you stop knowing that there's another agenda that's against you if you become pregnant without being married, and the man possibly leave you because he ain't shit? You understand? So, like I said, that's my other question. First, I, I really, really, really would like the first question answered: the reproductive services, the healthcare services. What do they these abortion clinics provide besides murder? Please, somebody. Hey, hey Benjamin and Judd, before y'all go ahead, um, eighty nine. Just want to let you know the stat: eighty nine percent of the abortion clinics of the whole United States is in under uh, in in low income minority neighborhoods. Just to, just want to give that fact. Right, and uh, when you do call an abortion clinic, if you're funding it, you can say. You can decide if you want the funds to go primarily to a specific race. You can say, I want these funds, my abortion funds, to go specifically for African Americans. You can say that. Okay, I would like to answer the questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so from my knowledge, I believe just from like a non biased, neutral perspective, I feel like. Um, because I know if my fam- few of my friends have been there, they're, they're planned 
parenthood it's basically it does provide more than just like abortion it provides stuff like um conceptions and stuff like that it also provides like um like what's it called pads and tampons and like that for all those so it does provide like a few of women's health care you mean like walgreens does sorry you mean like walgreens and cvs provides pads and contraceptive so I guess so, but I'm just saying like they do provide those additional stuff as well, apart from like you know, abortion pills and stuff like that. That's what okay. I mean to add, right? Yeah. But, so, sorry. Yes, but, no, good, good. Yeah. So from and so I do understand that like they do provide that, but I definitely am against abortion. I am that I've been in that experience where I've thought about abortion, right? When you're practicing sex before marriage, like you're scared of those things. Like I've thought about it, so like I have. I sympathize with those women who are going to die. But I think it's naive of us to also think of it as it's not mothering a child. Like, you are mothering a child by doing that. So I feel like when we, um, when we, like, come to, like, oh, like, what I'm doing is wrong, and we ask for forgiveness, then we realize that we're heading towards the right path, if that makes sense. So a lot of times, um, when you look at the media, they're, they're only showing this one side of what abortion is about. They're making it seem like women can control their body, blah, 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 blah. But there's more towards this. I feel like abortion is a way to control women more than to release release women from control. Hey, so sis, I want to go back to your first point. So let me get this straight. <laughs> let me get this straight. You said that abortion clinics, besides murder murdering babies they provide yep. condoms and uh contraceptive con, 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 what how you say the word contraceptive contraceptives yeah that's what they provide besides murder that's the services they provide that's what you're saying they provide additional services like that yeah additional services okay so so far we got condoms and fiddle. That's what they provide besides murder. Yeah, for my knowledge, for my knowledge, yeah. Okay, yeah. And somebody's yeah, somebody else gonna have to answer better than that. Because no, because I I my no, listen, woman has been there I, and she I, got those services. I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand what you're saying, but because and I say I'm saying somebody's gonna have to give something way better than that because you can get contraceptives yeah. at the damn grocery store. You get contraceptives, but no, you get those things. You get those things for free. That's what I'm saying. You get those things for free. So, because you, so in other words, they, they help you be a sexual deviant. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's can what I it is. Can I answer after her? Sure. Hey, can I, let me get a script real quick, please, please, please. Okay, can, I, can I just say something to, like, lastly? Before, like, well, I... Real quick. No, no, I want to I hear what you got to say. But just let me just say this real quick. Okay. It wasn't a Solomon 14 where it says, uh, so great ignorance they call peace. It's 14, I think it's around 21. Yes, so great plays they call peace. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 22. Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of God. But whereas they lived in a great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. So since we live in a, a great war of ignorance, we don't know who we are. We don't we can't see, we got the wool over our eyes, we can't truly see the agendas behind these things like abortion, there's an agenda behind it. It's to destroy our nation, it's to destroy our race, to keep our, uh, the chosen lineage of God from entering into this planet and taking this world over like the Bible says is, is destined and prophesied to happen. We don't see that because we don't know. We live in a war of ignorance. We war with ignorance every single day. And this is why Benjamin asked that question, like, show me really what it is that these health care benefits, uh, what are the health care benefits of being able to have a clinic that you go to um, for for reproductive rights and so on and so forth. Like, there's really no health care benefits at all. Like, they don't teach our women to keep their legs closed until they're married. Like, they, they're, not, they're not doing anything to positively impact the community. Like, giving you a condom. That's just said. This is telling you to go sin. Here, you can do it protected. That's the same thing when a mother puts her young daughter on birth control. What is she telling the young daughter to do? She's telling her that it's okay to have sex. That's what she's saying. So it's nothing that they're really doing for us. We don't realize it's a, actually a plague. A plague is a disease that's designed to kill. That's what abortion is, and it, it has been implemented into our mind. And now we take that as some type of benefit. There's no benefit. To be, oh, 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 it's a right. I have my right 
to kill the child if I don't want it. And then the first thing black women say when you bring it up is, well, what about rape? Less than 1% of abortions, people, women that have abortions are rape victims. Rape victims. The other 99% are based off other factors. A lot of Yo, times um, because they just got pregnant by some dude that they didn't want to be with. Dion, Dion, I'm so sorry, my brother. I'm so sorry. But I just Great remembered up. something. We just, uh, it's all over social media right now. The lady, Jane Rowe, lied. Abortion and the 50 million babies that have been aborted in America, based on that case, Roe v. Wade, Jane Rowe admitted and confessed years later that she lied. She never had an abortion to begin with, and she was never raped by the 17 men she claimed to be raped by. She yeah. lied. And because she lied and the media pushed that, pushed out that uh, her case and began em and you guys began empathizing with her case and going her route. Now, our sisters have murdered 20 million babies since 1973. Ain't the white man happy. Damn. Yeah. And I also want to add. Hey, can I argue for abortion? Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, let Rachel speak. Go ahead, Rachel. Okay, I also want to add, like, if you look at the healthcare system, the healthcare system is actually against, like, black women when it comes to um, giving birth and stuff like that. So this whole agenda is really against us, and it's time for black people to actually wake up and not be enslaved to this. It's it's really sad, like, how we're easily swayed to believe in these doctrines that thrown into us without us doing our own research. So... And right now, it's hard for me to even go out my social media and say anything because I'll be attacked, basically. So, And I have to find safe spaces like this to speak my mind. And it's, it's truly sad that we can have our own opinions. Hey, get Amos 5 and 10. This ain't nothing. Yeah, new. I wanted to... Hold on, hold on, Mozi. You still got a few yeah, people. you just came time. on stage, bro. What the hell? Learn some respect. You just came on stage. You're just going to jump everybody that's in the queue and just speak your mind. Like, either mute out or get off the stage. Have some respect. Amos, chapter 5 and verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. So, this is what we're talking about, Sister Rachel. It says, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Actually, what you're doing, you're speaking upright. Abortion is wrong, man. And what they're doing is pushing this agenda in our community to continue to kill our children. Now, the reason I said that this is this ain't nothing new, because the Bible said there's no nothing new under the sun. Give me that real quick in Matthew 2.13. So, even during the time of Jesus Christ, abortion when i say abortion i don't mean the black woman actually killing her own child but i mean the nations wanted to cut off our children to stop the coming messiah from coming onto the earth that was something that was a ploy or a secret plot that they devised amongst themselves i'm gonna show you that matthew 2 13 matthew chapter 2 verse 13 and when they were departed behold the angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream saying Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. This is the uh, this is what the angel told Joseph about Christ, about what King Herod would do to Christ. Now, why would he want to do that? Because Christ was the coming Messiah destined to be the king of the Jews. And at this particular time. Who was the king of the Jews? It was Herod. You understand? It was Herod. He didn't want to lose that position to no black baby that was destined to come. So he devised a plan to destroy that child. Skip down to 16. Verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, he was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which, according to the time which he diligently inquired of the wise men. So this, so this white man, I want you to paint. I want to paint the picture. Her, Herod was an Idumean. He was an Edomite. Edomite is the so-called Caucasians. He wanted to destroy this black baby 
named Jesus Christ. And since he didn't know which baby Christ was, he just said, well, let's just kill all of them that are two years and younger. Hmm. What does that sound like today? Abortions. That's why Jeff Bezos' ex-wife is given $275 million. That's why you can listen to Planned Parenthood recordings where, they, where white people call in and say things such as, I would like to make sure that my donation goes to a predominantly African-American uh, clinic. Because I really want to help those people in their tough times of busting it open and letting niggas run up in them and get them pregnant. They're oppressed. They're going through it. So I really want to help them out by giving them the option to kill their baby for free. That's the same agenda. But many of you sisters can't see it because you don't know the Bible. That's why you can't see the things that the Bible has prophesied to come and has happened to our ancestors. Donald Trump said something to you black people. He said, you better know history because if you don't, it might repeat itself. And that's what you see going on in our communities today. All right. I mean, my wife. Right. And, you know, based on what um, Dion and Benjamin brought out, you know, black woman, you should feel tricked because that lady lied. That lady made a big lie and that big lie was pushed to, dis to have you destroy your own seeds, your own nation, your own um, people. So you should feel tricked about that and not go about praising it. But like, damn, I, we got played. Hey, and now she's against she's against abortions. Like, she's against it. She's an advocate. You know, she's an advocate against abortion. So it's it's kind of crazy. You know, she said she was a young, uh, dumb uh, young girl that was that did that made stupid decisions and she didn't know anything. And and people took her uh, took her story and what she had to say and they ran with it and they used her, you know, so uh, it's crazy. Hey. They have given our sisters liberty to do some evil stuff and be murderers and feel and feel good about it. You understand? I'm going to tell you what I mean. Say a brother gets into, into domestic violence with his pregnant girlfriend or his pregnant wife, and he pushes her down, and she falls, and she loses that baby. You do realize that he'll get charged with murder, right? He'll get charged with murder for, that, for her losing that child. But now she has the option to go to the clinic against his will. He can tell her, hey, I don't want you to kill my child. I want to have my baby. Just let me take the baby once he's born. And she can say, no, nigga, I ain't having no baby by you. Go to the abortion clinic and kill that baby. Think about that. <laughs> hey, me. that's a song. That's a song, Dion. That's that Megan Thee Stallion new song. Plan B. All right, let's see what um, Os Osakimi. Hey, hey, can I say something real quick? Joe, real quick. Go ahead, Barnabas. After, after um, also, Kimi, after Barnabas speak, you go ahead. Yeah. As what, as what Dian, Dian pull a scripture in Matthew 2, verse 13, right? Many people, many of these sisters can't see. They don't understand what's going on. So we are the eyes. You see what I'm saying? Because remember, in the time of Exodus, let me go back to Exodus real quick. In the time of Exodus, the slang what they use are the iptak, what they use in the time of Exodus. They said, come let us deal wisely. In this time, in this time, they use an iptak, what many of you guys don't understand. Let's go to Psalm 80, 83 real quick. I just want the first part right there. What they said they're going to do. What they're doing right now. Because that's what they're doing right now. They come with Black Lives Matters. But in the, time, in the same time, they use that word, you understand, we have 96 billion or million women being in board with their kids, killing their baby day by day. And some of them still said Black Lives Matter. Read the scripture from me right there. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, at verse 4. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation. No, 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 no. We said crafty, don't there, right there. Verse 3. Yeah. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And consulted against thy hidden ones. These things been talking, you understand, in Congress, in the White House, you understand, for real, in, uh, in all, you understand, the House of Parliament. They've been talking about these things, about us as a people. You understand, we're talking about, we're watching the war, about Ukraine and all these things. No, 
we wash in Corona. No, 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 no. It's bigger than that, brothers and sisters. Read it one more time again. Read it again. One more time. What's going on? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Because everything been hid from us other people. Everything been hid. No one been given, given no insight what's going on inside. You see what I'm saying? The only one going to give it to you is we, what we're pulling out right now out of the Bible. And you guys have to acknowledge you ain't going to get there until you understand what's going on. You have to come back to what God said we're supposed to do other people. You hear me? Come on, read on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That's what it is. To kill our baby every day. You understand? You know what we've been doing? We've been cutting off our nation. Same thing what they used in the time of Christ. That's what they was doing. They killed every baby from two years old and up. Now they say, okay, we can't wait until that time. Can I remember in the time of Christ, in the time of Exodus, we wait too long. They said, let's just start killing the baby from inside. That's what's going on right now. I want to let you guys see that for yourself. Open your eyes. Your eyes is too big. You can't see. You understand? Me or Mike and that. Trust me. All right? Oh, praises. Well said. Well said. Um, Osa, Kimi, you up. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. You know, the black woman is really embarrassing. Really, totally embarrassing. I don't know why she have to take a part in this. We are just so stupid following this white woman. She's the most dangerous thing in America. I don't know if, they, if any of them read medical apartheid to know how they strung black women up and cut babies out of them like hogs, mostly incited by the white woman. She have never been a friend to the black woman. She even said that when they started, they started the feminist movement, they wanted the black woman and just to break up the black family. Their whole plot was, their whole game, their whole motive. But they didn't know how to have a family. They was ignorant people. They didn't know how to do nothing. They learned from us how to have a family. Then they, they did everything. Slavery didn't, didn't, didn't destroy the black family. It was welfare that did it. They found a way to do it. I don't know why these black women are so stupid. I really don't. They don't see just falling behind this, 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 this crazy, immoral, wicked, white woman. I, 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 it's, so, it's so embarrassing. And I did see uh, a friend of mine talked about ghetto gag. He was talking up in Northern California. He'd tell me about it all the time. I said, really? So he sent me uh, a video of, it was so perverted. It was so stupid to see black women could be so stupid, laughing after these white men, white men ejaculating it all on her. And she, I mean, it's the craziest, most perverted I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with our people. We, they drag us into homosexuality worse than anybody. They got us having abortion as quick as 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 quick as we can. Time time black women find out they're pregnant, they run to the abortion clinic to get something they have really. I don't know if it's in the water or uh, what it is. How can we be so socially psyched out like this? And for the sister that asked the question about welfare. I, when I was taking a, a social, I think it was social psychological class at uh, Cal Poly, I guess about 15 years ago, and it said that 75% of the women on welfare was white women. They, they didn't open up no welfare for us, you know. But whenever, but she, and she, it, this was a white teacher teaching it. She said, but whenever they want to talk about it, they always want to go and get a black woman, you know. So even they know it, and they'll tell the truth. So the, the welfare wasn't set up for us. And then the black woman get wet up because she thinks she's slick. She getting money and, you know, what have you. A friend of mine told, told his, his, his uh, wife when they broke up, he said, okay, he said, I'm going to take care of the child. He said, if you go and get welfare, I'm not giving you a penny. I guarantee you because he, he, didn't, he didn't have to work. He had his own business. So uh, she, she didn't go. So he t gave her much more than what the welfare would have given her. So it, 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 it's our problem. And we got a problem. And I'm not hiding for them one minute because I have four sons. And if you think you're going to walk over my sons, you got a whole nother thought coming. Because I got two sons that, you know, don't, I don't even want them to marry here. You know? So, you know, I see a lot 
three of my friends, male friends, they want to marry women from Africa. You know, we got a problem. All because we're falling behind this low life, a trashy white woman. We're falling right into their game. And hey. I don't know what's wrong with us. Oh, Sakima. Hey, oh, am I saying it right, Oh, Sakimi? Yes. Sister, you speaking some facts, man. You speaking some real facts. Hey, I just got back from Africa. Benjamin's been to Africa as well. Uh, and Jay. And we all can tell you, and I'm pretty sure you already know, Annie Buka, when you go to Africa, the mindset of our sisters is far different than from here in America. So I'm with you. You're exactly right. And you know what you just said about um, about uh, about you being a mother and you, and you wanting what's best for your sons? That's mm -hmm. actually in the scripture. That's Proverbs 31. We always read Proverbs 31 about what type, what what's, what is a good woman? What is a biblically sound woman, right? But when mm -hmm. you read the very first verse, if we can read that verse real quick, Proverbs 31, verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. See that? It's a, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Skip down to yeah. verse 10. Verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So... When you read the whole chapter, we're not going to read it, of course. Mm -hmm. When you read the entire chapter in its entirety, she goes into a list of what type of woman her sons, King Solomon, should look for. Right? What well, What is a good woman? You know what I'm saying? So I, when yes. you were saying that about your son, I feel that because that's biblical. Mm -hmm. And a mother, just like us as fathers, it's our job to teach our, our daughters what it is um, that they should look for. Now, before when it comes to a man, they give them a righteous example of what a, a husband is, what a father is, mm -hmm. and what she should be looking forward to. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, that's the same game that a, a mother should give to her son. Like, yo, if she do this, hey, don't do that. Don't don't look for this type of woman. If she has this type of quality, that ain't the type of woman for you. You want a woman that do X, Y, Z based off this scripture, based off that. So I felt what you were saying. Many, and, and, when I, and when you were talking about how our sisters have been duped, and how they have been tricked. Um, it ain't no different from Adam and Eve. Or when Eve was in the garden. And how the serpent came unto her. When she was alone. When she was by herself. And he enticed her. And she gave in to it. That same spirit is on the earth today. It's not an actual snake. It's the spirit that's in this white man. And his woman. And how his woman recruited our women. To come into this feminist movement. That our women didn't even have a part of. But weren't even. They didn't have a fight in we were good in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, They infiltrated our communities and got our sisters to look at us in a negative way. And now you see the result of what we have today in 2022. So, yeah, you on point. You on point. Yes. And one thing I want to say about what you said, sis, about how um, our women have been um, tricked, you know, by following the white women and stuff like that. It all started and it's going to keep going. As long as our women do not want to submit under a man, a black man who, who needs to be their head. Because anybody who refuses to have a head cannot be under their protection. It's just like us. When we refuse to have when we refuse to be under God as as our head, we go through a whole bunch of different problems on this earth with getting gunned down, being homeless, like everything that we see we're going through. We go through those things because we refuse to accept God as our head. So it's the same thing with the sisters. Until they accept us as their head, they're gonna go through the things that they're going through. Hey, let me read some. Let me read a quick excerpt from uh, the Willie Lynch letter because I know many of our people don't read. But I want to show you something. Uh, this is the Willie Lynch letter. Uh, this is page thirty-six. Um, it's let's make a slave. It says the Negro marriage unit. So we breed two nigger males with two nigger females. Then we take the nigger males from them, keep them moving and working. Say the one nigger female bear a nigger female and the other bears a nigger male. Both nigger females being without the influence of the nigger image froze with an independent psycho psychology will raise their offspring into reverse positions. The one with the female offspring will teach her to be like herself, independent and negotiable, 
We negotiate with her through her, through her, by her, and negotiate at her will. The one with the nigger male offspring, she being frozen with a subconscious fear for his life. She think her son gonna die out here in these streets, right, all the way up to today, just like during slavery. Will raise him to be mentally dependent and weak, but psychologically strong. In other words, body over mind. So, what we're reading right here, it says that they're going to make sure that the black woman is independent and negotiable. Why? Because the male influence is not in the home. That's what you see today with welfare. That's what you see today with food stamps. Wick. It'll make a black woman say, I don't really need you for anything. I mean, I, I can I can pretty much get what I need from the government. All I really need you for is sex. And with sex comes children. That's why we're in the position that we're in today. Also, our sisters that are very educated. There's nothing wrong with being educated and, you know, having your own business. We applaud with that. Go to school. Be great. But there's no way that you can use that degree as now a pass to say, I don't have to submit to a man. I don't need a man because I have money. But when you want sex, you're going to want a man, you know, unless you're going to, you know, buy batteries for the rest of your life. I mean, and that's your prerogative. You can do what you want to do. But most women, they want to be with a man. Hey, Dion, you're in the Matrix. Go ahead. Try it again. The last thing we heard was the batteries part. Can you hear me? Yeah, we could hear you now. Right. So, okay, so a woman naturally wants to be with a man, right? That's natural. I'm sitting in. That's natural for a woman to want to be with a man. But many of our sisters don't want marriage because they don't want to have to submit to that man. Why? Because they've been given these uh, alternatives like a degree and uh, welfare. So now they say, well, I want the man for sex, but I don't want the man to be my husband and to rule over me like the Bible says. I don't want to be submissive. But the, black, the white woman ain't talking about that. The Chinese woman, the Arab woman, the East Indian woman, the African woman, they're not talking about that. That's only our sisters in America that have been have grown up with that mindset. And that comes from the Willie Lynch letter. That's what that comes from. So this current world that we're living in today pushes our women to the forefront. Give me that uh, one scripture real quick in Isaiah 3 and 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy they, the way of thy path. They which lead thee cause thee to what? They which lead thee cause thee to err. Go ahead. And destroy the way of thy path. So the Bible says they which lead thee cause thee to err. So what this is saying is basically... When our women are put into a position of leading, she has she got to lead the household by herself. You understand? Or she has to, to now take on the role of a, of a father and a mother that causes the children to sin because the young man takes on the attributes of his mother, which is a feminine. That's why that's why many black men you see, what well, a lot of black men, especially in the Christian church, are very very effeminate. They, they're emotional, they're violent, they don't know how to speak, they don't know how to treat their brothers, they don't know how to deal uh, and have an actual uh, conversation. It just automatically results in violence. And those type of men fill up the jail cells. So these are all ploys to keep us destroyed, right? Abortion is just one facet. There's many other facets to destroying us. And as uh, Sister Osakimi uh, was just saying, that is one of the plots of our oppressors. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. Be my mic. Oh, so Kimi, you got anything you want to say before we move on to the next person? Yeah, because we remember when they uh, started with the vaccine, they said blacks should take it first. And we we weren't even getting uh, you know, the uh, so called uh, what you call it, COVID. The COVID. COVID. And then most of the black people that died, they killed them in the hospital because they gave them the. Uh, you call to put it down their throat, and then they dead in the throat, and they couldn't breathe. The, I, the I, breathing tube or the uh, the the oxygen mask. I'm sorry, hey, Robbie. Yes. Robbie, yes. Robbie, wait. 
My yeah. apologies. <laughs> yeah, when, when they put it down their throat, and it and they gave them the uh, uh, anesthetic too. So how are you gonna breathe when they put it down your throat? So they killed so many black people, black men in particular, but, but black people uh, during that COVID, because a lot. I, I mean, my my best friend died after she yeah. took the shot. You know, got uh, you know blood right. clot. A lot of people died from blood clot because I didn't take it. Right. No, my family never took it. But you know, they totally killed us. Killed us. So we we going along with it, being stupid. Robbie, right. Robbie, mute your mic. Yes, sir. Uh, make sure you guys follow the room, Livical Smoke. If you have any questions, you can email us at livicalsmoke at gmail.com. Hashtag us on Twitter, Livical Smoke, and let us know what you think about the topic. Um, David, you're up. Black uh, Lives Matter until me? the black woman gets pregnant. You said, go ahead and skip you. Yeah, I mean, what, right. what, what would you like for me to say? I mean, what do you think about the topic? Do you think that Black Lives Matter until our sisters get pregnant? Hey, you don't want to be on stage? Move on, bro. All right, chosen. Yes, I'm here. So, what do you think about the topic, or anything that you've heard so far? Uh, I agree with the topic. Black Lives Matter until the black woman gets pregnant um it's been that way they've always done things to try to um limit and destroy the population of black people um since i've known and it's still going on today so um i think that we need to not forget where we come from so that we can know where we need to go yeah right Right. You know, you know, one thing that you, you said then it also reminds me of um, what Osa Kimi said. Right. And also Rachel, um, what they're doing is wrong, but we need more women to stand up and not be afraid of those who's doing it coming at you. All right. We need we need some more the more more of our sisters to rebuke and correct the other sister that's doing that. You know, just going out there, killing the babies or twerking on, you know, doing all kind of foul things. But for you to do that, you know, of course, you have to get yourself first, right? According to the word of God, you have to be taught. But that's what we need. We need more of our sisters who know, who have the mindset, knowing it's wrong, to speak up against those actions. Um, Mountain. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, my sister Chosen. I'm sorry, my uh, it won't mute. <laughs> Somebody mute me. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened there. Hey, did you hear what Pentecost just said? Chosen? You, okay, uh, you're unmuted now. Did you hear what Pentecost okay. just said, sis? Uh, yeah, I agree. I think that we do need to speak up more and, and not be afraid of the pushback that we may get. Um, because until we start to speak up, like you won't start to see any changes if everyone's afraid to speak. And I know that it starts with, you know, simple conversations like this right here. And um, until we start doing more of that, not only speaking um, like for others, but for ourselves, it uh, um, start to get us somewhere. But until Much. we start to have the conversations, then we won't get anywhere. Especially to speak about it and then move in that direction. My question is this, why don't more sisters speak up against the sisters that they see doing a lot of an behavior that is detrimental, not only to themselves, but to their whole nation? Why don't more women speak up against these things? I think it's just, um, in my opinion, I think that fear just plays a big part of part in it. Um, I think that not being aware themselves of what to say. Um, so I think knowledge and awareness is a big part of it. And then just um, feeling secure within yourself to just take a stance in something. All right. Then okay. my mic, it what? will not mute. So I don't know who's muting. It chosen. keeps like unmuting and like yeah, muting. I don't know. Who's muting chosen? <laughs> 
if anybody's muted, just get, get to speak to us. I think I think it's just the at uh, Amazon. Yeah, it's been it's been doing that yeah, to me too. Yeah, it's just like unmuting. Like I don't yeah, know what's happening. Yeah, it's been doing happening. that to me too, and I'm mute and I'm mute. So I think it, it, it's been doing that the last right. couple nights. All right, just just watch the button, then sis. You have to watch the the phone and make sure if you get on mute, just unmute yourself again while you're speaking. But go ahead, sis. I haven't. Oh, sorry. Chosen, muted. Chosen, you're muted. Damn. Well, my point was this. Um, Chosen made mention that um, some sisters may not be aware or of things, but let's be honest. Most of our sisters, when they are confronted about their ratchet behavior, they are... Um, not they are against confrontation with their other sisters, their ratchet sisters, because they know a lot of our sisters are crazy. Let's just call it what it is. A lot of us sisters are crazy, and then when you try to correct our sisters that are in uh deviant behavior, ratchet, be immoral behavior, you know there's going to be a backlash against you. But like I, I mentioned earlier. The righteous women, they need to stand up and don't worry about the backlash. You, you, right, you women that are claiming to be righteous, you, you have moral standards. You need to wage war against the ratchet, immoral sisters. You really do, because they making y'all look like. <laughs> listen, they making y'all look. They making us as a nation look bad, but in particular, our sisters that are that are are not um, that don't move in that manner. You understand? So, y'all sisters really need to go to war, put your big girl panties on, and start really checking these 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 immoral sisters among us. I'm gonna mute my mic. Can I say something? Hold on, Jojo. We'll get to you. We have um, people in the queue. All right. We have some people in the queue. So um, let's go to uh, Marvelous. Marvelous. Go ahead and mute your mic. Marvelous Marv. All right. Robbie. Robbie, go ahead and mute your mic. Sorry about that. I apologize. I think it's interesting <clears throat> this uh, this whole entire conversation uh, from a broad perspective. Um, somebody asked me if uh, because I'm completely blind. Somebody asked me if the if uh, within the blind community people really worry about stuff like this. And the truth of the matter is that. Unfortunately, we do not worry too much about this because we are kind of in our own little bubble. Uh, for those of us that do pay attention, we see, or rather we observe, what the rest of the country or the world thinks about these sort of things. And my feeling on it is this. You know, some people, if they want to make really dumb decisions, make it, you know, let them make a really dumb decision, but they're going to have to live with the consequences. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's a good statement right here. Let's see what, Jojo, let's see what Jojo has to say. Jojo. Well, I was going to say, going based on me being a woman myself and growing up, in a community that most people would consider ratchet, you know. Um, me personally, when and then sometimes what what someone else consider ratchet might not be considered ratchet to someone else. So, but if you want to talk about the obvious ratchet, so um, basically what I would say is yes, a lot of the times if I was the if I felt like something was ratchet or something like that, if I and it was just, you know, just, you know, too much. If it was my friend, I would pull them aside. Hey, that we in the public, la la la. 
then nine times out of two, I can't go and tell another grown woman what to and not to do, especially if I don't know her like that. And then it's a confrontation, and then it could lead either way. You got some crazy people out here, just by the simple fact that you just they feel like some type of way by you just trying to tell them something to do. And then, like you said, you don't never know someone's background or hey, anything hey, like that Jojo. or how they. Jojo. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Go are you a, are you a bitch? Am I a bitch? Yes. No. But on your profile it says you're a get money bitch. <laughs> but okay, it, I get what you're saying. Oh damn, it depends on how you're using it. But I really, it's really, it's slang. It's so, slang. It just, Jojo, you know what? Jojo, maybe, maybe I Jojo, 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 it's slang. Jojo, Jojo. But, Jojo. Okay, so what you trying to say about Jojo? It? So, okay, go ahead. Female. A bitch is a female dog. Are you a female dog? No, I'm not no do- female dog. Okay. But the but, way but, I'm interpreting it, Jojo, is Jojo, 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 listen, Jojo. Okay, you're not there's no, there's no but okay. interpretation. Nothing. Listen, you are portraying an image just by that slogan on your page. That calling yourself a get money bitch. You about the dollars. You understand? That's what you're portraying. You're portraying that ratchet behavior that we're talking about that will have sex or do immoral things for money. No. Let me finish. I Listen, listen, no, Jojo. No, Jojo. You're not. Wait, I'm the one who wrote it, so I can explain it even more. You can't. I'm not asking you to explain. I'm telling you what people you perceive. Have to fucking Jojo. Jojo. Me. Jojo let me, well, you're not listening. Okay, I'm but I was talking you, uh, Jojo, about Jojo. No, you was not. I, not I, I, I'm a moderator. moderator. I'm a moderator. Just listen, okay, Jojo. But I was talking just to listen. Okay. Just listen okay. for a minute. Just listen for a minute. You're what I'm showing dad, you with okay. Jojo, I am a father figure right now to you. I, I damn for sure am. You're I'm damn for sure. I'm trying to. You're being disrespectful now. Hey, you know, you know who you being disrespectful. You are who Asakimi is talking about. You're Damn. who Kimi, Kimi is talking about. You're ratchet, and you don't listen. Okay, okay. And that's why. Okay. Let me finish. I'm ratchet, but can I please explain what I was? You can say? wait. No, you cannot. Jojo, no, you Jojo, cannot. Jojo, you can wait. You can't talk when somebody is talking. You mean that's what it is? Yes, I it. was talking. Though, you ain't gonna talk. Me. talk. That's it. All right, go to the audience, man. Yeah. What I'm trying to show Jojo is that by her. By what she's portraying, people will perceive her a specific way and treat her as such. You understand? A man will not want to marry her. She's only a get money bitch. That's what she's putting out to the world or putting out at least here on Clubhouse. And men will treat her as such. You understand? So by that, men will men will perceive, okay, she's a get money bitch. I could go in her inbox. Maybe she'll take $50, $100. Let me see if I could pop her for $200 or whatever, whatever, and throw her away. Maybe she has, ha, ends up with a baby. Maybe not. Maybe she'll end up going to the abortion clinic after I bust off in her. You understand? But those are the type of images and those are the type of um, images that our sisters are portraying. Like, this is a game out here. It's not a game out here for y'all sisters. I hope y'all... Give me one script real quick. Isaiah 32 and 9 for Jojo. Isaiah 32 and 9. If, jo- hey Benjamin, if Jojo yes, comes up respectful, if Jojo comes back up respectful, would you allow her back on stage? If she comes yes, up sir. Respectful? Yes, sir. Bring her back but up, if, bro. Come respectful, sis. If you don't... All, all she gotta audience. do is unmute her mic when she's asked to, okay? And we, as moderators, we're going to be able to cut you off until you hold on, bring out a point, and then we'll give you back the floor. It's that simple. But when you're out of order and you used to... Can I, let me say something. And there, there she looks. She talk, Dion, this is on you, Dion. No, she's talking no, again, Dion. I, 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 Dion, she's talking again. She won't shut up. What you she's mean? Still, oh, she's still you? talking. Look, she's still she's still talking. Damn, boy, I tell you, I try to help her. Which, and, and I just finished saying, I just finished saying, listen, we'll, we, we as moderators will will cut you off and give you back the floor. All we gotta do is be in decently and in order. But since she's used to betas and simps, 
and she used to tell men what to do more than likely. I'm not saying she is, but more than likely, we're not those type of men here. We're not looking for your box. We're not looking to have sex with you. We're looking for your repentance. And that's what God is looking for. So give me that script, Isaiah 32 and 9. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. That's what God said. You at ease here in America. You used to bait us, used to sip, used to tell them what to do, cutting them off in a speech, running a man, telling them what to do, all kinds of stuff. You understand? You're at ease here. The the Caucasian man has the Edomite man has made it very, very comfortable for you here to be a ratchet, to murder babies, to be a sexual deviant. But guess what? There's a new breed of black man around these around now. And we're not those those men no, no, no more. Guess what? We got standards now. You understand? And we're forcing you to have standards too. You understand? We're gonna we're, we're showing you uh, the way. That, this is the way right here, God's laws. Read it again. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my rise voice. Rise up. You got to rise up and see the games being played on you. The games being played where now you're pitted against your black man via social media, via the dominant society, via welfare, Section 8, drugs, the abortion clinics, all in 20 million babies aborted. You understand? You you have a lot of quote unquote freedoms here that this society has given you. Read on. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Do what God said. Do you, do you hear what God is calling you? A careless daughter. You don't care about nothing but the bag. You a get money bitch. But I'm showing you, your daddy wouldn't be happy calling you a get money bitch. He didn't raise you to be a get money bitch. You understand? Read. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be in trouble. Uh -huh. Ye careless days, women. Hey, it says many days and years you in trouble. Yes, you are. You're in so much trouble that you sell your body for cheap. Now, some like I posted the link earlier, your mama take you to the porno, to, to your porno shoot. So you get $2,000. You in trouble out here. Read. Ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. That's it. Go ahead, um, go ahead, brothers. All right, and that's all we ask. When you come on stage, that you respect the form. Do not be, be disrespectful to the moderators, and we'll give you the time to speak, all right? Um, Anthony, you're up. First, I want to start off by saying that I think you moderators are actually doing a really good job in this clubhouse. Um, I've been on a few different clubhouses in the past hour or so, and they're all hectic. So I can do nothing but pat, pat you guys on the back for that. Um, second thing I want to add in is, as a straight white male in this country, I feel like my voice or my chance to speak on the topic is very limited. So the work that you guys are doing, I salute that as well. Um, I just want to sit in the background and pretty much just hear what you guys have to say, though. All right, thank you. Um, e. Berry. Hello, good evening. Good evening. I really... So what do you think about the topic? I Well, the topic... I like the title. Um, I really don't know where y'all are in the conversation. I just got up here because That's he sent me the uh, invite and I said, okay, I don't like to ignore invites. But as far as the topic goes, I, I think it's a good topic. I, I've i always been against abortion, um, number one. Number two, I think that, you know, I have all my, my reasons for why I think it's especially bad for black women. Because I think that it's a way of them um, trying to get us to kill our own children so that they can try to depopulate us. But, of course, it's not going to be effective. And with this being overturned, it's exciting. I'm really excited about it. Hey, my sister, Ibir, I got one question for you. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that the lady, you heard of the case Roe v. Wade where abortion became legal, correct? Right. Did you hear that she lied and she was okay. never raped? 
What do you think about that? I think that's part of the plan. Like, okay, so we got to understand this plan goes back way further than even this case. By the time that this lady came about, I want to say that Margaret Sanger, I think that's her name. Yeah, Margaret Sanger, she was already dead. So it's like they were carrying out her her mission. You get what I'm saying? They paid this lady to lie. She even converted to become, um, I want to say Catholic or something like that. And then on her deathbed, she came out and, com- and confessed a lot of her lies. So, I mean, essentially what they did was found a lady who was um, probably a crackhead and used her desperation to fuel their mission on getting women to um, kill their babies. That's all it really is. I, I'm not surprised by it at all. There's There's been several agents put out there and specifically sent towards our women, African women, African-American women, black women, to influence us so that we can be like, oh, because, you know, they already have it in our minds that we're supposed to look up to them, right? So they're like, okay, feminism, birth control, um, abortion, and all the other little missions that they want to throw at us. They use white women to do it. They make magazine covers to make their feminist lifestyle look beautiful. And it's really not. The, the women are really married and they're really giving birth to their children. Meanwhile, we're lined up at abortion clinics and arguing with each other on Facebook, Instagram, and Clubhouse over it. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, after her, um, excuse me, after her, can I go? Because I didn't even get to finish the topic that I was on until he read my life. No, 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 no. You're going to be quiet and be respectful. You learn to be quiet and be respectful. We'll let you go. But if you're going to run your mouth and you're going to cut people off, no, no, listen, Dion, can I just say this real quick? I was in the middle of answering Pentecost's question when he was asking about how do you feel about um um how about uh, other women approaching a, a ratchet woman then benjamin had said something about my bio that didn't have nothing to do about um the whole me i didn't even get to finish what i was saying so it wasn't me okay all right here we go this, this what we gonna do. okay this, now, this, what gonna okay, do. this what we gonna do this to me this to me this to me don't be don't be don't be impatient this we're gonna do. We're gonna let you finish, but I gotta say something. The moderator wants to ask you a question by something that they see regarding whether it's your profile or whether it's what you're saying, whatever it is. Yes, That's and I, when That's I was all. trying oh, to. Oh, 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 Okay, all I'm saying is when a moderator wants to chime in or make a point, he has the prerogative to do that. Okay, so just chillax. So now you you were speaking about something and he chimed in and said that he saw some of your profile that contradicted your statement. What we're trying to do for you, young sister. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do for you, young sister, is we're trying to help you not become a baby mama. Not because I fall into the statistics. You heard me. Not become a baby mama. Unless you want to be a baby mama without a man. Unless that's what you want. We try to help you not fall into that category because many of our young sisters, y'all don't have the proper guidance. And y'all talk too much. So we're trying to help you out. So so if you want that help, this is the place for you. But you got to be, you got to submit. You got to be quiet so you can hear. You speak your piece, we'll comment on it. It's all here the solution. See, we're trying to build, you know, relationships and we're trying to help people. So, just relax, all right? Now, go ahead and, because I, I want to deal with what the sister Iber said, but I want to give you an opportunity to speak. So, go ahead and say what it is that you want to say, sister. Well, well I want to say something as in, first of all, you, when I was trying to explain myself, so I do, don't take it personal. We can all disagree to agree, but if I can't say an opinion on something, and once you guys disagree with it, you guys kick me to the dirt. That's not fair because that everyone... Was, that, was, that wasn't okay, why you was kicked okay, to the dirt. Okay, I get what you're saying. Can that I, wasn't why you kicked to the dirt. Like, you was kicked to the dirt because you were over-talking the brother when he was trying to make a point. You didn't let him finish. Because you weren't kicked to okay. the dirt because you're opinion. Okay, can I finish explaining? So don't, so don't speak that. That's a false narrative. Can I please That's a false finish narrative. explaining? So take can I that please finish back. explaining? Every take time I try to speak, 
Every time I try to speak, take the comment back. It's can I can I explain something? The reason why I say that. Ex- uh, thank you. The reason why I say that is because when I was when he asked when he did say something about my bio, I was trying to explain to him why I me personally had put it in my bio. It doesn't mean that I'm selling myself. I've never. My mama raised me pretty well, and I'm a I'm a hard working young lady at that. So you already got a perception of me just based off of my bio. But like I was explaining uh, what Pentecost's con- question was when it comes to what we consider ratchet and stuff like that, I was going to get into depth on the reason why sometimes what you consider ratchet may not be ratchet towards somebody else. So we can't just automatically go up to another person that, that if we consider, especially an adult, if we consider them you know, ratchet, because we all have our own meanings of what we consider something, especially something like that, because it's our opinion, no matter how you put it. It's your perception of somebody. Somebody else can ask you a question. Okay, I can't finish talking, but okay. No, you You talk too long, sis. We man. We gotta get straight to the damn point. We don't wanna hear all y'all damn thoughts. Get to the point. Jojo, Jojo, you got a husband. Jojo, Jojo, you got a husband. That doesn't you're matter right now. You're no, that doesn't matter. You know she don't. I'm about to, I'm about to excuse me, and then look at them. They throwing out disrespectful. Jojo, 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 J
with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Now, what God says, lean not unto thy own understanding. That's why there ain't something that might be wretched to you, ain't wretched to somebody else. No, that means you're literally leaning upon your own understanding. Why um, we can literally sit here and say that's wretched. No matter what the hell you think about it, because we don't lean upon our own understanding. We trust in the Lord. God has told us what a uh, respectable, godly Proverbs 31 woman, uh, how she speaks, how she carries herself. He has told us how a son of God, a prince, carries himself and the things that he speaks out of his mouth. God has set the guideline of what is acceptable. Anything outside of that is ratchet and you make up your own definition of what's right. And what we have done as a people made up our own way of living and what's right and what's wrong. And it's turned us into a degenerate nation where we receive no respect from anyone on the earth to the point of where we as a people believe the lies that's been told to us. We're in a hell do, do you see a black person make it up a slogan, my my body, my choice? You didn't make that up. That came from your oppressors, the ones that rule over you, and you fed into it. And now you out here have killed black women. Black men probably bought the Plan B pills and gave money for the abortion, too. We have killed, as a race of people, 20 million babies. That's why we can't lean on our own understanding. It destroys us worse than it does anyone else because we are the sons and daughters of God. And when we do wrong, it goes it it is it goes overboard with our wrong. 20 million strong, y'all. Got to stop it. Stop leaning upon your own thoughts. Hey, hey can I get 1 Timothy 2:14 real quick just to add on to what um uh, CB real was just saying. Start at 11. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the reason I want to read all that together... Is when our sisters get to run in their mouth and they don't have a listening ear, you fall into the same category as your foremother Eve. She was deceived. Adam wasn't deceived. Adam had enough understanding because God was dealing with him to not go after the things that Eve went after. But her and her pride and in her not wanting to submit and just be quiet and learn, she went off into a realm that she could not come back from. And that's why the woman has a menstrual cycle today. That's why your sisters have pain during childbirth. It's because your foremother Eve could not shut her mouth and listen to her husband. That's why. So now we're trying to show you, sisters, if you really want the solutions that's going to help better your life, like um, uh, Benjamin went over earlier about how you women are at ease and God says to rise up and to hear his words, or you're going to have a long, horrible, miserable life. We're trying to show you this is the solutions to get away from that. But many of you don't want that solution. You just want to right. run your mouth and be heard. Right, bitch. You know what right, I'm saying? Bitch. Throw, 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 throw that nigga off the stage. He sounded effeminate and gay as hell. Throw that nigga off the stage. Who the hell is that? You see what I'm saying? Those are the men that you single mothers raise. You single mothers that won't shut your mouth and won't submit to a man that will not listen. You raised men just like that. That was a prime or, or get, example. Or get pregnant by Dion. Right. Get pregnant by a Negro like that. That act like a female for y'all to entertain y'all. My goodness. So the Bible says for a woman not to usurp authority over a man. That's why when the moderator speak, be quiet. When your husband speak, be quiet. That's the only way you're going to learn. But y'all don't want that thing. Then I try to get us a chance after chance after chance. She still wasn't shut the hell up. Can't make yeah. this up, man. Hey, Dion, you did try, you know. Uh, what was real crazy to me, I wish the sister that was still on here that was on here right at first when I was saying that the perception and the um, 
where they say niggas ain't shit, you know, it got to change because of everything that's going on. But, you know, you we have our own women that when a man is trying to say, look, sister, you better than a uh, than, than being a get money bitch. You know, she she want to explain the fact to why she is a get money bitch. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, you know? hey she she want to put the signs behind it. Like there's some damn signs behind the saying get money bitch. Yeah. So just think about that. It's like we like, look, sister. Because when, when, when he asked her that, I was like, why are you, why are you going off on the sisters? I didn't know what was going on. He's like, are you a bitch? And then he's like, well, why your profile say get money bitch? And it's like, ah. Oh. And then, you know, she paused like, damn, I am calling myself a bitch. It's like, we we really want the best for our sisters. That's why we go over these topics. But a lot of times, you sisters, the 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 world, the things that's going on in the world, social media, um, different TV shows, the music has got you so locked in that you don't really understand when, when somebody's really trying to help you. And like the sister was like, you ain't my daddy. It's like, well, you know, you you probably needed a daddy like Benjamin. You wouldn't be calling yourself a get money bitch. You know, you probably be want to call yourself a princess or something like that. So, you know, the mindset is messed up and, and we need a, a reset. So and that's and that's why they end up with men that they don't want to have a child by and end up aborting the child because they don't have a father like Benjamin that's gonna tell you, yo, sit your ass down and be quiet. And let me tell you, let me put you on game. Let me show you what these niggas, these no good niggas out here looking for, and what they're gonna do to you if you don't keep your if you don't keep yourself sober, if you don't keep yourself clean, if you don't stay in your virginity, if you wanna go out here and bust it open forever, Tom, Dick, and Harry. These are the type of men you're gonna end up with. You need a father like that. The Bible says that a father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. I'm a father and I got daughters. I know what it means. I get up in the middle of the night and go check all the doors. Make sure the alarm's set. I'm checking their window. I'm checking under their bed. I watch them sleep for 20 minutes sometimes just to make sure that they good. That's what a father does with his daughter. Because you want them to grow up and to be married to righteous men. And for themselves to be righteous. But a lot of your sisters, because you don't have a father or you never had a father who was in the Bible and understood the Bible, your perception of, a, of fatherhood is skewed. You think a father is a man that lets you go to prom. Let you stay out late, buy you a Mercedes when you're 16 years old. Y'all been watching um, uh, Sweet 16 on MTV they used to have back in the day, where these rich fathers buy their daughters a thousand dollar, twelve, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar gifts and a, a hundred thousand dollar cars. That's not a father. That's not a father according to scripture. A father is someone that disciplines his children. He shows his children what it is they're supposed to. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 7 real quick. Let me show you what the Bible says. Because your sisters come on here every single night and you get mad at the way we speak when we just speak in Bible. But the nigga that's smashing you right now and putting babies in you that you're aborting, he calling you all kind of bees and hoes and disrespecting you out in the streets cheating on you. And that's what you want? Is this your king? Come on, man. Deuteronomy 6 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house And when thou walkest by the way And when thou sliest down And when thou risest up So the Bible commands us to teach our children God's commandments All day When they wake up in the morning you quiz them on the commandments. When they lay down at night, you pray with them, and you may hit them with a couple of scriptures or something like that, or a biblical history, just to remind them to have a fresh thought of God on their mind. When you walk us, by the way, when I walk past my girl's room, I ask them questions about God real quick. Hey, what, do you, what, what color is Jesus Christ according to the Bible? Hey, how's a woman supposed to dress according to the Bible? Give me the scripture. Program it into their minds. You understand? Give me that one more, Sirach 7, about if thou hast daughters. I think it's verse 23 or something like that. I ain't looking. 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7 and verse 24. As thou daughters have a care of their body and show not thyself cheerful toward them. That's why Benjamin wasn't playing with that sister. He was really taking the role of a father with her, but because of her blindness and her need to be right, she couldn't shut up and hear what the brother was trying to bring to her. The Bible says... Has thou daughters 
taking care of their body. My daughters ain't wearing no thong. My daughters ain't wearing no damn jeans. They ain't walking out the house with no leggings. My daughters gonna wear modest dresses. They not gonna. They nobody seeing their body. No profile that? pictures with they ass first and turned exactly. around. Exactly. Right. Ain't no twerking on no cars. None of that stuff like that. The Bible says when you have a daughter, you're supposed to take care of her body. While she's a child and all the way up until she's grown and you hand her off to her husband, nobody is supposed to see what's under her dress. Nobody. But you sisters, you show your body, you show your cleavage, you show your ass crack, you go on social media and you twerk for likes. That show you ain't got no daddy. And if you do got a daddy, he weak. Because ain't no way no man going to let his daughter do that. The Bible said, don't show yourself cheerful towards her. What does that mean? You accept her whorish behavior. Fathers are not supposed to accept a, a daughter's horse behavior. That's why Benjamin said, "Yo, are you are you a bitch? Oh no, I ain't no bitch, nigga. Who you got? Nah, don't get don't get mad at me. I'm talking about your profile. It say you a get money bitch. Is that what you are? Oh, well, let me explain because see, theoretically, Perry the Five, shut the hell up. You say that's what you you putting that out so people think that about you. So now we question you about it and you mad and want to justify it. Nah." A father not letting you justify it. A father going to hear you up with the word of God and cause you to understand the reading. You understand? Hey, so hey, hey, hey Dion, can I get one script, please? Absolutely. Um, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And, you know, the scriptures is here for our um, our awakening and our correction. And a lot of the times, you know, we all pretty much grew up the same. I'm, I, can, I can pretty much assume everybody on this stage grew up the same as far as we were in the ghettos of america ghettos of other places throughout the world we uh um you know had things uh our family situations wasn't always right we traumatized each other growing up in the hoods of america we saw images on tv of us as drug dealers and pimps and hoes and things like that and through the school system and the religious system we have a low self-esteem you know, that's pretty much how all of us grow up. But watch what God says right here. Watch this. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Stop Lord right. thy God. The Bible just said to the children of Israel, we are a holy people. Holy means separate, set apart. You ain't like everybody else. And you're not supposed to be following everybody else. You understand? The other name, the white woman, she came up with that liberation movement, sexual liberation movement, where you're, you're so free, you're showing your ass. Now your mom is taking you to the porno, to your porno shoot. You understand? You're so free, you're having sex with anybody and everything. Women, black women having sex with black women now, and now you're LGB this and you're gays and cisgender that. You understand? But God said, no, you're separate. You're holy. What makes you holy? You got the laws of God. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto you know God himself. Said, God said he chose you, black woman, to be special. Not like everybody else, not doing ratchetness, not showing your behind, not having to show your breasts all over the place, your royalty. That's why I asked the sister, how the hell you came from royalty to a get money bitch? What part of the game is that? What man is going to want to marry you calling yourself a bitch? And then a lot of us just get, get mad when a man treats you as such. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Wow. 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 Do you hear what God just said? He said, you are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You are royalty. You are princess of God. But you've been reduced. No, matter of fact, let me rephrase that. You reduce yourself to a bitch. When God calls you royalty, when God tells you you're above all nations, we didn't we didn't hear this in church. We don't hear this in school growing up. We didn't see, we don't see that on TV of us being above all nations. No, we see images of us being slaves and under all nations in in the ghettos of America. Those are the images we see. But God says you're above that. You understand? So that 
coming coming back to the scriptures should boost your self esteem where you view yourself better than just a bitch, just a hoe, just a get money bitch. You know, you understand? Get money, get you know what get money bitches do? Get money bitches have abortions. That's what get that's what get money bitches do. Yeah. They have abortions. You know what princesses do? Princesses cover their body, get prove a man, get married to that man, and have a family. Birth kings into the world. Gods. Yes. God. Yes. Birth kings and other princesses into the world. Not murder. Not murdering their babies because they got to get this bag. No, that's foolishness, man. I'm going to mute my mic. Well said, well said, you know. Get money, bitch. It's not the right thing. The hard hey, work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Dion. My bad. It's just, hey, hey, Benjamin, when you just said that, bro, man, that just... That sparks something in me. Hey, um, get sec, get First Peter three and six. I know we need to move on. I just want two scriptures: First Peter three and six, and then Genesis seventeen fifteen. About what you were just saying, or CB real time day to that day. A righteous woman, she gonna bring forth kings into this earth, but she ain't doing it by herself. Taking no photo shoot with her breast out, and her son got the exact same clothes she got on. So I'm my little king, and that's it. They're not doing it. That's called cisgender. Well, not cisgender. That's called uh. What they call that? What uh, they call it, Judge? Judge be saying it all the time. Something yeah. incest. What they call that, Judge? Covert, oh, emotional, covert. emotional incest? Covert incest. Covert, covert incest, right. Well, what, explain that, Judge, if you don't mind. Co covert incest is where women... Um, they look for the things that a, a man or a, a spouse or a husband should be given to them, but they look for it in their sons. So that's why you see like a lot of the women, single mothers, they dress their kids up kind of like, uh, you know, they got to have Jordans on the polo shirts, the gold chains, these little babies, you know. You know, what well, they should be wearing Scooby-Doo overalls, you know, they got them wearing, you know, Gucci stuff, you know, just to to kind of give them that, that, that feel they taking pictures with them, photo shoots where they barely naked. Um, you know, no woman's ever going to be good enough for them. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's, it creates the men that our sisters say ain't shit. They create those men, you know, because they don't allow them to be men, you know, just like that. Uh, I think that the video the other day was watching when, um, the I forgot how old the son was, was living in the house and, and you know and, uh, and and he didn't want to pay no bills he didn't want to do nothing and the mom was just like he can stay here as long as he want to stay here you know it's like think about the kind of man that you're creating for another woman he ain't never gonna be a man so that covert a, a lot of brothers uh dealt with this they you know um with their moms and how their moms treat them and this go on big time especially in Black America where these women. They treat they treat their sons like their boyfriends and husbands, and they treat their daughters like it's their homegirls. They're competing against their daughters, and they want to fuck their uh, sons. It is what it is. Whoa. Uh, damn. And that's why we messed up. Oh yeah, God. I would like to speak First to three, three, the black brothers. Yeah, I'm going to chime in. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick. All right, first Peter 3 and 6, then we'll let you go ahead. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So, this talking about Sarah, the foremother Sarah. She was the wife of Abraham. It said that she obeyed Abraham. She followed him, right? She submitted to him. It also says that you are her daughter. She's talking about black women. And his so-called Hispanics. Y'all are the children of Israel. It says, you're, you're Sarah's daughter as long as ye do well. Now, let me show you about Sarah. Genesis 17, 15, real quick. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. 
and I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, and I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall shall be of her. Read that part again. What what of people? And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So the Lord will choose the right vessel, a union between a, a husband and a wife, that man being a man of God, this woman being a woman of God. If you do well, you will be a daughter of Sarah. You will bring forth kings. Kings of people will come through you. You understand? But when you're not a daughter of Sarah, when you don't want to be submissive, when you don't want to follow what God says, you don't bring forth kings into the earth. You bring forth monsters into the earth. And those monsters terrorize our communities and kill us and rob us. You understand? And 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 put rap music out, calling their women bees and hoes, but then had a mama sitting in the front row as they get the Grammy. Imagine that. You, you calling black women bees and hoes, and then your mama supports your rap career. Think about it. Damn, that's crazy. That's the black community right there. That's why Damn, God said bro. you got to be right. You got to be right. Wow. Hey, hey, before we move on, I ain't got no script, but I'm just reading along with what Dion's saying. And it says, uh, Sarah, in my book, has got a little number beside it to tell you what Sarah means. Sarah means princess. Now, just think about this, because Abraham's a black man. He married a black woman. God changed his wife's name to princess. And he said, you are a daughter of the print of a princess. That's what he said. You are the daughters of a princess, which make you princesses. But we have, as Benjamin was saying, we've demeaned ourselves that our women have became get money bitches about the bag and abortions, uh, 20 million killed so far. And the man have become get rich or die trying, YOLO, fuck niggas, whatever we want to call it. We went from princes to fuck niggas, from princesses to get money bitches. We got a lot of work to do, man. Hey, go ahead, uh, Pentecost. Let's get the next person. <clears throat> All right. Imaru, you're up. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm speaking as a mother, as a wife to a black man, and we have four children. So um, my advice to other black women is to make sure that you trust yourself first. Make sure you pour into yourself first so that when you are with your man, whoever he is, you can make sure that you are accountable for the part that you play and you are respectful, you communicate, and you make sure that you exercise your throat chakra when, next, when necessary. You know, sometimes we have to speak up. Sometimes we have to, you know, coerce or, you know, influence our men in another way. You know, we use our women essence, our nurturing essence to inspire men and to help direct them. And um, I'm just thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for all four of my children. And I'm just here to make sure I encourage women to. Amaru. Have you a black man for sure? Amaru. Yes. Are you are you pro choice or pro life? I'm pro life. I have four children. I have four times to decide to get an abortion, and I decided not to. And I'm so thankful. That's the best decision I ever made, <laughs> for sure. I'm just, just some people with children still say the same thing. Some people who are birth, you know, out of um, from a parent still say. Believe to be pro. I just wanted to ask, uh, Sister uh, Amaru, what is um, what did you mean when you said uh, trust yourself first? What explain that? What do you mean when you say that to to women? Well, women have an intuition, and so that's their moral compass that helps guide them into the path that is set before them. 
So they have to know their place, know their role, and be comfortable in their role, you know, whatever that looks like. And just be willing to play different positions when necessary and then also be willing to receive when necessary. You think, uh, in your honest opinion, you think black women got a good moral compass to be trusting their self if they've got 20 million babies aborted? Mm, no, 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 I don't. No, I, think not, they, I think they need to turn off the TV. Me. I'm going to say that's this. That's why I, I asked you. That's why I asked you what you meant about that, because when you throw yeah. when you stuff out there as people and there's no explanation behind it, many people inter- interpret that many different ways. And okay. black women ain't got good moral compasses. Mm. That's why they will lay down with the no good ass nigga that's a drug dealer and knowing he don't want to be with them, met them in the club. But you're only winning for sex. The there is no we don't have a good moral compass as a people. And I say this all the time. The only reason black people don't kill each other, it ain't cause God said thou should not kill. You don't kill each other because you're afraid of the white man or put you in prison. Mm, That's okay. the only reason you don't kill. You, My you, advice to black women is turn off the TV. Stop listening to those TV shows. Stop listening to the music that keeps you in a low vibration. Uh, Definitely find either instrumental music or uh, music that's going to inspire you and put you on a level that'll keep you um, in a vibration that will attract the right men to you. Watch this. Watch this, sis. Uh, Isaiah 34, 16. Something much better than just turning off the music and listening to instrumentals and stuff. Because the thoughts are still going to be there. This is something much better to help the moral compass of black women, black men in general. This is this is what I believe. Give me that Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded and his spirit it have gathered them. So God tells us to seek out the book of the Lord and read. We all know black people. We don't read. We, we ain't no ain't no secret to that. We ain't going to sit here and sugarcoat it and act like in this 21st century that we've got some new awakening and we all read 10 books a month from Oprah's book club. Black people don't read. That's why our magazines are full of pictures. That's why Jet Magazine lasted for 50 years full of pictures and the the most uh looked at picture in the jet magazine was jet beauty of the month we only looked at pictures we don't sit down and read when we as a people sit down and read the most important book on earth we will then learn uh uh or we our moral compass um, that you said women should trust, it will be guided in the right way. Because why? As that last part of that verse says, it says, his spirit hath gathered them. When, when we literally sit down and start studying the book of the Lord, which is ours from the jump, it ain't nobody else. The Bible's the blackest book on earth. It literally starts out in Africa with Adam and, and Moses and, and the damn wilderness and Egypt. It's the blackest book on the earth, but we've never sat down to actually read it. And once we read what it says, we begin to apply it. That's why um, we don't know. We still ain't learned this as a people. Sex is for married people. Sex is not for your um, your teenage son, your teenage daughter to see if he like women or what. No, it's not for this. It's not for your in your 20s, Lori Harvey, that don't want to be tied down to um, Michael B. Jordan to be out here taking on as many rods as she can before she gets old like Vivica Fox and then won't settle down. Sex is not for you. Sex is for a husband and a wife that they may be fruitful and multiply. We have not learned that as a people because we have not sat down and read the book of the Lord that tells you husband and wife sex is for you and anybody outside of that that has sex you are in the midst of sin defiling your body 
um, def uh, um, going against God and you're destroying your nation. Look what get, last script right here. And, uh, and we can move on. Or oh, my root kings, she got a chance to rebuttal our thoughts. Uh, give me that Leviticus real quick. Um, I think you know what I want. Leviticus 19, and I want you to read verse 29 real quick. Look at what the book of the Lord tells us to help black women and men with your moral compass that is way the hell off. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Now check this out. You, God ain't sitting right here telling you to, um, he's not saying don't sell your daughter for money. Any man that has a daughter, as many of the brothers on here have spoken, you know that's not the thought on your mind to do to your daughter. So what does God mean when he says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, a hoe? That means your daughter shouldn't be having boyfriends out here in middle school. Your daughter shouldn't be having boyfriends in high school. Your daughter shouldn't be having boyfriends in college with the freedom she got. Your daughter shouldn't be having uh, boyfriends even when she's got her own place and moved out. Why? Because she's prostituting herself, making herself a whore. What does that mean? She's got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, twenty, fifty, ninety 10, 15, 20, 50, 90 bodies on her box. She's got a boyfriend she's been with for three, four years, and they ain't married yet, and they having sex already. Your daughter is a whore. She's been prostituted. Read that again, that verse. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Watch, what, the watch what happens when you let your children have boyfriends and girlfriends and not honor marriage and uh, and wait to have sex with their husband or their wife and be fruitful and multiply. Look what happens. Read on. Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. 20 million babies aborted. That's thus saith the Lord right there. Because we've never sat down to read the book of the Lord. We've been trusting in our own self our own thoughts our own moral compasses and it has led us to be a degenerate laughed at nation because we don't seek out the book of the lord that's what we got to start doing in order to correct ourselves uh but sister Mara, you got any thoughts on that oh yes okay i love the scriptures for sure and um what i want to say is for sure like I was born um, and raised in a Catholic, like, elementary school, an all-girls Catholic high school on the south side of Chicago. So I learned the books of the Bible. I know them by heart from Genesis all the way to Revelations. Like, so, and I've been in the scriptures. So now I'm living it and I'm, I'm self-actualizing myself, you know, making sure that I'm in tune with what my body wants me to do and what my mind wants me to do and what God has ordained for me to do. Because ultimately, I have to submit. I have to be obedient. And so I do that. And um, whenever I go with the flow, the current always leads me to my destination. So um, my advice is to definitely get into the scriptures and also to uh, get you a metaphysical Bible because that will help you interpret the words and the terms and the meanings of it and how it applies to you and how you can apply it to your life get you a metaphysical bible it's on amazon you don't, you don't need that since we just read the book we just read the scripture say you don't need none of that stuff you know what you need you need somebody uh that keeps the commandments of god that's going to teach you thus saith the lord in order to understand it. You don't need a metaphor. Right. God didn't give Moses a metaphysical Bible. Right. <laughs> so you don't need one either. And Moses didn't have no college degree, none of that. He had the spirit of the Lord that guided right. him. And he had man around, and, he, and God was dealing with him and had him teach other man to understand what the word of God is. Here's the proof of it. Acts chapter eight. 
Don't be going. Don't waste your money, people, on a metaphysical body. It's a waste of time. It ain't nothing but man's understanding of what they think God says. God already told right. you. Again. Acts chapter eight, reverse Acts. thirty. The book of Acts chapter eight and verse thirty. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah. and said, uh -huh. and said. Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand what you sit down and reading? He's reading the book of Isaiah. Go ahead. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? Mm, there you go. A man has to, someone who under has the spirit of God that keeps the commandments of God, he's the one that can guide you in the scriptures. You won't be able to do it yourself. That's why God commands that you congregate. Because iron sharpens iron. Something you may not see, but God then gave it to somebody else. And they can enlighten you on that understanding. Why? Oh, that's what that means. That's what that means. And then you learn, you build, you go teach somebody else. Metaphysical Bible ain't what you need. All you need is this, this King James 1611. They got all 80 books in the Bible. Not 66. All 80 books in the Bible. Got the Apocrypha in it. And a man that is learned, that is teaching you, thus saith the Lord. He's not sugarcoating it. He ain't telling you God love you no matter what. He ain't telling you your body, your choice. He ain't telling you uh, um, uh, you got women liberation, uh, uh, freedom rights. No, nah, hell no. Nah. He tell you, thus saith the Lord. That's what you need. And email us. We'll hook you up with those people, y'all. <laughs> Biblical smoke at gmail.com. Just email us and we'll we'll give you the, the beginner's booklet. We'll send you to the website and you can start learning those things and have men that are learned that God's called. They can guide you in the way that you should go so you don't end up having abortions, <laughs> killing gods and princesses. Go ahead, Pentecost. Can I add something before we move on real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Who is that, Sierra? Yeah, Sierra. I was just gonna um, reply to Amaro and um, Amaro. I know you talked about chakras. I just wanted to tell you that um, chakras are demonic. Um, just do your research on that. I just wanted to tell you that because I know some people just don't know. But yeah, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure she know. I already know she does. She probably did her research. Go ahead, Pentecost. All right. Um, I'm in. I'm in raw. You're up. I've been wrong. Got you. Peace to the gods and earth. Hey, so what do you have for the topic? Black class matter to the black woman gets pregnant. Peace. What's up, Amaru? Sorry, yeah. So, on, um, bro? Give me one sec. I apologize. So I'm here listening. Uh, I don't really have anything to add to this subject yet because I'm kind of just absorbing what everybody else has to say about it. Um. You know, I may have something to say about it, but at the moment I can read something that uh, is pertinent to it. But at the moment, I would just kind of like just to listen. When you read it, um, are you going to comment on it and share what yes. you believe based on the topic? Yes. Most definitely. And how long is it? It's give or take about 30 seconds. All right, go ahead. All right, so this is from the Hagakiri. So and what is the, that? The Hagakiri like, is basically an ancient code of the samurai. It's a code of the samurai. Yeah. It's a, well, it's a, it's a, it's, but this is not about that. This is about the notes of a physician uh, from ancient Japan. Now, uh, the, the, the dots, if you read the rules in here, we deal mm -hmm. with King James... So what I I and I'm telling you now, I definitely don't want to hear nothing no damn Chinese man got to say because Chinese man locked the door and beat up black women's ass and put them in chokeholds. Japanese too. <laughs> Both of them, same people. Yeah, this is not about any of that. This is a, a Asiatic principle. Uh, it yeah. existed then. It's it's true now. If you don't want to hear it, that's fine. I don't have to yeah, read it. Uh, but as I, I said want, from the that, beginning, that, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll 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 speak on it later. You guys gave yeah. me the platform. I appreciate it. I just want to listen to what everybody else got to say before I speak on anything. All right. Great. We appreciate you. 
Thank you. I don't want to hear nothing them damn Japanese and Chinese got to say. They're out there whooping black people's ass in China, talking about they brought COVID to China. Hell with them damn dog eating. Go ahead, Pentecost. Uh, you guys have fun. And MJ. We ain't doing nothing but telling the truth. We, you know, it's we it's biblical smoke. We don't sugarcoat it. You know, them them Chinese people, they feed you cat, rat, and dog in the hood. They don't <laughs> even your hand. They they behind glass, they put your food on the counter, they don't want to touch you, they don't want to talk to you, and they'll lock the door and, and it's numerous accounts. They don't whoop you black woman's ass in their stores because they thought you were stealing something. I don't want to hear nothing about that as if they got any kind of wisdom, they can keep it to their damn self because I got the Bible, a black man's book given to us by God and all the prophets was black. I don't want to hear nothing they got to say. They ass is going in slavery too when Christ come back. Go ahead. Go ahead. And MJ. Go ahead on mute your mic. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Yeah, I'm really think just listening right now. What I do you think about the minutes. Excuse me. What do you think about Black Lives Matter until the woman gets pregnant? <laughs> I well, I mean, for one, I'm, I don't believe in abortions. Um, a lot of people, their argument uh, is that. Um, you know, they're not yet children, they're not yet, uh, like, um, you know, humans, they're not babies. But I would say, what if a lot of plants in the earth, what if um, we were to destroy the seeds? Would we have plants? You know, it has to start from somewhere we are. A 20-year-old is not um, physically or even mentally the same as a 90-year-old. And a 90-year-old is not the same as a fetus. It's just a different stage in life. If we destroy them at that point, then we are destroying humans. Because if you destroy the seed, you are destroying the tree. That's my take on it. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Dion. Yeah. Hey. Hey. You're in the Matrix right now. You're in the Matrix, D.I. Try again. Damn. Yeah, you good. I'm out of there. I'm sorry, y'all. You good now. Okay, I'll pray. <laughs> All right, man. I don't know what you want on the phone. I'm on the highway, so. Hey, listen. Give me first, um, give me uh, uh, Isaiah 34, 16. Give me that first. I just want to touch on what Z.B. Real was saying about, you know, sometimes when people... Um, they don't understand their, idea, their identity, so they, they have different things that they have read or learned, and they and they count it as wisdom, right, for whatever reason. Our wisdom comes from the scriptures, right? Give me that. Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Okay, so I hope I ain't in the matrix. But the Bible says that we should seek out seek out of the book of the Lord and read, because none of these will fail, meaning the prophecies that you read in the Bible have all come to pass for those that the Lord has uh, brought brought to pass, and then there's things in the future that are going to come to pass that the Lord has not quite had happen yet because we haven't gotten to that time. So right now what you see is all these things that's going on on the earth today they were prophesied to happen in the Bible. So when we say we don't want to hear anything from any other race or any other type of um, quote-unquote book that's supposed to benefit us in any type of spirituality, we don't want that because the Bible don't need a mate. It don't need another book to mate with it. There's no book that you can mate with it because the Bible is the only book that has the prophecies about our people and what we've had to endure and even what we discussed in the night. If you notice what we've been discussing tonight, we've been going into the Bible to give understanding. You may ask yourself, well, why don't the pastors do such things? Why, why don't they, why can't they go into the Bible and give us biblical solutions about what it is that we deal with and marriage and counsel and all these various different things? 
because the Lord had endowed them with that type of wisdom and understanding of these scriptures. The only way to understand this book is to keep God's commandments and read precept upon precept. And the Lord would then give you that understanding that whole, the Bible calls it the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, which is a spirit that comes into you to give you knowledge and understanding. The rest of that stuff, chakras and, you know, the last samurai, black samurai, whatever the hell. Amen. We don't want to hear we, we don't want that because that's not the true wisdom of, of, of the Most High. The Lord said he's going to destroy the wisdom of this world, right? I think that's in First uh, Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. Read that for me, 19 through 21. I'll show you something. Because a lot of our people, we use big words when we speak, and we think that somehow that proves that we have a certain amount of knowledge. But what it actually does is shows us how uh, easily we are led astray. We use a lot of 12 syllable words and stuff like that, but nobody know what you're talking about. It makes no sense. You mean I got to teach all my people those long ass 12 syllable words just to reach salvation and get out of our oppressive state? Nah. I don't mm -hmm. need that. I need thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. My people out here lying on each other, killing each other, murdering each other, boarding their babies, cheating on their wives, cheating on their husbands. Coveting what's not theirs, breaking God's Sabbath day, serving idols. That's what my people are doing. And that's what we need to change. We don't need no chakra for that. Read that for me. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So we, we can go into the Bible and see where the Lord prophesied that our people who had a wicked heart would commit women that had a wicked heart would sacrifice their children to idols, which is what you're doing in the abortion clinic. You may ask yourself, well, how's a woman sacrificing her child to an idol in the abortion clinic? When these women go get abortions, think about it. It's so, some women go get abortions so they can continue to party. They don't want to, they don't want to stop living their hot girl summer. Some sisters get, get, get pregnant around March, April. They know by July, they will be sick. Probably got the, the poked out belly. You understand? They don't miss out on the summertime. They're going to miss out in their bikini. They're going to miss out on hitting the club, going to Vegas with their friends, going to Miami, get flown out. So they'll, they'll sacrifice their child. They'll say, look, I can't have a baby right now. They'll kill that child so they will not be uh, showing as pregnant during the summertime so they can hit the club. That's an idol right there. You understand? Same thing with sports. Some women get pregnant and they play sports. And they're like, I can't have no baby. This is my senior year. I might make it to the WNBA. I might do this. I might do that. I can't get pregnant right now. And they'll kill the baby because they want to live They live that lifestyle. They want to play that sport. That's the idol. So that's what my people need to be learning. You understand? The Lord said he's going to destroy the wisdom of the, of the wise. Go ahead. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is, this, where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? So it said, where is the wise? Where is the disputer of this world? Who going to really go? Who really going to come on this platform and vouch for abortions? Like who, who really going to be able to come on here and say, yeah, abortion is a good thing. When, have, when has murder ever been a good thing? Even if a woman was raped and, and less than 1% of women that are raped uh, have abortions or the, the case of abortion. Uh, uh, women that are raped. Even if a woman is raped, she still should bring forth the child and give it up for adoption. They don't give you license to murder because you were raped. And and that's a sensitive subject. I'm not saying I condone it because we definitely don't condone rape. We're against that. The Bible's against that. But if a man is wicked or evil and he rapes a woman and she gets pregnant, she should just give that child up for adoption if she don't want that child. But the Bible doesn't give you a license to kill. So God says, where's the dispute of this world? God has destroyed the wisdom of his world. You know how much wisdom and thought they put into those contraceptives? How much wisdom and thought and technology they put into abortion clinics? Now they can just take a, a I don't know what they call it, a little tool. They can take the tool and put it in your vagina and just pull the baby out piece by piece. That's what they're doing when you get to like four or five months pregnant and the baby is actually has a body. That's what they're doing now. It takes a level of wisdom to come up with that and not kill you in the process. The Bible said God destroys all that. He said, just get married. Stop having unprotected sex. Stop having sex with men that ain't your husband. Stop having sex with no good men that you don't want to have a baby by. And then, bam, you don't need no abortion because you ain't pregnant. Can I say something? 
Jeff, then I'll, after I finish this, you go ahead. You got it. Go ahead. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So that's why we come on this platform and we got our rules the way we got it. We use the King James Version Bible here. If you want to bring another book and all that stuff like that, we ain't trying to hear it. You know, we ain't trying to hear that. We trying to use we, we use the word of God here, and that's our platform. Now you're welcome to go start your own room and use all the different books from the last samurai, the black samurai that you want, or the karate kid, whatever you want to do. Right? Mr. Miyagi, do your thing. But here we teach the Bible, okay, and we deal with the Bible. Because we know that by the food, what people call foolish, us staying up all night, reading the words of God, teaching the Bible. Somebody may say, that's foolish. Y'all wasting your time. God says that's how he's going to save those that believe. Okay. But uh, go ahead. Somebody have, want to say something? Yeah, it was uh, Rachel. Oh, hi. I was just saying that we need to also hold these men accountable who are just willing to live with any woman and stuff like that and uh, produce a child and not willing to take care of the child once the child is born. So I feel like it's, uh, America... You, 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 bring, you, bring, you bring out a good point, and we definitely for that too. Um, you know, niggas that... Because it take two to... to because a lot of them want to gangbang. They want to go out there gangbang and stuff like that and sleep right, around. Right, right, but look... But and look, they have like 14 said, kids and they're proud of it and they don't take care of the out, child. Rachel. Rachel, gang banging and what you're saying has nothing to do with abortions. You're that you're talking about violence compared to willful sex. No, no, no listen, listen like, what I'm saying, Rachel. Those are two different things. You're, it, those, those have nothing to do with it. Gang banging has nothing to do with a woman willfully laying down and having sex, and then killing the baby after she has had unmarried sex because. She doesn't want the baby, so get, the man yeah. need the man do need to be held accountable and honor marriage, but at the same time, as we are saying here, unless like Dion said, unless you're the you're the less than listen to what I'm saying now, because um, what comes to being pregnant, l abortions are less than one percent. Listen to what I'm saying, less than one percent of abortions are from rape. So you know what that means? 99.9% .9 of the abortions that happen are from willful, unmarried sex where women have agreed to lay down with this man that they did not plan on marrying. They knew the man did not uh, plan on marrying him, and the man did not force them. They willfully laid down and said, yes, come into me, and I know the consequences of this. You can't blame that on the man when you willfully laid down with him when you knew he was not your husband, nor did he want to be your husband. You made yourself believe that he was going to have a relationship with you. That's not the man's fault. That's you because that's your body, <laughs> your choice. Yeah, I get it. Can I just say something Don't deflect that. that. <laughs> Women are out here being whores. Hey, I, mean, I, like, I, just... I like how you said that. You said your body, your choice. Can That's I just add something to that, been, please? Um, a lot of women been at, been talking about that. My choice, your choice. Yeah, he'll let you go in a second, Rachel. Go ahead, yeah. Judd. A lot, of, a lot of sisters choose to lay down with a brother and let that brother go inside them and shoot the club up without first wondering does he really want to be with me um is he gonna marry me he needs to marry me he needs to make me a um what they say uh what's the word they used to say uh, not a, a respectable sister i can't remember what word they would use but uh, uh an honest woman that's what an they say. honest woman yeah you know a lot of the sisters don't don't wait until they're made an honest woman first before they decide to lay down with a brother and then it's like now it's the brother's fault you know, this right here, we talking, the title of the room is dealing with uh, Black Lives Matter until the black woman gets pregnant. In some kind of way, women always want to go and say, well, what about the man? It's like, it's, will accountability ever be taken? Like, you know, we had some women be accountable and point stuff out, but 
it's always, you know, the nights when we deal with the women, it's like it's always pointing back at the man. Well, you, if, unless you were raped, you laid down there and said, hey, whatever happens, happens. So, you know, it's your fault. <laughs> And okay. it's not, and it's not, and it's not that, and if you're saying that, um, and this is the thing too, sister, sisters, you, uh, a lot of you all claim the strong, independent, um, moniker of yourself. If you're going to sit here and, and tell us that that man tricked me into having sex with him, you're saying you're stupid because you know damn well what a man when a man is really into you if he means what he says if he plans on having a life with you because his conversation didn't lead to the bed within the first few days that you knew him it wasn't about sex it wasn't about that night he wasn't giving you sexual vibes all of that stuff so if you're saying i got tricked into laying down and having willful sex, you're you're saying women are stupid and can't judge, don't have the don't have discernment to know when a man does not have any plans for them after this. I hope you're not saying that, Rachel. No. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm just for me, it's just like I, you know, if we have to go more in details and keep it a little bit R, um. A lot of these men, you guys have heard, because you're a man, that they want to, you know, sleep with this woman without condoms on, you know what I mean? And and it can, there are situations where men will, like, you know, like, for me, again, I don't condone these behaviors, because I feel like it's just against God's word. Because if you believe in God's words, first of all, you wouldn't be sleeping when you're not, you don't, uh, you're not married, and you wouldn't be, like, just drinking and putting yourself in those situations, whether you're a man or woman, and I've been there before, so I'm speaking from experiences, but I was for speaking for those secular people out there in the world. It's like those men and women need to be held accountable. They they produce when a woman gets pregnant unwillingly, right? And then she abortion comes out. Some of the women goes and uh, tell the men like I'm gonna get abortion. A lot of those men will actually promote that. They actually can um, tell the woman go get an abortion. I had a friend who she was debating whether I get an abortion or not, and the guy actually brought her the pill. You know what I mean? This man will yeah. actually... That, yeah. That's what you see. That's what you're seeing a lot of this men actually, put, um, uh, you know, like, saying, like... Hey, oh, Rachel, Rachel, right. Rachel, just a real quick yeah. question. Can a man make a woman have an abortion? No, but he can. Then it's her like, fault. Pursue. Then it's the woman's <laughs> fault. It is no, her fault. No, but that's not... That's not He can you pursue good, her, yeah. though. It's the woman. No, it's fault. like it's like like, it's, uh, like it's, a woman can't make me have a vasectomy. If I go get a vasectomy, it's because I chose to do it. So if a woman goes into a clinic, sits down, and whatever they do, and then she decides to sign paperwork to have an abortion, it's her fault. If I go to a clinic, can... if I go to a clinic and say, "Yeah, I'm gonna get a vasectomy," I can't look at uh, my wife and go, "It's your fault. I got this." No, I made a decision. Uh, women are smart. Women are very smart. Black women are very smart. Rachel, do you think women are smart? Of course. Then there you go. Then it's your it's okay, your well, decision. It's your fault. You can't women say are it's somebody smart, else's fault. Just, you can't say it's speaking, nobody else's fault. But that's if generally you go, speaking. If you go and do it, but I'm generally it's your speaking. fault, sister. It is what it is. You're trying to point it to the man. It's her fault if she does No, 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 no. I... Sorry, Judd. I just I do believe it's her, like yes, she's it's her fault. Her fault. It is what it but is. I'm just I'm also you saying take that responsibility. there are those Judd, situations can I, where I just want to jump in here for a second because I, no, I agree with what Rachel's saying. Hold, and on, I hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. We deal with Rachel. Okay. We deal with Rachel right yeah, now because because what what always happens is like. It's always some kind of way it gets turned around to the men. Men are not twerking right now for abortions. The black, I haven't seen a black man, a video of black men twerking for abortions. I haven't seen, you know, you got all these black women donate money. They all excite, you know, we like, we got to do what Lizzo. we do to make sure the women can keep killing babies. It's like, no, this is, y'all got to take this L. The black women gonna take got to take this L. You know, um, they losing their mind. Hey, and Judd, you know what this really boils down to? And I want you to understand this. This is what this boils down to. Is when you point the finger and send the man to all of this. You're literally 
asking us to condone you being a whore. That's what you're sitting here asking us to condone. Like, um, no. blaming on the man that we keep having sex with that don't want to marry us and things. Well, the simple fix to all of that is don't fucking have sex until you're married. Until you have signed the marriage papers, you have went through the process to know that this is the man that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Stop having sex. All of you are trying to find excuses around what God said that uh, a, a sex is for a husband and a wife to be fruitful and multiply. Stop sinning against God. He didn't make sex for you to casually have whenever your damn box or your your ride gets to itching and being hard. He didn't make it for that. You are supposed to get married. Here's the proof. First Corinthians chapter seven. For all those that have never read the Bible, we're going to show you where your sex outside of marriage is against God. And that's the reason why you've got multiple uh, baby daddies you've got uh, you're raising kids on your own you're trying to be the mother and the father you men out here broke because you got to pay child support and give 17 percent away why 20 million babies out of the black this is just the black race we ain't even talking about guess who's number two in abortions hispanics <laughs> blacks and hispanics are number one and number two in abortions we're only dealing with the black uh black people as far as 20, it's 20 million babies that never seen the light of day because of men and women that wanted to go outside of what God said when it comes to having sex. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and I want you to read verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Fornication is unmarried sex. It is sexual sin. Fornication is unmarried sex. I want you to understand because fornication ain't a word we normally lose, use. Unmarried to avoid unmarried immoral sexual sins. Read it again. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. They didn't say girlfriend. It didn't say boyfriend to avoid sexual immorality and baby daddies and abortions and blaming the man that you laid down with. Blaming the woman that got you on child support. Let every woman have her own husband and every man have his own wife. And look what God says in the very next verse. When you have your own husband and you have your own wife. Read. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Now look what God says. When, you're having, when you have a husband, when you have a wife. That means you have to render due benevolence sex. You have to give him sex. You have to give her sex, wife, husband. Now read the next verse. The wife have not power over her own body. When the husband wants sex, take an aspirin, lay your ass down. Read on. But the husband... And likewise, also the husband have not power over his own body, but uh -huh. the wife. But the wife, when you want to get it in, guess what? Meet me in the bedroom. Husband, not girlfriend or boyfriend of two, three years. Oh, that's my main squeeze. That's my sugar daddy. <laughs> that's my sneaky link. No. You sin against God and therefore God judges you for it. Keep reading. Refraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent from a time. So don't lie to your husband when when he wants sex. Don't lie to your wife when she wants sex. Come to an agreement. When I wake up, I'm tired. It's only for a short time that you can, you have a consent that okay, we'll we'll do something tomorrow, whatever. I'm tired. What does what, it sound like a chore? Keep reading. Keep that you may have that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Boom, and there you go. 
Okay, during when you fast and pray, God says you shouldn't be having sex. <clears throat> Read on. And come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. There you go. Look at that. When you deny your husband or your wife sex, Satan gets in the middle and says, you know what? You can go outside and just, you know, hit it real quick um, and come back, take a shower. She'll never know. Or you can, um, you know what? Put a little douche up in that shit and vinegar and tighten it right back up and, you know, Good have Lord. a little work husband <laughs> and he'll oh, never know. Nah. That's what you do. But sex, read verse two again for everybody that keeps wanting to make excuses. Verse two, one more again. I'm going to mute my mic. Verse two, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, sexual immorality, sexual sins, to avoid sexual immorality, sin, do what? Let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. And then you can have all the sex you want in the world with that one woman and that one man that you have married and you're going to be with the rest of your life. Anything I got a that? God said, I'm going to judge your ass. Is it on what we're going over right now, Douglas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just oh. need clarity on something. If yeah, you don't mind. Dude, this is Christian speaking. We kind of been waiting for a while. We got a few questions, and y'all been going back and forth. I got like five to seven questions. Okay. All right. We're going we to get to it. All right. Here we go. Go ahead. We, 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 let me shoot, start with Douglas first. Go ahead, Douglas, real quick. Okay. Yeah, I'm, Jojo, 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 don't be quiet, man. Go ahead, Douglas. Yeah, I was actually following you guys as you guys were reading, and I'm looking at verse six. Can you guys read that and try to like help me understand what he's actually saying? Yeah, go ahead. Verse six. Verse six. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. All right. The next verse is going to tell you what it what he means by that. Read. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Now, how was even as myself? What does he mean? Paul did not have a wife. Paul's life was dedicated to the work of God. He didn't have time for women. He traveled. When you read the book of Acts, he traveled all over the eastern hemisphere of where all the scattered Israelites were. He didn't have time um, to give his life or, or take out time. To be a, a, a woman. Keep reading. For I would that every man were even as I myself, but every man have his own proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. Now that, is, that explains verse six. I speak this by permission and not of commandment, because the um, nowhere in the in the commandments it says thou shall not get married. Right, right, but right. You, and that you are giving yourself to the Lord and. He's all the Lord is your number one priority. Then you don't have to marry. You don't all of that. You can give your life to the Lord. And it says it um, a little bit further down. It's like 30 something. Right? Yep. I'm looking at it right now. I got this, you know, this uh, Cambridge. <laughs> uh, yep. Go ahead. Read it. I'll throw that out. Let me see. A little higher. Uh, start at verse uh, 32. Yeah, 32 for the man, I think. Verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried carried for the things that belong to the Lord. There you go. That's why I said I speak by permission, not of commandment. Because Paul, he didn't have a wife. His whole life was about God and spreading the gospel. Read on. How he may please the Lord, but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There you go. So that's what that means back up I, in verse six. I still, I still got, I still need a little bit more clarity. And the reason why I'm, I'm like, I'm not doubting what is being said, but my concern is that how can we then approach this if he's not, if this is not a commandment? You Say it know, again. Like, how can we, how can we approach this? Because he's he's like, basically, it's like he's ask he's saying that he's saying this. With well, Douglas, what yeah, he's yeah, saying, sorry. what he's this is what he's saying. He's saying that look, this is the way I live my life, 
as in not being married. Right. It's nothing in the Bible that says you shouldn't get married. But he's saying, I live my life this way. He says, but everybody ain't going to be able to do this. So to not get into sin, you need to get married. That's what he's saying. And even Christ said in Matthew 19 that some men made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Meaning some men were so devoted to the kingdom of God that they didn't have a wife. They decided not to have a wife. And of course, what comes with a wife is sex. So... That's why if, you, if you're getting tripped up on the fact that it's not a commandment, he's telling you, yo, this ain't no commandment. You do your thing. If you can't contain, get married. But right, if you but can't when contain he was, and you focused on the kingdom, when he was reading early, When he was reeling earlier, he said, this is what, when he was, I, I guess, when he was trying to explain what Paul was trying to say, he said, this is what God said you should do. So this is why I'm kind of like asking yeah, the question. God said, God said you shouldn't fornicate if you feel like you're gonna fornicate right. you should be married which right. is a commandment right yeah that's the part the part that's not a commandment is him saying that he's single and that's the part that's not a commandment not the first part it's the second part right right but when uh z was explaining the verses earlier he said this is what god is saying and that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to like point that out there because yeah. it's not. I don't know. I don't know you can't. Not, uh, the whole point of what I was talking about is unmarried sex. It ain't got nothing to do with Paul and I not agree with you. having a I wife. I totally agree with everything you said. I was just, I just saw that and it kind of like stood out to me. That's all. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta understand Paul's whole life to understand one verse. You understand his whole life. All right, uh, let's move on. Christian. Uh, I think the sister Christian. Oh uh, yeah. Um. Good morning, everybody. Um. My name is Christian. In reference to the topic, real quick, because I I got y'all been going back and forth like all the mods, and I got a question, a lot of questions for y'all. But in reference to the title, I personally do not agree with adoption. Um, I don't have any kids myself. I know most people will probably say I shouldn't even be speaking on this topic. Um, I don't have children because I choose not to lay down with men. I chose that. Um, so it is a choice, ladies. Like you, It is possible to not lay down with somebody and not get pregnant if you don't want to get pregnant. I don't agree with people who, who want to go get abortions just because you're trying to avoid uh, a responsibility. However, I do realize that there are some people who have uh, medical and health conditions. And one of my questions was because some of you, you said um, something about like, OK, so like if somebody this is my question to y'all. One of the first questions, if a woman is already pregnant, like you guys do know people die giving birth. Right. So if a woman is already pregnant. Are you, will you sacrifice your wife for your yeah, child? Or yeah, that's, well, that's not what we, that's not what if, we talking about, sis. We're right, not, right. It's like, it's like talking about, uh, you know. What are I you remember, talking about? I, well, I remember when they was having a discussion about the breastfeeding because they had a shortage of um, Similac and stuff like that. And some lady was like, what about women that don't have breasts? It's like. We're not talking about women that don't have breasts. So we're not talking about women that are pregnant and then they come to the point to where they have an issue that's like, look, it's going to be one or the other. That's that's a small. Okay, percentage. fair, fair enough. Fair, we're fair talking enough. about I, women. Yeah, we're talking about women that lay down and, and have sex and decide, you know what? I'm not right. ready to have a baby. I'm too young. I want to live my life. I don't want to mess my body up yet. Um I don't want to be with this dude. I don't want to have a baby. Like, this Rear. is what we're talking about. One for my gotcha, truth. gotcha. Okay, well, I'm glad you clarified that because I did come well, in a little bit late. Well, um, I do want to, because I'll mention that. I do want to deal with that point, though, since you said you had a question about it. Yeah, because yeah, y'all were kind of talking about it, but let me right. finish the question, though, because I didn't even really get the question out. Because okay, I didn't even get, he kind of cut me off. But the okay, question is, um, how much of a risk is it, or, excuse me, that's the other question, will you sacrifice your wife and with, I know y'all not talking about this, but since he asked, will you sacrifice your wife for your child or vice versa if pregnancy is the potential, has the potential so, to kill her? So we don't have that choice. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. 
Go to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. This is what we believe because we believe in the Bible. So this is what we truly wholeheartedly believe because we believe in the word of God. Watch what the word of God says. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the Bible says that God is the one that orchestrates death and orchestrates life. If God wants a soul to be taken from this earth, he's going to allow it to happen. Whether it's in childbirth, whether it's a car accident, whether she choke on a chicken bone, I, I have no power over that. You understand? So I'm not going to take a life in, in an effort to save a life in that regard. I can't step in God's way. Who's to say that that doctor is even correct? Here it is. We go have an abortion and she could have actually had the child. Here it is. We have one of those mid pregnancy abortions where they take a rod and, or some scalpels and pull a baby out piece by piece. And she would have survived it if I had just had faith, if I had just relied on the Lord. So that's why that's I said that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, hold on, wait a minute. That's a slippery slope to say, okay, would you allow your wife to die to bring your child into the earth? Like, I don't have no power over that child coming into the earth, nor no power of my wife dying. You understand what I'm trying to say? And, and to say, well, how would you make a choice of what you should or shouldn't do? I have no choice. I got her pregnant. This is my wife. We're going to do everything possible we can to make sure the pregnancy happens and that she's healthy throughout the, 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 the entire pregnancy. But I have no power if the Lord takes her or takes the child. Now, one more scripture. First Corinthians, or First Timothy 2, verse 15. Yeah, that that's not abortion at all. <laughs> right. First Timothy two fifteen. First Timothy chapter two and verse fifteen. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved and childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So God says if the woman is faithful, ch uh, charitable. Right. And that she's sober, which means she's keeping God's commandments. The Lord says, and this is his promise, that she'll be saved in childbearing. So this is what I'm going to instruct my wife throughout her pregnancy. I'm going to say, hey, sister, stay in the spirit. Keep God's commandments. We're going to do everything we possibly can to make sure that this baby gets here healthy and that you're healthy. But at the end of the day, I have no power over either. OK, yeah, yeah. So, um. Yeah, that's a good answer. I like the way you responded hey, to that. And um, may I, may since he clarified, since he since the other guy clarified the other situation, I'm actually going to skip a couple questions, so it's going to be a little bit shorter. Um, so earlier, someone on the stage mentioned that sex is for married people, and um, there's this is actually a two part question. The first part is, what advice can God? scripturally give a person struggling with urges and they prayed about it but it still won't go away and then there's a second part to that question but I'll let you answer that E, e you want to answer that E I know, I know you want to chime on something else too no y'all go ahead I want to do it the first part but, 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 um, regarding go, the child go, go, go ahead, ahead sir that one. go ahead sir then we can yeah, get yeah, that go one. oh no I, well, she wants to go through, go through her questions I'll go through her questions so I'll, go back, I'll come back around to it Okay. Yeah, because it's a few questions I don't want to take too long. Yeah, I don't want to yeah, take too much time. Y'all yeah, got to do it that one. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Go to, because um, I was I was talking about that, right? Um, so go to that in uh, Matthew. Um, about what, what God, when you've got a, when you've got a, uh, I guess you would say a, a heavy uh, sexual spirit on you or demon in this case where you, you know, you can't really control it, things of that nature. There is biblical solutions to that because God wouldn't, he wouldn't put you in that situation and you not have a way out of it or a, um, a solution um, for it, right? Um, give me that, I think it's uh, Matthew 17. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Now, in the context of this uh, chapter, I just read it one verse to get straight to the point. But um, the woman came, or a man came to 
um, the disciples to heal the son, but they couldn't do it. They brought him to Christ. Then he asked, well, why couldn't we? We do it. And Christ explained to him, it's some spirits that got such a hold on people that the only way that you can rid them of you or uh, from you is but by prayer and fasting. The the prayer is that whatever spirit you want removed off for of you, if it be that sexual spirit, that demon that just you it's got a hold on you, you pray that the Lord will remove that from you. And the fasting is showing God that you are sincere about it because in fasting you're denying yourself of the most important thing to the body for it to live, which is bread and water, which what it functions on. But you're showing God that you are sincere in your prayer by abstaining from those things. And if it be God's will, then you get delivered from that spirit. But prayer and fasting is the key to remove certain spirits that you have off of you. Not this water fasting not this fruit fasting, not this intermittent fasting, the stuff that the church has. The real deal fasting is that no water or no food crosses your lips from sundown to sundown, which is a complete day to God. And in the, in the midst of that, you're praying. And it might not just be one time. It might have to be multiple times that you pray and fast and ask God to remove those spirits from you. That's Matthew 17, verse 21. Okay, thank you for that one. That, you, know, you answered that very, very well, sir. Um, so earlier someone also said that you, um, even when you move out and you're still a single person, like if you, like you, someone stated that there's no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend, right? So I get that. I got that point. Now, what I'm confused as to is to, why would a father encourage or allow a young female to even move out on her own without a husband? Isn't that, in a sense, some somewhat kind of prostituting her in a way? Because um, didn't, didn't she stay home until she's married? Okay, so when you, when you examine the scriptures, the Bible talks about how we have been discontinued from our heritage, meaning the laws that God has set up in today's time throughout slavery, Jim Crow, all these various different things, feminism, all this stuff that has happened in our history here in America, we have lost who we truly are. So we don't know about actually keeping our children with us in our houses, letting them go to school, but come home. You understand? Like they may go to a local college and they, and they don't stay on campus. They come home. You know what I'm saying? And the father watch over her until she's married off. Like our culture here in America, what we've learned is to put the kid out at 18. You know what I mean? You ever heard a parent say that? Like, shit, as soon as you're 18, your ass out. You know what I mean? But that's not right. the way That's not the way that we did it historically. So the, the mindset now is, is to return back to what our forefathers used to do. Give me that real quick, Sirach 42. We talked about this briefly earlier. So there is no boyfriend or girlfriend in the Bible. And I understand what you're saying. Like you're saying, okay, well, isn't that kind of prostituting your daughter by throwing her to the wolves, so to speak, and, and just getting her to do it on right. her own? Right. I understand that. But we also have to take into consideration some fathers aren't able, you know what I mean, to, to afford to put their children through a local college. And she may have to go two, three states away to go to school. And that's where you instill the certain principles in her and hope that she does, hope that she continue to do it. You know what I mean? We don't have the financial wealth or, or the abilities like we may have had at that, at that time where we could keep our kids uh, at home with us, our daughters in particular, at home with us until they're 25, 26. Like some of us may not have that capability. Like she might have to go off and do her thing. But we have to hope that what we instilled in her biblically while she was young, she won't depart from when she's old, you know, and that's up to her, you know. But read that for me. Ibuka, you there? You're on mute, Ibuka. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42 and verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care of her taketh away sleep. So when, when you care for your daughter, it takes away sleep from you. 
like I mentioned earlier when I was speaking about mine, it, 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 it takes away that sleep from you because you always thinking upon these things that he's about to list. Go ahead. When she is young, let she pass away the flower of her age. Uh-huh. And being married, lest she should be hated. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. So these particular things is why the father stays up late thinking about, you know, uh, his daughter and raising her correctly. You know, lest she pass a flower of her age, lest she get married to a man and he hate her because, uh, for whatever reason, it could be various different reasons, whether she's not submissive, she's disrespectful, whatever the case may be. A father thinks about that. Like, I don't want my, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want my wife, my daughter to marry a man and he hate her because she don't know how to speak to him or she's not submissive or whatever the case, she's an adulteress, whatever the case may be. Then it says, lest she be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. That's also a shame or something that a father thinks about. So when, as he thinks about these things, he's putting things in place to make sure she doesn't follow that particular uh, path, right, from a young age. Go ahead. And having an husband, lest she should misbehave herself. Mm. And when she is married, lest she should be barren. See that? Lest she be, lest she be barren means she can't bring forth his grandchildren. She can't bring forth children. These are all the things that a father thinks about. So to answer your question, it's not you're not prostituting your daughter by her having to go off to school or her starting a career or whatever the case may be, and she's still being single. This is where the principles that you instilled in her when she was young now are put to the test, and it's ultimately her decision. Like you can't, we can't. When my daughter is nineteen or twenty, and she says, "Hey, I want to leave. I want to go to college and such and such. Or I want to do this," I can't force her to stay at that moment. I have to just rely on the fact that the things that I taught her, she's going to follow in her adulthood. That's Proverbs uh, uh, 22 and 6, I believe. You read that real quick? Y'all know the scripture. I want to read it. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, that's what we hope. Train them up in the way they should go when they're young, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. You know? Great, great. Okay, and then my final question, I'm I'm glad you guys have been able to find, like, like actually pull the scriptures out and help me to understand this. So my final question is, um, someone also mentioned that in the case of rape, that person should also consider adoption. Now, as a Hebrew Israelite, or a Hebrew nation, let me say that, do you find that that could be adoption can be the very thing causing the mishaps within our community that could be creating the monsters that we got right now in Chicago, killing each other on the streets and stuff like that. And some of them, you know, all of them are not adopted, but I like spiritually, does that really make, I want to see what that, does that make sense to y'all spiritually, like giving the child up for adoption, knowing that these systems are not, built for them or is it the fact that you realize that this is a child of rape so you consider them a bastard child so it doesn't really matter about their life well well you know the, the scriptures talk about being a father to the fatherless uh when you know one thing for sure that we don't do and we need to get better uh go to go to zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1 read that real quick The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. So in our community, we don't, we're not gathered together like that. We're separate. We're doing our own thing. You know, we're individuals. In other communities, when they have kids, uh, when um, a woman have a kid, uh, a young woman or something like that, you know, they're you know, they are give the kid up to an auntie, to a friend, to somebody in the community that can't have kids, that wants to have kids and things like that. We don't deal like that. Um, you know, and that's something that we have to do. We have to get better. There are, there are a lot of, uh, black men and women that can't have kids, but they want to have kids. And, you know, if we, if we were close together as a tight knit community, when certain things happen like this, you wouldn't have to give your child up to foster care and things like that. 
you have uh, you would have other men or you know ready to be a father to the fatherless and things like that so you know what everything we talk about is always trying to build back the nation build back our nation and us being so separate and individuals is one thing that makes um it almost hard to um fulfill some of these scriptures but but yeah you know if if you know, if you, it's better to give that kid over to a, a brother and a sister that wants, that wants to have kids, that want to show kids love and bring them up in love rather than to kill the baby. I mean, the kid didn't rape you. It wasn't, the kid didn't have anything to do with that. Thank hey. y'all so much for answering those questions. I'm going to move myself down, but y'all, I really appreciate y'all. I, I think all the answers that y'all gave me are very valid and true. Oh, praise to the most high. Hey, E, you want to deal with that that point that you want to deal with, sir? Yeah, real quick. I wanted to deal with the instance where you have to choose between um, the mother or the child leaving the world. Um, give me Genesis 35. Um, as you know, um, well, not, well, some of you may not know. Most of you probably don't know. But when you examine history, our foremothers were very, very much into... Um, bringing children into the world because they understood that they were that they were strengthening and furthering the nation by bringing the children, especially a male child. That was something that our sisters of old time prided themselves in. And so Rachel, um, this is Jacob's wife. Um, she was crying about you know not being able to have children, and then finally the Lord opened up her womb, and then lastly she ended up having a hard labor. So Genesis thirty five. And read verse 16 to 20. The book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, chapter 35 and verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwives... So it says, so says she was in hard labor, meaning the labor... It was rough. So, of course, it may have been hemorrhaging. Hard labor means it was a rough labor. It was, it was bad. Things, were, it was, things weren't going too well. It was a hard labor. It wasn't an easy labor. It was a hard labor. It was bad. So, so life was in danger. Read on. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Stop, stop. So, you hear what she said? So, the midwife told Rachel, Fear not. For you shall bring this this child into the world also. So Rachel's concern was not herself. Rachel's concern was that baby being born. So biblically speaking, the sisters, they tended to make it where they rather leave the world than the child leave the world because they understood the importance that child must go on. I'll give you an example. Let's just say, for example, your child is alive. Let's say your child is alive and well, and your child runs in the street or whatever, and you're going to run out there in the street and get that child and try to save it, even if it costs you your life. You'll do that for your child that's outside your womb. So the same care that you would have for your child outside the womb and wanting it to survive is, is no different from the same care as a parent you would have for the child that's in the womb. So the midwife told Rachel, fear not. Read the verse again. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to Me, pass... Because she had, because her first child she had was Joseph. The, the midwife said, Fear not, for you shall have this child also. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benomi. But so before she died, she, before before she passed on, she named him, named him ben, ben and I, Benoni, go ahead. But his father called him Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And Rachel so, died. Yeah. yeah. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Beth now, Bethlehem. Right. So my point is, is that in, in that instance in time, some, will, some may say, well, not all parents have that care. But. That's something that the parents have to have faith that the Lord will have mercy on on both, on both the mother as well as the child. But scripturally speaking, 
the women tended to have more of a concern for the child's life than their own. Likewise, a parent tends to have more of a, of a concern for their child's life more than their own when it's, when it's outside the womb. So when it comes to your child, of course, all of us know that once a child comes into this world, your life is no longer your own. That child's life supersedes your own, you know, when they're outside of the world and outside of the womb. So I just want to put that point out there. I'm not saying, yeah, the hell with the wife, go ahead and die and the baby. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that most parents, you know, me as a parent, I know at the end of the day, as soon as that child comes into the world, and you, and you, especially if it's your firstborn, and you glance at it, you realize that there's a certain feeling that comes over you where you know that, that responsibility is on your lap. That child's life, your life is no longer your own. You're not taking care of yourself anymore, and you're taking care of that child. So I'm going to put that point out there. All right? Uh, can I respond to that real quick before you guys move on? Uh, who is that? Cole? Cole, I'm at the bottom. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead real quick, then we jump back up. I think Sierra might is next. Uh, go ahead. Sure, thanks. Um, I just wanted to offer you guys something that you might want to consider. Um, since we're dealing with uh, matters of life and death, and you have a lot of people here in the room listening to you um, on this particular issue, I would just offer that, you know, um, life beginning at conception is a distinctly American Christian ideology. If you talk to Orthodox Jewish people, whether they're African, Arabic, or um, Arab, any like people of color that are also practicing um, uh, the Jewish faith, they believe that, say, for instance, you're dead when you take your last breath, and you're alive when you take your first breath. They don't restrict um, abortion. Um, and a rabbi told me that uh, they don't do that because, uh, particularly in the matter of um, safety for the mother, because they are leaning towards compassion um, for the mother. Um, this is also the case in Islam, although um, there are different interpretations of the Hadith, where there's some like variation on like when they say the they, that it's not allowed, but even in Islam, um, abortion is allowed. So I just want um, I don't know if y'all knew that, and if you but if you didn't, I wanted to make you aware of that. Um, because I don't think it would be fair to the women in the audience to um, be made to feel like they have to bear that type of burden. I agree with yeah. Edie. Once a child comes into the world, of course, uh, any parent is going to sacrifice themselves for their child. But um, as, when we're talking about um, the gestational period, um, you make that sacrifice if you want to. That's a personal choice. But I'm not sure that that's, uh, you know, I wouldn't tell somebody, like, God requires this of you. Um, yeah. uh, you sister, know, uh, this, scholars, this real, scholars this real quick. don't agree um, with that. This, this, that. What you just said, you said a rabbi, you went to some of the Muslim. You know, these are same, those same rabbis, they circumcise babies with their mouths. So they, they take their mouse and put it around baby penises. So that's, you know, you're getting advice from, from those people. Yeah. And then when you think well, about, and then when you think about, uh, you think about stuff, the Muslims, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of them, they, uh, force, um, you know, what they call that when they cut the clitoris off of women so they can't enjoy sex. Uh, that, that's so, not mainline so, Islam, so you, but, but that's it, it female does, genital it does, it does mutilation happen. that you're talking about. Islam. You know, so it's like, you know, we're going off what the, the Bible says. Right. You know, so we, we're definitely not going to deal with. Uh, but, some but, of these but, other, you know, the. Uh, we're the, we're the, not going to deal with some of these other beliefs. The Old you Testament know, the, is, the Bible is part says of the Jewish canon, though. You know right. what I'm saying? The They're reading the a lot of the, the same the, things. 
the Old Testament is our history. The, the Old yes. Testament has nothing to do with a, a the Old rabbi Testament is all is rabbi. also referred to as the Torah yeah. in Jewish right. tradition. And that's, yeah, that's but that's Israelite tradition, not Jewish tradition. The people that you call Jewish and know as Jewish today are imposters. They're not the Israelites. You can Even show, we the can show Aramaic, uh, uh, Jews from wait, Africa. Wait, wait, wait. Girl, hold on, could you just thank you? Uh, we can show it archaeologically. Archeolo- we can show it scripturally. We can store it historically. They're not the people of God. So we don't. We, we really personally, and um, don't take offense to this, we don't give a damn about what they say. We care about what God's word says. God's word says that it, Christ, or the Lord knew Jeremiah before he was even conceived in his mother's room, meaning that particular spirit, Jeremiah, he knew that he was going to be a boy, and he knew that he was going to be a prophet. God ordained it. So anytime someone tells us that, and who oh, said that? Jewish, the Lord said that. Uh, let's read it Jeremiah one and five real quick. Can we read Jeremiah one and five? Yeah, yeah. And, and like the book of he, Jeremiah. Hold on, let's, speaking. Let's read, the Cole, let's, let's read the scripture, please. The book of the. Sorry, prophet sorry, Judge. Oh, you can jump right back in, sir. Uh, that's all good. You got it. The book of Jeremiah, chapter one and verse five. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Start at four so we can see who's speaking. Verse four. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So these are the who, words who of the is, Most High. Who, who is the me? Who that, is that's the, me? the most. That's the Most High. It, it said the word of the Lord came to me. So who is the me? Me, me meaning Jeremiah. The Lord spoke okay, to Jeremiah. Okay, so Jeremiah. But Jeremiah didn't write that even particular book, correct? So the so, yeah, you really, a, you, so, so for a, real quick, you don't believe in the Bible. There's a potential. At the, at the end of the day, sis, you don't believe. No, 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 no. That's, that's no, 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 no,
Like cool. I said, people can choose to, to, they can give up the ghosts if they want to. I'm just saying, you don't have to. God does not require that of you. Yeah, if, it, if, 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 the, if they if he did, one one place. If he did, read it. On, listen, you would see some consistency this, across Jeremiah, all of the issues. Jeremiah, call, them, call them. Thank you. I'm sorry. Can I just say this? Finish. Jeremiah, can I just finish? No, 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 I want to. I want to. You would see consistency across. I just. I just want to read who wrote the book. All of the very first chapter and verse. Read that, please. Book of Jeremiah, chapter one and verse one. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathal, in the land of Benjamin. So these are the words of Jeremiah. Do you read verse 4, please? Jump, the verse, verse jump down four. to verse 4 now. Verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Stop. Stop right there. So Jeremiah, this is Jeremiah's words. And he said, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, the word of the Lord Came unto him saying what? Not verse four, not me verse five. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I don't understand how any interpretation can be made in that. There's no room for error. That's pretty clear. Who who, who wrote the book? And then it's really clear that the author who wrote the book made it clear who spoke those words to him. That's there's no there's no way you can misinterpret that in any other fashion other than what it says. Um give me Psalms 139 verse 15, please. Regarding um the same thing. Psalms 139. Psalm. So David said 15. Let me see, let me see what's good. Hold on. Uh 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Psalms chapter 139 and verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret. Stop, and stop. Vaughn, Vaughn. It says when he was made in secret. This is going into his, this is going into the conception. This is going into his parents. We don't watch this. It's going to say it. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Meaning, meaning referring to man as informed in man by man. Watch this. Next verse. Mine eyes did see my substance. Yet you saw my his substance is his body. Watch this. Yet being unperfect, and in thy book, all my members were written. Hold on, which, stop. In God on in God's book, all of David's members were written. His head, how his head would be, how his hair would grow, how his eyes would look, how his hands would look, the color of his skin, his fingers, all ten toes, all ten fingers, his penis, his behind. God wrote all this in the book. This is how he's going to look. He's going to look like his mom or his dad. I'm going to have him look like this, have him look like that. It's in God's book. So when, so the moment that sperm hits that egg and starts to form, God wrote that down. That's what, it, so that's what it's saying. We don't have to, all, this, all this semantical European stuff that we come with, gestation, we don't have to sit in that stuff. Because, uh, because the Bible makes it clear is that David said his members are written in a book. How he was formed and all that. Read on. This is before he was conceived. Read on. Which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. See, that was the continuous were fashioned when there was yet none of them. Meaning the Lord already had the blueprint as to how David was going to David would look before he was brought into the world. David, the Lord has a book of how you're going to look, whether you have um, your legs, your arms, your height. All that is pre-written in a book, and then he puts your spirit, he has a sperm, reach the egg, and go into the belly, or go into the egg, and so on and so forth. That's what the Bible says. So we got to be very mindful of all this technical talk, and Israelis, and I'm not interested in, 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 in Israelis, and these people running around sucking on baby penises. They, they lose validation. I'm not interested in what Muslims think, that, that still have us as slaves over there in Mauritania and Libya and still have black slaves. The Haritines and Mauritania and Libya and, and Tunisia. I'm not interested in them either. If anyone at anyone the shop of bomb says chest and blowing stuff up with the name of some god, I'm not interested in what he says either. So we're going to move on. Continue. All right. Um, if y'all want to... Email us any questions or get the uh, beginner's book that we have or the website. You can go and learn and check out on your own, too. Email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com, and we'll get that info to you. The beginner's book 
Facebook, the website, any you got questions, whatever it may be, that may be too long to answer on here. Just email us there at biblicalsmokegmail.com. All right. Um, let's move on here now. Um, I think we might be on evangelist. The evangelist. Evangelist Natosia Goins. If I'm saying that right. Founder of Natosha, Natosha Ministries International 501c3. Look like she's asleep. All right, we'll move on. Drew, Drew, you said you had a, a a dagger or something earlier, right? Drew, you there? I'm here. All right, yeah. What's your uh, yeah. what's your thoughts on the topic? I I, I, I hated the the jump in there, and I w- I wasn't really trying to. Like the room went somewhere everywhere, but I want my original thing was I wanted to start off. We're telling y'all, you know, you guys are really uh, hitting on some real good points in here. That's that's where I really wanted to start. And then um, I forgot the person name who was just talking about the um, basically saying when the uh, when when the uh, the concept of life started uh, or whatever. I'm a social worker for the NICU unit, um, and that's kind of what I wanted to tell her. And, you know, I'll just say to you guys, sometimes, you know, you can't address science biblically with unbelievers. You know what I'm saying? So no, sometimes yeah. you kind of have to address science with science. There's a thing called a teratoma, which is a certain tumor. One of my kids had this, a certain tumor. Um, the girl was pregnant and the fetus or the baby, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to talk fast was not getting the blood flow, a.k.a. the oxygen that she needed um, for the baby to survive in her uterus. So what the doctors did was it was a couple of months early. They operated on her, removed the tumor from her uterus, removed the baby. The baby came out alive, crying, this, this, that, and the third. Baby had to be put back. Long story short, you can Google this. It's called a, a, a teratoma, a, a sericargo ter- teratoma. You can Google it. It's a real thing. So the baby came out alive, crying, this, this, that. They put the baby back in. Uh, the newspaper, when the baby was born, well, was born for the final time, actually printed the article uh, saying that, you know, this baby was born twice for the second time. So I would say to the other young lady, there goes your scientific proof that the, uh, the, the, the baby is alive while it is in the, the womb. And the concept of life has started while it is in the womb. That's why the baby can kick. That's why the baby can eat. That's why the baby can turn. So to bring up what, uh, I forgot who she quoted, whatever uh, religion or or, or people she quoted, uh, saying that the concept of life starts, you know, when the baby takes his first breath. That's a little preposterous. Science can tell you that doesn't go that way without you even going to the bible if the but baby we, is oh no, that stuff ain't ain't true anyway because um you know if you kill a pregnant woman they don't charge you for one murder that's right they you charge right there. Two. but when you want to kill a baby so you can live your best life there and have a go. hot girl summer the rules there are changed you there you go now that's a mouthful right there that there you go the original thing I wanted to say, I'm going to talk fast. The original thing I wanted to say, you guys got into, it was, uh, I'm probably going to say your name wrong, but it was uh, Zebby, ZB was speaking. Yeah, Z, ZB Real. ZB, ZB Real, and I mean, he was coming through with it. You know what I mean? And uh, the facts are the facts. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we want to say we grown, we this, we that. You know, uh, I know a girl, and I'm related to her. She's my cousin, unfortunately, but she's my cousin. And this girl met a guy at the gas station, literally at the gas station in the hood. Uh, Dude had, I think at the time, six babies from five different women. She comes to me and she tells me, oh, I believe that God sent me to be more than his wife. My thought to her is, don't you think those other five women thought the same thing? Next thing you know. She lays down with the dude. She's pregnant. He didn't rape her. She's pregnant. She knew what she was getting into before. He wasn't working. You know, she knew all this. Now he's a deadbeat this. He's a deadbeat that. He's, you know, this, this, that. So at what point, you know, you you don't want a man to tell you what to do with your body, fine. But at what point do you become responsible for what you do with your own body? Um, Then the other lady, I think her name was, oh, forgot her name. 
her name was Christian. Uh, her name was Christian. Yeah, and yeah. She spoke yeah. on. Um, uh, she spoke on the the tempted tempted. You know, if you if you uh, tempted, temptation. Guess, yeah, yeah. If you the, trying to the abstain tempted. from sex. That's right. And uh, my mind went to you know we love the he'll never put more on me than I can bear. You know we love to sing these songs and you know have these cliche sayings. Uh, but then when it's time to live it, you know it's. Oh my God! And I'm not I'm not damning her or condemning her or nothing. But my mind went to when she asked that. My mind went to Matthew four, I think it is, where Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So if if Jesus was tempted, you know, uh, then you will be also. And the fasting, you went to that. The fasting, the fasting is a connection for to me. Now I can't do this one biblically. This is just how I see fasting. The fasting to me is a connection for you to see the power in you through God. If you can deny yourself substance, something that the body is needed, you're a spirit in the body. And if you can deny yourself substance, then there's no way you can't tell me you can't deny yourself marijuana, a drink, sex, this, this, that. So the fasting comes to strengthen you. I was more so taught that the fasting was a sacrifice to God, which it is a sacrifice, but I see the fasting more as a power to self, uh, to show your power that you are in control of this body, because then we didn't have to look at the other side. Let's say the, the, the child molester said, well, I had this feeling. I just had to go with it. I was tempted. You know, I didn't have no power. It's the same principle just in a different situation so you have the power you know you just can't act on this i know how culture goes i know how we're taught as 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 people of color uh you know but you have to make the conscious decision to break away another young lady came on and said you know she made the cognizant decision to not lay down with every tom dick and harry and 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 as as much as we may want to call it something else you know, it is a choice. You know, you meet these guys, uh, you know what these guys are about, and sometimes you don't. And the fact that you don't, that means that you shouldn't be engaging in something with this uh, man or this woman, it goes both ways, that's going to tie you or cause a soul connection forever. The fact that you don't know about this person, their morals, their values, how they grew up, that's your clue right there. Hey, let me zip it up. Let me wipe it up. You know, let me let me not even uh, uh, go there with this person um, uh, uh, in my book. That's how I see it. So when ZB was hitting on that earlier, I, I thought he was he was dead on the money. What happened to morals? What happened to values? Somebody else said earlier, you don't see men on here twerking and, you know, shaking their, 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 their private parts for this, for that. You know, we've made it a culture for our women to behave like this. And then. The women are now, the same grown women, you know, are now uh, uh, kind of looking for a scapegoat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you lay down and do, and I'm not shaming the women. I got a mama. I got, you know, I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is responsibility. If you lay down and you, do, if I go to the, to the bank and I rob the bank, I have to understand a part of me robbing that bank might mean I'm going to do 20 to life. So I'm going to yield my mic on that. Good points. Made some very, very good points right there. Um, yeah, guys, can yeah. I respond to Jay Roos since yeah. he mentioned my name and E's point as well? Because he was talking uh, about what I said. Yeah, hold on. Let's see. Uh, e, did you want to respond first or did you want to let Cole go? No, she can go ahead and explain Jeremiah 1 and 1 and 4 and uh, 5. Go ahead, Cole. Sure. Um, first... Um, I want to just point out, and again, in case you guys aren't considering, you don't have to be promiscuous or a, quote, whore in order to find yourself um, pregnant um, with an unplanned pregnancy. Um, also, married couples this seek abortions as well because we're living in this um, white capitalist society and Median rents are $2,000 a month and people can't afford it. They can't afford to take off work. Um, people seek out, they use that as an option for family planning for several reasons. It's not just people 
um, who are having a, a hot girl summer. But J. Ru, um, to your point um, regarding a baby's movement um, in the womb before birth, um, I just wanted to ask you if you were aware that after death, the body keeps moving as well um, for a significant amount of time. Like, uh, I think they said almost 12 months, the body still continues to move. Um, so well, well, just, well, 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 it's dead. It's dead. What the hell? <laughs> uh, because there's still electrical currents um emanating from so the, so the, the baby brain. Keeps the wound is electrical current that's electrical it, it's, current it's, when the it's, baby it's keeps not the it's not a conscious movement yes oh, so it's not so the baby so, not so, so um let, do you guys want to look it up real finish. quick you you guys can look it up real quick while i'm responding to to ease point no no and no we I, not, we not look, look it up go ahead sis go okay ahead. but but well it's true J. Ru, you say you work in neonatal care. You know that when um, preemies, like there is the concept of viability, when a, um, uh, um, a, a baby who has been born prematurely can survive outside of the mother's womb with the assistance of medical technology. That is a thing. But 100% actual facts, the body keeps moving after death. You guys need to know that um because again you're you're speaking to people on life. you're speaking to people on matters of life and death and i want you to be right and exact as you're giving people these oh, instructions okay. so all right e, now, now check e, it. if you don't want to have no kids if you don't want to have kids then don't have none but don't don't be uh put giving us some damn sci-fi twilight zone stuff this because is not this right. is we don't see dead we see no, 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 dead that's, in the streets and they I'm, not, I'm, not lying. I'm not lying to very you very incorrect three to five days after death the body starts to decompose you go through uh but there's still no it doesn't totally decompose on the first three days like the de have you ever heard of Rick de Morgan's? decomposition decomposition yeah that's movement of a dead body right it, uh, it no, doesn't stay laying flat. The stiffening of the body. The body is that's right. The it's stiffening. Really. That's right. That's absolutely can right. Hey, this, is what, this is what happens when you uh, trust uh, in white man's science. Can you please science. Cool. Can you, uh, no, call. Can you, you a physician? Call, 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 call. You a physician? No, call, I'm not. I, I, I just, Are you in the medical field? Just, are you, are you in the medical field? I just read. But to no, your no, point, Are you in the medical field? I'm I just No, I just read. I'm an engineer. And I understand this. I'm Jay Wu, you in the medical field? I am. The cycle of life, but Jay Wu's in the medical field. Okay, okay but he obviously that. is not aware of what happens to the body. Damn, after death. <laughs> she's, she's not aware. He, he works in the. He, you read a book. He, you read a book. He works with the living. You read a, you read a he, book. You read a book. He works, he works the in the living. field, but you know he more. Works, okay, I got he it. He works with the living. He doesn't work with the dead. So how would he know? So we should listen to uh, Jewish people about the conception of children, but we shouldn't listen to an actual person that's licensed in the medical field about his profession. <laughs> That I, don't makes know, sense. I don't know. I don't know. When people say <laughs> medical field, that what could be a, a CNA. That could be anything. I don't know what this man does for yeah, a living. And I'm not going to assume what he does for a living. Let's ask him. Let's ask him. Cole, 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 let's ask him. Let's ask him. I'm a licensed mortician and funeral director, so I also Damn. Do Damn. Death. That's not the medical <laughs> field. <laughs> you you got to be lying. That's not... <laughs> That's not a medical field. Hey, I'm and this sorry. Is why I, I drop told you guys, you field. can't Damn. argue scripture with somebody that's She's not wasting our time. Tool. I hit a drop. That's what. Me. That's what's happening. Your time is being wasted. You, you can't you get this right. person. It, 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 it definitely, I, I, I have. To, I have to agree. He's definitely right because that. I mean, once she once she said I read books and denounce a brother that's in the actual practice. Right. There's no arguing with that. That's and if she went anywhere she else right. talking about the body being alive eight to ten days, they probably commit her. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 12 months. Yeah, yeah. We got a pair of months. months. We got a pair I think somebody somebody, somebody else it's chimed in as well. Somebody else chimed in regarding the regarding Mortis. Who was that? Krista? That was you? No, that was me, Nikita. Um, but I'm not a medical expert, but clearly rigor mortis is when the body stiffens and then at some point it will soften back up again. I don't know the technical terms, but yeah. Jesus. You said it perfectly. It's it's the dying of the body. That's what it is. 
Hey, you can't, you can't. Right. Try so, to so, 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 let me, let me get this straight. So, there's no Michael Jackson thriller going on when, when the baby. <laughs> 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 but see, that's why, that's, that's why I signed this early and I told you guys, you can't argue spirits. There's sometimes you just got to know when to say when. You know what I'm saying? Now, I gave her a well, case. I gave her the uh, name of the disease that she could go look up. You know, and she came back with 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 zombie stories. We get. you're picking up. Diana, Diana, you're picking up. You're picking up. Come in and come back out. You're picking up. Can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? No, no not you, Dion. Dion, you got okay. come in and come Dion, back out. Dion. You can't hear what he's saying. He was trying to say something. Did y'all hear me now? There you go. Yeah. What are you saying? I, I was just saying that the, it's good for the crowd. It's good for people to listen. So. Our people can see the the error and what some things some people are saying. So that's why we dealt with it biblically because we got people that are listening in. Wow. wow. All right. Hey, let's uh, let's move on. Hey, to, hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. you know what's crazy, man? You know what's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be fast. You know what's crazy? All this semantical talk. But when you think about it, the whole I'm not sure if people are familiar with the whole this whole thing, this whole act of Roe versus Wade. Y'all do know Roe Ro versus Wade was, was a complete lie, right? The, the, the woman lied. Right. She's saying that she got gang raped, and because of her lie of gang rape, she they passed the law to, to allow you, y'all to kill you babies. You are absolutely right. That's and then she turned true. around turned around and confessed it. She never That's got raped. True. She never had an abortion. So the whole so the rights that you were given to murder children by the thousands was based on a freaking a lie. lie anyway. Go so if the, case, if, 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 the, the if the law, right? So if the law was based on a lie, then then the then the act itself is going to be what supported by what lies? It's the lies. It's what it is. That's why you're going to have all these excuses. Oh, well, the gestational period, and it's really an embryo. It's not a fetus. It's, it's all this semantical talk. But if if the, if this if this man just never passed that law to begin with, what excuse would you have at that point? What you gonna do? Get a wire hanger and rip it out yourself? Like, come on, man! It's, hey, man we're, only, we're, we're, we're only getting these arguments because the, the 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 privilege was given. It was given, and now it's taken away. And these women is losing their minds. And and you got women walking around, going to churches, um, protesting, "My body, my choice," and losing their minds. And you ain't got no men doing this. There's women doing this. These aren't married women. These aren't married women doing this for the most part. Most of these children that are aborted are not aborted by married couples. These are aborted by irresponsible sex. Irresponsible. That's where it's coming from. Yeah, my friend. Go ahead, Z. Hey, Amen. Yeah, when he say and when he says irresponsible, he means unmarried. He ain't talking about you putting on no damn condom, taking contraceptives. That's for all the wicked minds that be like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna make sure I wear a condom every time I have sex. He's talking about unmarried, immoral sex. Just so you know how mind is, e. you know we we wise to do evil. Yeah, I know. Right. black people. Yeah. <laughs> black people. All right, hey, uh, sister Monica, <laughs> <laughs> are you there with us, Monica Steven? Are you happy to be there, Monica Steven? Going once, going twice. All right, so we'll go to Krista. Krista been on here with us for a while. Welcome to the stage. Um, what's your thoughts on? Black lives don't matter until the black woman gets pregnant. What's your thoughts on that, Krista? Um, peace in the room. Um, I think that a lot of points have been raised um, from the speakers on the stage, the permanent ones. Um, one one thing that I want to say as far as people's perspective is that I think that because a lot of us been conditioned by falsehoods and alternative truths, that it's hard for us to accept the truth when it's plain and staring us in the face. For example, when that sister was on the stage and she was trying to dilute the point by saying that, well, who wrote the Bible and who is it speaking to? It clearly stated who was being spoken to, but we've been so conditioned to accept lies and like find alternate facts to support our stance that when something is plain and clear, 
that we can't digest it. So for me, that's worrisome. But I guess on a larger scale, it's um, I do find some hope when I do find listeners who are able to not even the cold, but just see facts for what they are. And I land with that. Hey, the pro- the the real re- the real problem is is that our people have an issue with the Bible, and we we don't take into consideration that many governments have been established based off the the laws in the Bible. Actually, America, the judicial system that comes from the first five books of Moses in many respects. So a lot of times when people have a problem with the Bible, it's because the Bible contains correction. It contains things that make you morally examine yourself so when people come with who wrote that and how do we know who the author is and all that stuff that's all semantical it's, it's all to, to steer you away from the fact that there's something in their life that they're doing that the bible condemns and instead of dealing with that facet of their life to improve themselves in the way of god they say well how do we even know that's god's word in the first place you understand that that's what the whole issue is is when they come up Amen. here with the whole semantics and stuff, it it, it, it it holds no weight. I want to read one scripture, Hebrews uh 4 verse 12. Matter of fact, just get second Timothy 3 and 16. The book of Second Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Go ahead. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So instead of accepting that God is trying to make the man or the woman of God perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, they try to find something wrong doctrinally, doctri- as far as doctrine is concerned, theology, whatever the case may be, eisegesis, exegesis, hermeneutics, all that stuff is just cold words for I want to sin. That's basically what it is. I want to sin. I want to remain in my sin. I don't want to change. I don't want to get right with God. So let me dilute the words by coming up with semantical reasons of why it's not true and why we should question. You ever notice what, what the sister was just saying was, well, you want to be careful about how you speak about life and death because you might want to you might want to make sure you walk walk uh, circumspect when it comes to that because air on the side of caution. Wrong. Right on the side of caution, because there's a possibility that you could be wrong. But what if we're not wrong? And what we are saying is biblical, obviously. And on the day of judgment, you got to stand before the Lord and he's going to ask you, why is it that you didn't apply this, this, this and that? And you could have easily made the kingdom of heaven. You understand? But you decided not to based off your your whole theology and want to hold on to your sin and all that BS. So it's all that's what it all has uh, boils down to. Amen. All right. Hey, uh, let's go to, I think, uh, Obina. Obina looks like he's next up in the queue. Are you there, Obina? Obina Osita. <laughs> Good morning. Can I be here? Yeah, we can hear you. What's your thoughts on the topic, man, about uh, basically about abortion here in the in the black collective? What's your thoughts? Okay. For me, um... And because a lot of things have been said about this, and um, I just felt, um, first of all, you um, the understanding because there's a difference between truths and facts. Facts can change at any time, but truth is always uh, truth is not relative. Truth is absolute, and when we come to understand that truth is absolute, we find that uh, it's help shapes you for who you are. So I can't just say, uh, um, like, the whole trans thing going on, uh, the whole edgy, uh, um, whatever, trans thing going on, and today I'm a man, tomorrow I'm a woman. In, it doesn't make much sense to me because it's not the truth. It's not the truth. There's no, so most of them say my truth, your truth. So in speaking to this abortion thing, um, I, for me, first of all, I um I'll commend the Supreme Court's judges for the decision, um because it was high time and it also breeded um irresponsibility. Uh, there's a love a level of irresponsibility. Uh, you know you're gonna have this 
So why don't you take responsibility and do the thing the proper way, in the way of marriage, get married, have kids? And so it will help because there are a lot of a lot of issues America is facing now is because um, the, the the family itself is being under attack, both spiritually and physically. It's being attacked, and so it's not like abortion is like. Uh, is it's a right, but it's not a right because uh, when we go back to Matthew, when the angel, uh, when Gabriel came to uh, Mary, he said, he told that you will have a child, and you conceive a child by the power of the Holy Ghost. The word I wanted to just bring out there is the word conceive. Merely that happens, that's a human being, and once that happens. The human being is growing inside of you. And so I don't like the idea or the the mannerism where you say, somebody else comes and say, and the, the truth also is that you, you you have to have facts that backs it up. You just, just come and read it up or you don't even understand the concept. You're not a professional in that field. And so and I really honestly, there are a lot of things a bit touched, but I just wanted to point out conception stats it starts just as you guys quoted uh, jeremiah 1 5 4 to 5 it starts god it starts from the conception life starts from conception so i don't really have much to say but really i want to commend you guys for your point go ahead with that with that you dr or the e okay no, sir, sir. Okay, yeah, you make some uh, good points, uh, Abina. I, I will say this to you. A lot of times what uh, a lot of people don't understand um, why a lot of things don't make sense is because you live in a place that is called, in the Bible, is called Babylon. A lot of times you've read the Bible and you've looked for the name America in the Bible, but that's not there. America... Um, well, the actual name comes from an Italian navigator named Amerigo Vespucci because Christopher Columbus never landed in North America. He only was in the islands, Hispaniola, those type of areas with the conquistadors. He never actually landed in North America. That's why it's named after an Italian navigator who actually did named Amerigo Vespucci. But God does not call it America. It's a relative new country, right, on the earth. Um, if you can, Ibuka, go to Revelation 17, and I want you to read verse 5. This is why the, a lot of things that a person with some sense tries to rationalize and you just can't is because of this right here. Revelation 17, verse 5. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's why you'll have a man that he's 35 years old. But you know what? I've always felt like a woman. <laughs> oh, a woman that she's 27 and she's had sex multiple times with a man. She said, you know what? I think I'm a they them now. What? How are you three people? Because we are in the place that is in the Bible, it's called Mystery Babylon the Great. If you know anything about Babel in the Old Testament, Genesis 10, that's where God confounded the languages. Babel means confusion. So Babylon is confusion. God says that this place is Babylon the Great, the land of great confusion. That's why you see the things that we have now. And this is what Babylon the Great does in this place where you can, where they're literally murdering babies. They're, they're killing babies, but they call it abortion. Look what God says that what would they would do. Nine, Psalms 94, and I want you to read verse 20. Book of Psalms, chapter 94, and verse 20. 
Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Now throne, now listen to this. A throne means that's where a, a king sits, someone that rules. Remember in Revelation it just said Babylon the Great. That means this is a great nation, the highest of all highs. It says shall the throne of sin have fellowship with you, God? Read. Which frameth mischief by a law. Instead of calling it murder, they say it's abortion. Instead of calling fornication, unmarried sex, sin, and immorality, they call it sexual liberation. Instead of saying um, um, God is the rule of all, they say my body, my choice. They frame sin by a law. They have framed murder by a law calling it women's reproductive rights, a.k.a. abortion. And in Babylon the Great, you will never get someone that follows after the great confusion to understand logically what God is saying. So those that have the spirit of God and you kind of understand like this don't make no damn sense. Well, then you shouldn't be following the ways of Babylon the Great in no way. You just can't ag not agree in one aspect, but then you celebrate Christmas. You don't agree with abortion, but you keep Thanksgiving. You know rabbits don't lay eggs, but you celebrate Easter. You got to totally disconnect from all of the ways of Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots and abortions abominations of the earth that's what god calls this place right here babylon the great for those that may not have known all right hey so let's move on to uh nikita nikita are you there hello um hey nikita so um, what's your thoughts on what we've been talking about so far anything you heard tonight yeah um this is a great room and i appreciate the space and i'm going to be honest here and not mince my words uh abortion is murder this is not anything else it is murder and when we try and change the terminology and call it you know termination ending a pregnancy no what you're doing is murder now should we condemn women no we shouldn't i think we need to have spaces available for women who are pregnant and um are in duress right we need to have um, these resources and tools available for them so that once the child is born they can um, look after that child but um, what kills me about this conversation is that you know we can argue all day about oh well when does consciousness begin and it you know our kids our children and grandchildren are one day going to be able to have technology advanced to the point where they can find this out and we will have committed the greatest of evils if we find out that this consciousness began in the womb and we killed over 60 million babies because of Roe v. Wade. And so I think that we have to um, come together as people who are faith believers or just people who do um, uh, agree with um, life beginning at conception to protect the rights of these children. And thank God that Roe v. Wade was um, <clears throat> excuse me, overturned. And I think at the end of the day, and this is something I mentioned um, in another room, is that Western women are so privileged to the point that they think killing their child is right. You know, you could go to Somalia or Saudi or any other, you know, country where we're called backwards or whatever, and you'll find that these people, these women are having children, they're having stable family structures, um, and their children are thriving. Why? Because there's they see value in life, you know. We want to see my body, my choice, and let me do what I want with my body. But it, number one, it's not your body anyway, right, because there's another body growing within you. Um, but these rights, that privileges... Um, that um, people in the West or women in the West have is really telling that we think that it's actually a right for us to kill our children. Um, but I want to say, you know, um, thank you for allowing me to speak and um, I appreciate this space. Good points. Good points. I just wanted to mention this too. And this is something for all of us to think about, uh, especially black women, because, you know, 20 million babies have come from just the black race and Hispanic races right behind that with probably 18 19 million um whenever you say my body my choice you're acknowledging that you have no god that's what you're putting out into the air you're saying i have no god he doesn't dictate 
what I do with my body, who I have sex with or who I want to murder. God has no control over my body. That's literally what you're saying when you say that. And here's the proof of it, of why I say those things. And now I'm going to back it up with a scripture because this is biblical smoke. We're here to give you um, answers, solutions, um, give you the word of God. So if you are in error with God, you can correct those things before the second coming of Christ. And if you pay attention to the news and the way that the things are in the world, you know that he is on his way. These are the signs of the times. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 real quick. And uh, Dion, if you wanted to, uh, you can jump in. I know he jump in. You can jump in whenever you want to, man. Just let me know. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I want to read, I think it's the last two verses in that chapter. Yep, 19 and 20. Check this out. Remember what I said. I said that whenever you say, as a black woman, Hispanic woman, Native Indian, those are the, the races that make up the 12 tribes of Israel, wherever you fall up under black, wherever you fall up under Hispanic, and wherever you fall up under Native Indian. Those people make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, but when you say my body, my choice, you are saying I have no God. I do what I want to. I'm my own God. Here's the proof of it. Read that for me. First Corinthians chapter 6. And verse 19, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You see the scripture? God says ye are not your own. The spirit of God is supposed to be dwelling in you. And you know the thing? You can do it. look up the research because we've had um, in our organization, one of our uh, deacons did a class and he he did the um, the. Uh, research the most murders that they call abortions are committed by Christians these are those that say that God is their God and Jesus is their Lord and Savior they have committed the most murders Christians now read verse 20 verse 20 for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Hold on, your body belongs to who? Read that part again. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. If you ever utter the word saying, my body, my choice, you are saying, I am my own God. God is not my God. Then guess what? guess what law you violate? What's the first law that God told us not to violate? Give them Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20. And uh, read verse 1 and 2 real quick. Just know that. And just think about this. I want you black women to think about this too. You didn't come up with that slogan, my body, my choice. That is a white woman's slogan for their movement and their push to kill babies that they didn't want. Read that for them. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He's speaking to the children of Israel. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Boom. So if you say that it's my body, my choice, I kill, I murder whoever I want to, you have now broken the first commandment and you have made yourself God above God. When he said, thou shalt have no what? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So in order not to put yourself in that situation of where I've had unmarried, immoral sex with a nigga in, from the club, or I knew I met him on Tinder, I met him on... Uh, what the hell was he's a Facebook chat? He was in my DMs on Instagram. I gave him my Snapchat. I met him in the gym. In order not to put yourself in that situation where you make yourself God above God and anger him, well, then the scripture says that let every woman have her own husband and every man have his own wife. Those are the solutions of how you don't you don't put yourself above God and you glorify him in your body.
All right, just wanted to put that out there. So uh, let's go to the brother Justice that is on the stage. And that's E or Dion, you wanted to bring out anything with that? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Justice, you up, man? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, honestly, as I was listening, you know, because I just came and I, I looked at the, you know, the topic, the headline, and I was like, this seems like an interesting topic. So I popped in and, you know, I was, I, I when, when was this? This was when President, uh, when President Trump had first ran and I was literally like, um, I remember writing stuff about, you know, and unfortunately, um, in the black community, lots of things as far as the political stratosphere and our understanding of politics, which in here I can see that people understand um, different dynamics of society in general. Um, and then, of course, because we're believers, because we, we love Jesus, we, we come from a biblical standpoint with all things. And so, um, but I remember, you know, at that time getting a lot of flack because I said I voted for, uh, you know, President Trump. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I explained why. But no, no black person could tell me why they were voting Democrat. And I would always, I would always say, I'd say, so why are you guys voting Democrat? And they wouldn't give me why. They would just say, we're not voting for Trump. It's funny now that those, those are the same people who are now on the opposite end of, 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 of the, of the term buckle. Let me say it like that. And, uh, here's why I even bring that up. It's because, you know, um, the Supreme Court justices that were instituted and put in, um, at the time Trump was president, you know, that was a whole another headline and turmoil and people were just angry because they knew at some point this thing was going to be overturned. I mean, um, it, it was pretty much put out there that at some point this was going to be overturned and they were working um, in that function. So whether or not we had Joe Biden in presidency and Kamala Harris, who was saying she was black at before she got in presidency and uh before she got in as vice president excuse me and then uh you know kind of said no this like i'm really kind of indian and this and this so it's it's just interesting but um i say all that to say um the lord was reminded me of uh, uh, uh of the scripture um where the canaanite woman comes unto jesus and she has a her daughter's demon possessed and she comes up to Jesus and Jesus uh, says to her, he says, well, you know, the bread is for the house of Israel first. He says, but even the dog, but she says something like even the dogs eat the crumbs. And you probably think, why is he bringing this, this scripture up? Um, the problem is it's a, it's, it's a demonic agenda. Um, and it's it's apparent. It's clear. Um there are there are spirits behind people. That's how Paul says it. Paul says, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities uh, and, and wickedness in, 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 in high places. And so our, our, our fight is not really human beings. Our fight is the spirit behind people um, and, and, and what they're operating in. And, you know, the, the word of God says in the last days, people will say good is evil and evil is good. And so. Um, that's what we're fighting against. Uh, but I also brought up the whole political realm and that stratosphere and that, and that understanding of things, because I was telling those same folks, I said, do you understand that you're saying black lives matter, but yet the woman who made Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, her intent was to eliminate the black population by way of abortion. And Planned Parenthood is one of the largest organizations and they're the ones that are funding and supporting this abortion stuff. And so when, when I said that to them, they, they, they just were like, but you know, it's my body, my choice. So what I found is that lots of, lots of black women, unfortunately, and it's not everyone, but unfortunately a lot. Um, I just thought of the verse, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so we got so many perishing because we're ignorant because we, uh, because we have no knowledge. And the Bible says, seek, seek to get wisdom, seek to get understanding. Um, and in all, and, and, and in all your uh, seeking, 
I think it says, in, seek, seek wisdom, seek to get wisdom, seek, seek understanding, and then all you're seeking, I, I, I would have to go back to the scripture, I can't remember it offhand right now, but it, it's, it's, it's powerful, because I, I just was thinking about, uh, you know, all of these things, and just the scope of where we are at, um, as a society, and as a people group, even, um, and how dangerous it is, and how the devil has come in, uh, like a, like the same serpent in the garden, um, and tricked us and fooled us into into, into hey, believing lies. Justice, let me ask you a question. Yes, you sir. brought up this, you brought up the skip description in Ephesians chapter six verse twelve, where it says spiritual wickedness in high places. Can, can we read that real quick? I want to read it. And I want to ask you a question about it. Yes. Read that for me. Let's read that. Ephesians six twelve. Yeah, we, I'm gonna have you book. I'll read it. Read it. Okay. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that um, spiritual wickedness in high places and principalities, what does that translate into? What word? What do you, what do you mean? What is, oh. The, the, the enemy, the devil. Mm, not necessarily, well, yeah, but I mean, this is talking about something actually physical as well. So what is what would that translate to? What, what would we call a high place? Well, in the heavens. No, on earth. Let's just use America. Oh, what we call a high place on earth? Government. Government. Yes, 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 yes. That's yes. the spirit. When the Bible says spiritual wickedness in high places, remember, Paul was talking about Rome. When he said when he said spiritual wickedness in high places, he was talking about the spirit that was behind Rome. Because Rome was the ruling power at that time. Well, America is an extension of Rome. That's why America has one president. Um, it has a Senate house. All that comes from ancient Rome. You, you understand that, right? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm listening. So, so, so when the Lord talks about spiritual wickedness in high places, he goes into form of government. This is the problem. Uh, I heard you mention voting. And this is the reason that we on this platform, we, we, we are against it. We don't, we don't, we don't vote um, because we understand that the Bible tells us that there's going to be spiritual wickedness in these high places. It doesn't matter who's in office. That spirit has to go forth into the earth. The things, the agendas of Satan have to be put forth in the earth to usher in the second coming of Christ. So um, when we, when I went, for me bringing that up, spiritual wickedness in high places, now we have to deal with something because that spirit now dwells in men, right? That spirit of Satan, it dwells in men. You would agree with that, right? Yeah, the spirit of Satan could dwell in women and men alike. Right, right. But in this context, it's talking about spiritual wickedness in high places, so the, the 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 high places we just we just established that that was government. It was Rome then, and today it's America and its government. Who runs that government? Vatican. Okay, the Vatican. All right. Who do you say, Justice? Well, right now, I mean, if but if you were to just look on a practical standpoint, you would say the president. You would say the the the, the if you're talking about legislation here now in america we would, we would say them what um, race what race um white people right 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 who ruled who were the romans what what race were they weren't the romans uh white as well yeah they were caucasian they were edomites according to the bible the children of esau so it's the same spirit that's in the american government today now watch this one more go to luke chapter four Christ is going to reveal something to us. Luke chapter 4, verse 5. The book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Uh -huh. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, 
Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So what did you notice that Christ did? Did he accept it or did he reject it? He rejected it. Right, so Christ rejected that power. He said, now nah, I'm a worship God. Him only shall I serve. Notice the devil said, to whomsoever I will, I give it, if thou wilt therefore worship me. So the power that we see, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The powers that we see in high places today, what is the Bible giving you a clear understanding on who they worship? The devil. Okay. What is the so-called religion that America's founded on? It's supposed to be Christianity. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be Christianity. That's why all of your presidents meet with the with the, the Pope. Um, actually, Joe Biden is a devout Catholic. He met with the Pope, I think, three times thus far in his presidency. Yep. So, so the Bible is telling you that the ruling powers that rule today will come up under the guise of a religion, and that religion would give off the perception that it's the following Christ, but in actuality, it's following the devil. False religion. Mr. Right. Well, Babylon the Great. There you go. There you go. So, the reason I bring that up, that's the reason abortions are being passed. That's the reason black people are being killed. Legislation is being passed to stop men from going out and teaching the Bible. All these things that you see, homosexuality is now a law. That's why you see that the country that you live in and that you grew up in, and that I live in, and that I grew up in, is actually following the devil. So now we should be ridding ourselves of any type of voting, um, any type of following of their Christian doctrine. All of these things. We should follow what the scriptures actually say and follow the commandments of God instead of worshiping and following these idols. Like Christmas, for instance. That's an idol. Easter. That's an idol. That's Ishtar. Astarte. Ashtaroth. That's what that name comes from. So now I'm, I'm bringing this all up and bringing it to a head. So I appreciate everything that you were saying. But I want you to look at it from the perspective of what the Bible is actually saying. Precept upon precept as far as those spiritual wickedness being in high places. That's going into the white man in this government. And I'll take it a step further and say even into religion. Absolutely. Religion. Definitely. And, and, and just, to, just, to add, just, just to add on to it, uh, that statement, my, my body, my choice, um, was coined by a man named Bernard Nathanson. He's the one that, that pretty much um, catapulted the whole sexual liberation movement and he also um, lied about the numbers of um, women in terms of um, accident, um, births, dying from births, things of that nature. He furthered the um, movement of um, pretty much of abortions. His name is Bernard Nathan. Bernard Nathanson is the man that from the term my body, my choice comes from. So whenever you hear women say my body, my choice, they're quoting the words from a European man. Named Bernard Nathanson. You can look him up. He's the one that he's. They call him. They call him. He's known as the abortion king. He's responsible for seventy-five thousand babies, um, baby deaths. Okay, so just so want you understand. A lot of people who are not in this Bible understand your mind is not your own. Your 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 body isn't your own, and your mind isn't your own. Your mind is television. That your mind is politics. You don't have a mind your own. You 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 think you do, but you you really don't. You you just you just pretty much that's what it, that's what these elites refer to the um refer to people as goyim or cattle, you know, because they they, they just do as they're told subliminally, unconsciously, and consciously they just they follow orders. So Bernard Nathanson is the man who coined the term "my body, my choice." So that's not your that's not your so your body, your choice is not pretty much a decision that you made. It's someone that it's a decision that was made for you. Hey, Justice, you got any um any rebuttal to what he said or what we brought out in um the true understanding of Ephesians six? Um, so you know, I know I I just actually went back myself to 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 Ephesians six, and uh, actually I'm I'm big on 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 what he talked about and what Dion talked about, like context, context of scriptures. Um, is why actually you know and this is all. This would be a whole nother topic, but you know, there's so many topics that have been debated about in the church, uh, in the body of Christ in general. You know, one topic even being women preaching, but that's a whole nother topic. So we don't even need to go there. But I'm saying that just to say, 
I'm a big person about context and about why, why was this stated? You know, why was Paul even saying what he was saying to Timothy at the time when he was talking about women need to sit in submission? Or, or why was Paul, in, even in Ephesians 6, talking about what he was talking about? Well, now, right the verse before Ephesians 6, 12, Paul is, Paul is instructing um, the church at Ephesus, and he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I got it. I'll read it. He's going to read it for you. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What you got? Yeah. So, so what I was, what I was saying was the reason why I said, you know, in, 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 in that, in terms of spiritual wickedness in high places, if you, if you actually, <clears throat> Paul was, Paul was speaking to the church of Ephesus, which was mixing a lot of, a lot of different practices, Jesus practice with, uh, worshiping, like you talked about other gods. Um, they specifically, the women in Ephesus were worshiping, what is the name of the God? I'm trying to remember the God. Diana, Diana of the Ephesians. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Um, and so, you know, there was a lot of mixture. And, and, and so the women, even in that day, were trying to mix Diana worship, you know, hoping we can keep my baby in pregnancy with Jesus worship and then trying to go and preach. Paul's like, nah, that, that ain't happening. Like, and that's why Paul later on, uh, you know, states that in, in the book of Timothy. So now even here, Paul is instructing the church of Ephesus, knowing that they're mixing up, they're mixing up all of these practices, all of these worships, all really creating a false religion and a false doctrine. And Paul even says in the book of Galatians, he says, who, who, who bewitched you people? So Paul is constantly instructing the churches that he's fathering over um, and warning them about a demonic agenda. Hey, demonic hey, just agenda. Yes. Just, I, want, I want to help you out. You, you, you say some of the things you're saying are correct. Let me help, let me help you out. Let me help you out because you, you're all over the place. I'm gonna pull it all together for you. Satan dwells in your flesh. That's why Paul wrote in Second Timothy. I mean, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter two that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan's devices are how um, we use our flesh for sin. Right? When you read Galatians chapter five, Paul goes into the various things that equal the flesh. He goes into idolatry, fornication, lasciviousness, adultery, hatred, malice, so on and so forth. The things that you won't be able to enter the kingdom of God if you're doing. So this is what Paul is saying in Ephesians chapter 6. He's saying, like, listen, there's spiritual wickedness in high places, right? And that spiritual wickedness in high places is going to enable the things that you already battle with in your flesh, which is sin. It's the same way today. That's why right now you can grab your cell phone and you can watch any type of pornography you want. You can cut on the television and see homosexuality. You can see people uh, rolling up marijuana and it's actually legal in, in most of, basically all of the states. You can go to a dispensary and buy weed now, right? You can go to Vegas and whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So the same thing that was going on then, spiritual wickedness in high places, like I told you, means government, Satan ruled government. Paul is saying, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil mean his tricks. But we're not ignorant of his devices because he comes through the flesh, which is sin. So that's why Paul's instructing the various different churches on what they should be looking out for so that they can combat it with the spirit. That's why he said the spirit lusted against the flesh. Could you read that real quick? Ephesians 5, 7, I mean, Galatians 5, 17. Yes, sir. Regardless, it comes back to sin, Brother Justice, and sin is the transgression of God's laws. In the Christian church, they say we're not under the law, we're under grace. We are under grace, and we're not, we are not under the law of animal sacrifice, but we have to keep God's commandments. Without keeping God's commandments, you won't even know the spiritual battle that you're in. You'll think you're literally uh, <laughs> battling against some spiritual force out there when it's actually you yourself. You're dealing with your sin. That's your battle. It's going to say that right here. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, 
so that you cannot do the things that you would. So the spirit against the flesh and the flesh is against the spirit. What, what would be the spirit, Brother Justice? What, what do you think the spirit is? The spirit, well, the human spirit uh, becomes one spirit with Christ's spirit. That's what the word of God talks about. So the spirit oh, oh, will lust against the flesh. The human spirit wants the Lord. Let me help you out. Go to Romans seven fourteen. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For ye know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So the law is spiritual. The spirit is going into God's commandments, the word of God, and his laws. Those laws is what may helps you walk in the spirit. It makes you spiritual. Right? So his spirit is lusting against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these are contrary one to the other. Now go back to Galatians 5 real quick. I want you to read 19 down. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it on because I know we got other people on stage. But I want to deal with you. I want to deal on this because what I what I find is that my brothers and sisters in the Christian church, you don't even know your fight that you're in. You, you, you're in the Christian church and you're doing things that are contrary to God's word. And you don't realize that you're doing it because you haven't been taught correctly of what battle you're in. You don't know what the spirit is. And you don't know what the flesh is. So you're walking blindly and you're actually setting yourself up for damnation. Right. By not understanding these things. Read that for me. Galatians chapter five, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before as I have, told, have, I, as I have also told you in time past. That day which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So all those things we just read, that, that if you do those things, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. Just give me one word of what those things are. Sin. Right. Absolutely. It's sin. So what is he telling you that's going to keep you out of the kingdom? Sin. The sin are found and contained in the law. When you read the law, it tells you what you should and should not do. That's why Paul said, I had not known sin. So when you're in the church, but you're, you're celebrating Resurrection Sunday, which is basically Easter or Christmas, things of that nature, when that goes to I that's they got you, brother, to lead you into the same thing that Paul told the 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 brothers and sisters, the brother relation which of the so put on this whole Bible, learn it, learn what it really means, learn to understand it. All right, I'm your mom. All right, good points. All right. Um, once again, you can email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. We'll send you the um, booklet we got, the website you can learn from, or other topics that we might not be going over tonight, but you can learn from that at your own leisure at your home. That's biblicalsmoke at gmail.com for the beginner's booklet and uh, the website things and other videos. All right. Okay. So let's move on to, uh, looks like we got Ren here on stage. Ren, are you there? Hello. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Wonderful. Um, if I do end up in the matrix, please let me know. Um, so I was in, I, I was invited up. I wasn't exactly sure what people were talking about. Uh, when you all started, um, can I get a slight reset? Because I just saw the notification and figured I'd grant the request. Right. So what we're going over here is how uh, the title says that black lives don't matter until black women get pregnant. We've been going over a list of host of things tonight. Um, some people pro pro choice. Some people blame the man for the women getting pregnant, having abortions. Uh, we went over um, unmarried sex. Um, we've been on a few different things tonight. But what's your thoughts on basically the whole Roy, Roe v. Wade thing and black women being involved in it in the first place? We 
We can't hear you, Ren, if you're there. Can't hear you. Might have to go out and come back in, Ren, and then we can get you. All right. Okay. Uh, Don, you there? Don Christian, brother Don Christian. Yeah, I'm. I'm here, but I. I'm just listening right now. Before I speak, I like to get listen to the information, then I will come back. All right. Okay, better chime in. We winding down here now too. All right, Eagle, Sister Eagle. Hello, thank you for that. Hey, hey Eagle, what's your um, thoughts on this whole Roy, Roy V. Wade? And well, I think um, first, I'm not for abortion. I think a lot of the problems stems from you know the dynamic of the family. Like we've gotten so far away from the family. And when once they took prayer out of schools and things like that, I just think we went downhill from there. You know, that's my opinion. Um, when you look at a family that has the father and the mother in the house versus a single parent home, it's just a big difference as far as how children are raised. You know, it's, it's a, you have that structure from the father in. A lot of people may think that you know, like when I was coming up, my father was re really strict. He was very strict. But when I became an adult, I appreciated it. I didn't like it when I was going through it. I hated it because it, I felt. Can you hear? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I felt like I couldn't do anything, but I appreciate it now, you know, and um, I just believe that a lot of this problem stem from taking God out of the classroom, taking God out of the family, and not following the laws of God, period. That's what I believe. Good point. Good point. Now, I would say this in rebuttal to that, that um, um, it ain't them teacher's job to teach your kids about God. That stuff is supposed to start at home. Um, and we read that early. Let's read that one more time for the sister Eagle Eye so she didn't know. Um, let's get that in Deuteronomy chapter six, I believe it is. Let's see what God say on that. Hey, hey ZB, and even when we were praying in school, I remember uh, brothers praying in school at the at the uh, what they call it, the announcements in the morning, and going to the bleachers and having sex. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we, we up under the bleachers. We was praying. We was praying in school and still being evil. So it's not that they took prayer out of school. It's just the wickedness of sin. Yeah. Let's read that for him when God says where that's supposed to be taking place at. Deuteronomy 6, read verse 1, and then we'll jump to the main verse in that chapter. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Now let's jump to the main verse of when these commandments are supposed to be done and done talk because it said teach let's jump up to that verse 7 and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up so you see what God said he you supposed to be teaching your kids the commandments in your house when you're out with your kids when they're laying down in the bed, you're supposed to be teaching your kids the commandments. It's not the responsibility of the schools because kids ain't going to learn um, righteousness from their teacher. Their, teacher is, their teacher's teaching them math, science, white man history, how to be a better uh, servant to society. It's your job to instill God in them in your house and and you've made a good point that we have gotten away from that as a nation. And you see what happens when we detach from God and do our own thing. We go down instead of go up. But all other nations, they ain't thinking about God and they have went up in society. What's that letting you know? Let me, let me show you this real quick because a lot of people don't believe this, but... If you look out into society and see the things, the way we are as a nation, not individually, but as a nation as a whole, you can see that we are not on top. 
here's the reason why. Give me that Amos chapter 3, and I want you to read verse 1. Look what happens when we go away from God, we go down. The other nations don't give a damn about God, and they keep going up. Why is that when it comes to us? Read that Amos 3. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel. Now, this is one thing that black folks, you Hispanics, um, and Native Americans, you've got to come to this understanding and accept it. You are the children of Israel. Nowhere in the Bible can you find African American, Haitian, Jamaicans, Puerto Rican, Mexicans, El Salvadorians. You can't find no mix with 5% Irish. You can't find none of that stuff when it comes to you. You can find the name children of Israel and some curses and blessings that fit right along with your history as a nation of people. So God said, I spoke against you, children of Israel. Read on. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Say, now check this out. Hold on. Check this out. He said, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. I know one thing, because this is me myself. I know black people know more about Egyptian history than damn real Egyptians. And you ain't never seen no white people on no hieroglyphs in Egypt serving slavery. Because the Egyptians wrote the stuff out on the stone walls. And they've got one people that are in the fields. They're pushing cattle. They're making plays they're getting beat down by the egyptians who's those black people on the wall in in uh egypt that are in servitude that's you ain't no white people on them walls that lets you know the people that are in israel right now are not the real jews he didn't bring them out of egypt he brought a black race out of egypt that's you so he said i brought you out of egypt keep reading you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So out of all the people on the earth, God says, I only know you. Keep reading. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. There you go. God said, I only deal with you, black folk, Hispanics, Native Americans, because you're the children of Israel. I only deal with you. So I'm going to punish you when you go away from me. I'm going to punish you so you go down to the ground. And the mother nations that do evil that I don't, I don't give a damn about, God don't care about them, they're going to pass abortion. They're going to pass same-sex marriage. They're going to pass, they're going to put, put, uh, bring drugs into the country. Um, they're going to say a man can be a woman if he feels like it. They're going to say a woman can be a man. They're going to say a woman can wear pants. They can say, they're going to say you can eat whatever you want to in God's name as long as you pray over it. And they are going to prosper in doing it because God does not give a damn about them. But if you do those things, it's going back to what you was talking about, Eagle Eyes, where they took God out of the, the uh, schools. But well, we said God got taken out of the house. Because we started following after the ways of the people that God don't give a damn about. We went down, meaning God's punishing us for our sins and going away from him while they're prospering in their evil. Because we are the children of Israel. And that's that's a truth of the Bible that we got to come to. And you're not going to learn it in Christianity because the white man set up Christianity and churches in your hood to keep you separated from God, to keep you on the bottom like we are now as a people. That's why how we got all these churches in the hood and don't nobody know about God. That's because they're not set up to teach you about God. They're set up to keep you on the bottom away from God. We got to realize that as a people. All right, let's move on to uh, Ren. Ren's back on stage. Ren, what's your thoughts? Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine now. Okay. Well, if I cut out again, let me know. Um, so I think I have a little bit better of a grasp, question mark, of what's going on here. Um, so you're saying that, is this a critique on BLM or is this a critique on 
because I'm I'm hearing Bible verses, but I don't know. Okay, the, well, I mean, it's, the room is biblical smoke, so right. What, what we're talking about is how um, you know nobody cares about black life until mm-hmm. until they end uh, a woman's womb. Meaning what? That you know you can kill all day. Black people can kill black people all day. Black. Lives matter don't show up on that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So the point of departure is you wish that, and this may not be like a an aspiration room. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you are your point of departure. You're annoyed that BLM is less concerned with sanctity of life question mark and more concerned. Less, with murder. Black Lives Matter is less concerned with abortions, but they're more concerned about white cops <laughs> killing black people, which happens once every two, three, five, six months. Jeez. But we got twenty million. Anyway. Twenty million okay. black babies have been aborted. Why? So got it. So I guess I'm just going to start off. I I grew up in the church, um, but a lot of the stuff that I do now is pre-biblical. My spiritual system is pre-biblical. You know, a lot of the a lot of the things that I do are written about in the Bible. But one thing that I do remember from church, um, of my many years of Bible study, um, of my parents being preachers. Um, of being chosen to speak on the word by my male uh, spiritual leaders. Um, It's pretty clear that judgment is a sin and is hellish. And so I just wonder, I just hope that we're careful in this room that we don't turn to pedantry and pedestry because it's not clear from the audience. Um, And even though I'm on stage, I consider myself part of the audience because I've been listening um, I, I feel like the judgment on other people and other people's lives could set us up, up set us up, um, for what they talked about in Acts and Corinthians and Hebrews, you know, just, just, I know that it feels good to be very theatrical about the Bible, but the more you judge, the more you bring hell on yourself. Um, because... The way that I learned it, I was very clear that the Bible was given to my parents, right? You know, they're from Haiti. They were given, and they and they adhered it well, you know? They, they, they bought their house regardless of how much they gave for tithe. You know, it doesn't matter that Black American churches over the last 10 years have accrued over $800 billion, and Black people as a community are still awful, um, and we don't have infrastructure. And we don't have, you know, community built support like the Jewish folks um, and folks who practice Islam. We're the only Abrahamic. And, and, and then to understand that we racially black Christians or, or African Christians, which even that I wish that other guy was still here because I, I would like to pick his brain on why when a cosmology is available to him in Africa, that he would choose this faith if he's not Coptic. But, you know, I just want us to be careful because what I don't want to happen is for us to sound bitter and confused and for that to be the distortion. Because I was never taught that black people were the chosen people. Like, it, it never says that Israel and Africa or are any or the diasporic understanding is, is at any point anything other than metaphorical because it's a type of liberation theology. So what I studied at Georgetown partially, um, was liberation theology. Um, and also realizing that there are so many theologies that it it is itself a distortion, right? Well, let's check this out. We call, I know what, uh, I went to college myself too, and I know, I know what white man college will teach you, how they teach you how to think that um, everything's abstract and it's open for interpretation and it's well, only to metaphor as well. critical thinking and prove your interpretation that you right. have. That, that's BS, okay? Um, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that we are not to prove? I no, have to know that. No, check okay. that. And the Bible is liberation um, 
but it's only liberation for one people because... And you think those people... people, You said that both black and Latina folks... Those Hispanics, all of that fits those people that need to be uh, liberated. I'm going to show you this. Because we are those people that fit those things that God said would happen. Now, we could do a right. process of liberation. Now, check this out. Watch it. And I, and I where is like, that written? Yeah, it's in Deuteronomy. Z. Z. Oh, who's that? What's A-1? going on, Z? Hey, what's it's going on, A-1? A-1? It's all good. It's all good. I just want, I just before you go into your brilliant uh, knowledge, the sister's asking, where is it written? Before we answer, before we answer her, tell us where it's written that the Europeans today are the Jews of the Bible, the people of God. Where is it written in the Bible that the people today who are calling themselves God's people, the Jews, where is it written that these Caucasians are the Jews of the Bible? Also, you have to be aware that Caucasian is for the Caucasus Mountains, and that would be like Turkish people and not Jewish. Like, the, the, white, the white state. people today, the white people today who are professing themselves to be yeah, Jews. You can't the definition over time. That's, I'm that's, why, that's why I'm up here. The world knows that the people now in Israel, they declare them to be the Jews. Where is that written in the Bible? I also would like to know that, but that wasn't my point of that wasn't my point of departure. So I'm I'm going to continue. You're, you're Z questioning you're, you're questioning Z as to where is it written that the blacks are the Jews. So Correct. the the people who said to us that they are the Jews because mm-hmm. this knowledge has just been made manifest now through us. The world is not saying blacks are who the Jews. Who is us? You know, who, who us is? Negroes. The Negroes of, of, of slavery, okay. of the transatlantic slave trade and the sub saharan okay. slave trade, they are the people that fit in prophecy who the Jews are. That's where we come but, to the but, deduction of who the, the Jews are. But the Jews already exist. Like, they consider us goyim. I understand that, but you just question where Z said that we are. So I'm asking you: Do you agree that the people in Israel now are the Jews? Uh, I believe that many people are culturally Jewish. So I you don't believe that, that the, those people are? I the believe Jews. those who sit in occupied Palestine are white, like European. Do you believe think, that those people, the world, profess them to be the Jews? Do you believe it? Yes or no? Well, they they profess themselves. Do you believe it? Yes or no? I, my opinion on that is immaterial, but my question hasn't been answered, so I'm not sure I, I, what the you, Z, Z is going to answer is you. Z is going to answer you, but we need to him to do that then, because the you, you did is, cut us yeah, off. And, if you're and saying that, it's not us. Disrupt and sabotage the flow of the conversation. I'll let Z so continue. I'll let Z, 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 you pick up with the line of questioning, Z. What you say? I'm Hello? saying that A.O. is a grand, he's grandfathered in member of the of the biblical smoke. He's one but of the Z, of Z, 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 you continue with the line of questioning. Go ahead. Since she are, said are that you, I sabotage are you. you. Saying, are you saying, are you saying that, hey, so is this like a club club? Like, are y'all, like, is this a, is this pedastric? He, he that, explained that's it. He explained it. It's a biblical base. Well, you group. explained it. <laughs> he explained it. But I haven't heard from Z in a minute. So. Z, Z, you can take the floor. Go ahead. Um. All right. Um. So okay. So can we answer the? Can we get back on task here? Yeah. So your question is how how do we know that uh, black black people- the African people, African diasporic people who have a cosmology that is older than Christianity, right? Much older. 20,000 painstaking years of observation at least. Mm -hmm. Like, why we're even doing this? (laughs) Okay, so... Because, because, you know, for me, especially because now you get caught up, right? And and I know this because I've seen it happen to my parents. You you live a life where your, your spiritual system makes sense. A white person comes in, gives you a book, doesn't really teach you everything in the book, expects you to go to a place where people are already indoctrinated you shame to to funnel your money out of your pocket turn you into a death cult 
and I and I I'm glad and and I will you know I, I my mother would have raised a better son I will say I'm a very you know but but to be fair to give people who were enslaved a bible and tell them that they are chosen to me is terrorism okay like, now check just, this out I'm the Palestinian gonna, I'm gonna people who who okay. who birthed Christ let are looking at the question. rest of y'all like you're insane. Well, actually, if you talk to Arab people, they actually know who black people are in America. Oh, they they, they are in solidarity with black people, but they but no, they no, understand no, that no. black Christianity. No, and no, this is no. as someone who does work. Man, I am an organizer. Rain, you got to listen. Don't be. One I am of, listening, but I don't, don't like one of these black women that cannot hold your tongue. I'm not a black woman. And and I'm not gonna allow my uterus to 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 oh, to shit. talk about this conversation, yeah, right? There you go. You don't have to mention the gender if it's gonna be difficult for you. Just yeah. just thought, just act like I'm. I'm asking for the question. You can't talk about the Bible unless you mention gender because God created male and female. You damn! I tell you, you 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 damn people that believe in these Babylonian ways. Y'all are something else. Well, for those other people that may not understand, I'll just do it real quick. Um, Isaiah 34, read verse 16, 17, because it is a common thought that a lot of people have. White people gave enslaved people the Bible. One thing I, I will say to y'all, y'all give the white man too much power. Y'all li- y'all really think he's God. and that And that's why you follow his ways more than you follow God. Because you see him as your God. And when you go to sleep, you think, that's my God. And I will do what he tells me to do. I will follow all his ways. I will dress how he tells me to dress. I will eat what he tells me to eat. And I'll put a black twist on it because I'll put some style on it. But you're still following the white man's ways at the end of the day. Isaiah 34, I want you to read verse 16. And then we're going to read verse 17, which is the main point of why we are reading the Bible as quote unquote black people which we say are the Israelites, the Jews of the Bible. Why are we reading it here in America after we've been here for 400 years in slavery? Read that. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. So God is seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. There's no nothing in this Bible will fail. It means the prophecies. Whatever God has spoken, it shall come to pass. Keep reading. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. God said, My mouth has put this book together, and God is not a man that he should lie. So the words that we read are true. Read on. And he have cast the lot for them, and his and his hand have divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Now this is talking about the book of the Lord. God said that they shall possess it from generation to generation. What does that mean? No matter where we go on earth, God said that his word would follow us. The book that he gave us when we was in our own land, the Isaiahs, the Jeremiahs, the Ezekiels, the Gospels, the letters of Paul. God said, no matter where we go on his earth, that his words would follow us from generation to generation. So we would always have a path or a solution to our problems to return back home to him. So why are we reading the Bible here? Because God put it in the white man's hands who would rule the entire earth to hold it and preserve it until God said, it's time for y'all to come back home. And that's exactly what's happening. Because we don't, if you've been paying attention, we're not teaching Christianity in here. We don't believe in no white God, like Sizzler say, no white Jesus. God is black. Jesus is black. The angels are black. God's people are black. They also Hispanic. They also Native American. For those that get technical, because they brown too. But God put it in His hands to preserve it for us. So when it's time for Him to start bringing this man's kingdom down, He will start raising us up in His face. Here's the proof of it. Give me that in Psalms 55. Psalms 55, verse 
believe that song is 55. And, and uh, is AO still on the screen? AO, man, if you wanted to jump in at any moment, let me know. Just let us know. Uh, Psalms uh, 55, I believe it is. Is that what I want? Psalm 51, I think. Yeah, Psalms chapter uh, 50, 50 and uh, verse 20 and 21. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, and verse 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy old mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I give silence. Who has thou slandered the black... Hold on. Who slandered the black man and Hispanic man, Native Indian man, who are the Israelites? Name. It's that white man that you look to, that you love, that you call God. He has slandered our name. He's told you that we are nothing but niggas. We are Gentiles. We are not the people of God. He has slandered our name. Read on. Thou thought is that I was altogether such as one as thyself. They thought God was so much on their side that they made him look like them. They painted pictures that God is white, Jesus is white, the angels is white, his people are white. They thought, because he didn't do anything because of our sin, he said, God must be white like us. Make a picture of him. Keep reading. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thy eyes. That's why the Bible was left in the white man's hands. So that when God got ready to set us in order, we would have ultimate access to the book that was set the nation of Israel back in order. And we would stand up on our feet as the sons of God. And we would tell the black woman, you can't get no abortions. That's murder. Uh, Ayo, did you want to um, chime in? Yeah. There? Well, I just wanted her to answer the question because you notice every time a black person comes in the room and says that uh, they disagree with us being the people of God, of the book. And then you put them on the spot because they never, they would never go into a room with Orthodox Jews and question their validity or their uh, claim to be in the people of the book. But this is just to show you how much black people hate their own kind that they look at you like you're crazy for claiming to be the chosen people of God. Now, the irony of this was so crazy is the people who stole the identity of God's chosen people, they rule the world with that claim. And our own people who are the true Jews of the Bible, they will fight to defend the thieves who stole the book from us and uh, twisted everything upside down. Now, for those of you who are online, if you ever get met with uh, a person like the woman who just came in the room questioning us saying that we the Jews, this is your answer. This is how they were successful. This is how they destroyed us with the book. If I have power to enslave a group of people for hundreds of years and then stop them from reading and writing. Kill them if I catch them reading and writing. And I let that happen for hundreds of years. And then I teach them how to read and write. I teach them a new language. I strip them of their own language, teach them another language, make them illiterate and teach them what I want to teach them. That's how they were successful. So the minute someone says, she said we was crazy, I forgot her words that she used for uh, the claim for saying that we're the Jews. Uh, it's just her ignorance of God and the Bible. And she's bringing up her parents. Her parents was a product of exactly what I said. We are a generation of people who were illiterate. Uh, we They wouldn't even let us vote. They made voting difficult for us when we went to go and cast a ballot. They, they, they had a literary, literary seat test for us before we could go and vote because they knew that when they took, when they enslaved us, they used the power of our literacy to uh, take control of us. So it's not only with the Bible. They did it with the school system. They did it with college. They did it with everything. That's why there's certain colleges we can go into, certain elite clubs we can get into. 
uh, certain terminologies we're not familiar with. It's not because we're stupid and we're illiterate. It's because the people who have power over us are evil, demonic, wicked people ruling with the power of Satan. Okay, so I was one of those fools that uh, whenever it came to uh, expound upon where we are academically or our scholarship, I would give more credit to the white man than to us as a people. But once you realize biblical history and uh, historically what America did, no, they don't get no credit. They don't get no credit for nothing. They don't get credit for being rich. They don't get credit for being smart. They don't get credit for being powerful. The only reason why they're in the position they are is because of the evil that they've done to us. Okay? And the Bible documents the evil that they've done to us that put them in a position of power or put them on an advanced level to us. But here's, here's the, the trick bag that God got them in. All that stuff that you ignorant black people glorify of them and you're so, you can't wrap your mind around you being the greatest people on the earth. When they fall, you fall. That's the irony. When they lose, because the Bible has it documented that they're going to fall, they're going to have a horrible fall, they will never rise up again. When they go down, you go down for your stupidity and your evil. I mute my mic. Well said. Well said. Take heed to the warnings. All right. Uh, look like we got one person on stage here. Uh, Kushano. Kushuno. Are you there? Yeah, how you doing? Hey, we doing all right. What's your thoughts on the topic here that black lives don't matter until black lives matter until the woman gets pregnant? I don't have any thoughts on it at the moment, but what I do know is the Black Lives Matter movement was funded by someone that I'm not really too keen on. Do you know what I'm saying? George Soros was his name. There you go. Yeah, I'm not too keen on all of that, do you know what I'm saying? But um, it's definitely interesting. Um, so, okay, so here's a mm. question there for you. Uh, uh, are, you are you for life or are you against life? You think a woman should have the right to uh, murder or abort the baby? Or should she keep it? What's your thoughts on that? I'm not one to take... A, uh, what I think is, if a woman wants to abort the baby, she should allow the man to do it, or she should do it herself. And then maybe she should eat the baby if she's one that eats animals. Um, and I do believe that there's some women that make me feel they should keep the baby. And then there's some women that make me feel they should go ahead and do whatever they feel, you know? So really I'm 50, 50. Like it's, I, I'm not going to speak on one's rights. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely not that guy. So you, so you side with, with, so it sounds like to me, Kashana, it sounds like you side with, man instead of God because you know God says thou should not kill but you saying it should be a woman's choice you sound like you're pro-choice that they it should be up to them we'll get no what no what I'm saying is no no um look let me say what I just said that's 20 percent 20 percent of me obviously I've got children 80 uh percent -huh. of me is with keeping a child i'm just saying some of these women i do f I, I felt they should go ahead and you know get rid of the baby why is that why why do, why should they the 20 percent? no in a selfish sense in a selfish sense but um you see when you're saying the word god i do believe it's a germanic deity so I, I, but I do get what you mean. Well, well, now, now with this, because we're not going to play, uh, we won't play semantics. We'll use right, which is why I said I, I do know what you mean. But right. you know, but you could say semantics. Not, no, 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 one, one sexy. You could say semantics. I'm just, um, I'm one to educate people and or to make one 
know that I'm educated in a sense. So I'm letting you know that the word God is a Germanic deity. Well, hey, every word... So I, you, I don't know how you're asking me the question. I don't know if it's speak, tricky. Listen to this. I don't know. Yeah. Every word you speak in English is not yours. So you can't just pick out the word God. Every single word you speak in English is not your native tongue. You can't Good get caught. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Z. You know Good how morning, the English guys. language works, how the dictionary works. It's got a Good bunch morning. of... Grand, good, good day, good day. Go ahead, because people it's, talking. It's, Go got ahead. A, it's got a bunch of different um, languages all in all in one. Right. Right. So, so um, I'm one saying one. the... Huh? Sorry, Z. It's a, so we can't get caught up on one word. Every word we speak... No, 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 no. I know, but that particular word, which people use as very important, is a Germanic deity. Hey, okay. so, so hold on. Do you believe in God, Kashano? I'm not a believer. I'm 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 more of a knower. I like to do research or I kind of stay clear of it. So you don't so do you believe in the Bible? As I said, I'm more of a knower. I'm do you know really about what's going on in the Bible? Do you know what's going on in the Bible? I don't believe I do. You said you're a knower. So I'm assuming, yeah, but I'm the, assuming the, that a knower knows what's going on. <laughs> but he was right. clear about what and, he did know. And then, and then what I said he was, if I don't, and then what I said is, if I don't know it, I kind of tend to stay clear of it until I do. Right. So, do you know about the God in the Bible? I know of the word God being a Germanic deity. I didn't say the word, the God of the Bible. Let's say, let's go what you're saying is Germanic, yes. Do you know about the Germanic word God in the Bible? Do you know about it? Yes. Okay, what do you know about him? The one that's written of in the Holy Bible. I know that people refer to the word as him. So you don't believe that there's a him God with a Germanic name? You don't believe that? I'm not a believer, sir. Oh, okay. I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. Yeah, you could you could go back, Z. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, uh, Ao, uh, we brought Ren back up on the stage here for you. Uh, Ren, you there? Mm -hmm. Ao wants to still ask you that question. My question is the same. So, so I'm we, not. I'm we, not. Red, I'm not red, going red, to. Red, it, there's it, very red. emotional moderating happening. Like, I'm not sure why. What, I where's the emotion? A simple question was proposed to you. So, but no no one answered my question. Which is what? Clarify, which is, what? Which is, which is what? like, why, if you are not... Honestly, now this produces a different question. Why, if you are not Christian, and the Bible the Bible that you have is, is English, and of many versions, are we even having this conversation when the title is talking about BLM and pro-choice? Like, I... When I came up here, I asked, what kind of room is this? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll ask you now, Red. Smoke. Uh, Red, and, I'll and answer all your questions now. I'll answer so all your questions. asking a lot of questions with a lot of questions. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your questions so you, okay, we can have the clarity. The, the, first of all, we don't believe in Christianity. We believe that Christianity was made up by white people. Okay? And so was God. No, God was not made up by white people. Yes, he was. The God that you the God that you've been talking about, who you've been able to translate from Hebrew that's, to English. That's right? not true because it white is a people, tiny, it is a very white, young cosmology. It's like white people did not and, and I hope I don't get moved back to the okay. audience. Rand, you gotta we're, listen. We're gonna move you back. Listen. We will, you you ask a question and we're answering you. Okay. okay? Don't white, move white people did not create Hebrew. And the old testament was written in Hebrew. But like the English the translation is off. You need that intervention, sir. Let me finish. Like all of the translations are going to be off because there are words in Hebrew that don't exist in English. We borrow too much. What do you read? Really as, as, as I said to you before, as I said to you before, <laughs> and I will agree with you that uh, the ancient Hebrew, no one knows it today, but the Bible is written in Hebrew. Including the Jews. I, I, let me finish. Because you, you're saying that there's a lot of, uh, there's not clarity here. 
And when we try to give you the clarity, you take us someplace and you interrupt. No, it's still distorted. That's the problem. Okay, you're distorting it. We're trying to answer in your Well, you're using the logical fallacy. It's not no you. You're using the distortion. Now no, you know, but you're doing the middle school thing of no you. Brand, brand, come on, brand, brand, come on, dude, come, come, so, come on. So the audience, Let so the audience the decorum needs, about what you're saying to me. The audience needs to see the type of spirit that's on her. Now. The Bible it's not a spirit. spirit. That's the problem. It is a spirit. It is a spirit. You're fighting. You're being strong and wrong. That's the I'm spirit. I'm being that's wrong, wrong, but I'm not being wrong. You're, you're the strong one who and wrong. Said that the Bible know, was the can Bible. The Old Testament. Can you read ancient Hebrew, sir? The Old Testament was translated Mr. out of the Hebrew. A can you read it? No, I cannot. Okay, if you. Can I can't. I can't read. Why Hebrew. am I? Muted. I'm asking a question. Uh, nobody's muted. Don't you. shut the hell I, I, up. Let him I, answer I, the I, question. God damn. V, she's got to. She'll be quiet on her own watch. I will. I will screenshot. The Bible translated. The Bible was translated out of Hebrew, Hebrew the Old Testament, yes. and the New Testament was written in Greek. Okay, we have the translators that translated the book. Uh, King James authorized the translation. Can you King James authorized the translation, and when the Europeans got their hands on it, when the Europeans got their hands on the book and figured out what it was saying, they enslaved You already black. said you don't trust Europeans. Say that again? You already said you don't trust the white people. We don't, we don't trust them. We're not, we're not going by the translation. We're not going by their Christian beliefs or their religious denominations. We're but telling them to read the Bible on our own, and we see that they're liars, so we're not... Our audience, the truth concerning the Bible. Listen, I, it does. It shouldn't be a battle of mics. Like, just, just relax your tone and just really shut think up, the then, dude. What, what the fuck? What are you talking emotional. about? Be you're the one. You're, you're the one. You move around. people. You mute people. Like, we're what's not, going on? We're not muted. You're the one that's interrupting. I got temporarily you, muted. I saw you, that you came in here. To expound upon your beliefs. I came in here to, to mention the pedastry and the pedantry. You, That's can't, what even I finish, you can't even get a sentence out. No doubt you're a woman. Your ass well, can't shut up. You're a woman. No doubt about it. Uh, and, and you're an emotional man with low testosterone. No, no doubt about it. Now that we have the insults out of the way. Now that we have the insults out of the way. Now that we have the insults out of the way and people are going to stop being hey, emotional. Nah, you, you, know, might, say, you might call yourself a man or whatever the hell, but you and, got them you know, uh, you know estrogen you like exist. a woman. You I tell you exist. that. You won't shut up. You wouldn't exist without a woman. So have some respect. Oh, God. She act, you act like you wouldn't shut out your daddy's balls. Stop it. <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't. And I wasn't. Because I'm stop aware it. that without my mother, and I'm aware without my mother in the 10 months oh, that she spent with me. She's an apple tree, y'all. God. <laughs> And here I am being muted again by a moderator. A moderator has to emotional, emotional. Red, well, you got met. Well, with we'll, we'll wait till you finish speaking. You make your statement, and then we'll speak. Since you say we're deleting you. I said you muted me, and that's clear in the screenshot. Like you can't, you can't. You can't you can't espouse a type of smoke, and then when it comes, you get mad. I was yelled at on the stage by a grown man. I thought, if I'm a woman, where where is the decorum in that? You keep interrupting, and you don't make no sense. A A O, you A O, you literally came in here while I was talking to Z, asking him a question floor, to jump and in and because y'all don't have backbones, and I didn't ask you anything. You've had the floor. Your voice. Nobody knows. Nobody Lower your knows. voice. This nobody is not a battle knows. of mics. Have We've some decorum. And Have nobody some knows where you stand. Nobody knows where you stand. You just been Here running. Here I am getting muted again control. because you have no self control. Even when I give you the floor, you do the Here same I'm thing. Here I am getting muted again. I Are can hear you. So I don't know why you're saying. Conversation. I don't know why you're saying you're getting muted. I can hear you. I don't you. think you know what you're doing at all. I think you just want to interrupt me. Ooh. I'm gonna give you the floor. Back to Z. <laughs> hey yo, can we drop a Yeah, please. We can do this till eight o'clock in the morning. I don't care. Can we drop this hey, woman in I the just box wanted, that won't shut up. Can you, can you realize that your mother should have? Actually, I won't even blame your mother for not swallowing you. 
Drop it. Specifically because she didn't know that you'd be a disappointment. Drop it. I mean. Thank I, you. I had the person Some, come Sometimes you got some <laughs> It is moving mad. Z, Z, yeah, now, you, now, you could, now you could put her back in the audience. Sometimes you just got to let these people speak. So because they, they show to, themselves. To pitch, right. They, we got to let the people see how ignorant they are and what we're up against. Okay, these people come on here like they know something and they know nothing. Okay, the white man is not all great and powerful, but he does have enough sense to know that he can be in a position of power if he manipulates that book that you people disregard. So to hell with you who don't believe in the Bible. Die with them when they go down. Okay, you're going you're gonna to face the same. Go to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. You're two thirds that God has no use for. You're a waste of life. Hey, before you read that, Cole, we're not letting you up here if you in cahoots with Ren Ten Ten. We're not letting you up here. Y'all see, I see y'all damn, uh, uh, whatever you want to call that. Your little screenshots of your, your, your images. If you in cahoots with Ren Ten Ten, we're not letting you <laughs> up here, Cole. Hey, that's the dog, right? Ren Ten Ten. <laughs> Go ahead, Ibuka. Zechariah, chapter 13, and verse 8. And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Read on. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined. Because in case you people don't know it, fire is coming to the United States of America. When you read the book of Revelation, the last book, it speaks about a lake of fire coming. And it's going to come from the hands of man. And God has it prepared for people just like Ren. Ignorant, dumb people that just run their mouth and they don't understand what's going on. You're going to die a fiery death. But the people who believe in God, you'll be pulled through the fire. Read on. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined. And I will Because when you find silver in its purest form, it has impurities in it. So God is going to take, take us through a refining process. That's what we're doing now with this Bible. Read on. Yo, mute. Did we lose them? Yes, sir, I'm back. And the boat. Hey, and hey, she keeps saying we muted her. Our own reader has a problem with the audio. So nobody don't listen that we, we don't have to mute stupidity. I love to let stupidity speak. Okay, I get a kick out of letting you say your stupidity and then ripping you apart. We don't have to mute nobody. But go ahead, Z, I'm sorry. Uh, Ibuka, I'm sorry. And we'll try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. And that's what we're going through right now. We're going through a refining process. And God put the spirit on men to break down this Bible the right way. We don't subscribe to no religion that was taught to us in slavery. Okay? They beat the Bible into us. That's why the South is called the Bible Belt. And we don't believe nothing that they taught about the Bible. We're going through the Bible and we're showing you the right things concerning God because the white man has lied to us, firstly by setting up a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes and calling himself Jesus Christ. We don't Sorry. believe in that. Sorry. So you're saying you don't believe the Bible? We don't believe the ver we don't believe the teachings of the white man concerning the Bible. The Bible does not describe Christ as a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. It said that he was a man with skin so dark it looked like he was burning a furnace with hair of wool. And that's not what they teach you in the church. They teach you about a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes you cannot find in the Bible. What are we confused about? What was that? I'm just wondering what he's confused about. Like, how right. are you saying that no, we don't he, he, subscribe? He said he, like, he okay, said he let me let you know what I'm confused about. Because all you got to do is ask the question. The you don't have to keep talking. Do you understand? Just ask the question. And I'll tell you what I'm confused about. What yeah, I was tell confused us. about, Krista, yeah, is what the biblical smoke is all about. 
because he seems like he's back in the Bible. So now he's Listen, explained to me that he doesn't believe where the white people's coming from in the Bible, but not, but that he's more so pushing the black side of the Bible. So now I get his point, Krista. Good, good. So just so you know, white people have taught us lies. And when did they teach us lies? It's historic. When they enslaved us as a people, they stopped us from reading and writing for hundreds of years. They set up Sunday school and they taught us the Bible the way they wanted. And that's why many black people now are either indoctrinated by the Bible or they hate the Bible because they don't understand what's going on. We know what's going on. And the biggest fear of the white man now in white supremacy in power is for black people to rise up and figure out what's going on in the Bible. Because Christ said, give me John chapter 8 verse 32. John chapter 8 and verse 32 And ye shall know the truth And the truth shall make you free And that's what we're doing We're freeing our people with the proper knowledge of God Because we've been taught lies And I can prove historically When the lies were taught When we were enslaved that was the primary thing they did. They kept black people illiterate. And they told us, I just showed two things that they did that no one can deny. And then they created a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes under the Catholic Church. A man named Cesar Borger proposed for the image and it was handed to black people. So before anybody critiques or dismisses the Bible, they need to know some historical accounts that took place that Christ warned us about. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Christ warned us that this would happen to us. Matthew 24 and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Because Christ always warned the men that the world was not going to stay the way it was. It was going to come to an end. And these are the things he said to watch for. Read on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So he said, men were going to try and trick us. How? Read on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That didn't happen when he walked the earth. They screamed out, crucify him, and they killed him. But years later, they revived his name under Christianity, and they started a doctrine that uh, Christians were white with blonde hair and blue eyes, and God was a white man sitting in the clouds, naked with angels, baby. And you can't find that in the Bible. That's bullshit. That's a lie. That's not biblical. That's bullshit that has been read to black people, and you, some of you dismiss it, and some of you eat it up, and that's why you're in the Christian church. We're coming from a totally different perspective. Everything that has been taught to black people concerning the Bible has been a lie, and we can prove it. Okay, so Christ warned that after he died, people will come in his name telling lies. And we can pinpoint that in history when the lies started. Okay, and it started after we were taken as slaves. And black people picked up, and then they created Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, Protestant, Lutheran. None of that stuff is in the Bible. But people go to church every Sunday and eat it up with a spoon. We denounce it as bullshit. All religion is bullshit. We deal with the history and the prophecy that's in the Bible. And the Bible says that a certain group of people will be taken as slaves, and they will lose their land, their heritage, and their culture. That's documented in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Get that real quick, please. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we listen to his instruction that he gave us through the prophets, read on. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. We were supposed to be ruling the planet Earth, not the white man. The white man took the planet Earth by bloodshed, violence, rape, robbery, and force. Okay, as the Bible said that he would. The Bible documents who he is, 
And he did exactly what the Bible said he was going to do. And we fell as a result of our disobedience to God. We'll go to verse uh, 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said that we will be a cursed people for not listening to the Bible. Drop to verse 30. Let's go into the curses. Let's see if this fit white people and if there's any scholars online that could prove, prove it. Verse, verse 30. 30. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. In slavery, they will rape our wives, our mothers, our daughters in front of our face. Okay, we had no power. You watch the movie, uh... Uh, the butler with Forrest Whitaker, it opens with a scene of the sl white slave master raping Mariah Carey, and the husband couldn't do nothing. He tried to rise up, and they shot him in his head. Wait, 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 okay. wait, 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 You're going to use a movie. I'm giving you an analogy. It was, a, it, was a, it was a man's history. It was something that he witnessed in his life, and they took his biography, and they told it, and it did happen in slavery. Do you deny that the white slave masters was raping our mothers, our sisters, and our daughters? Yes or no? You know I can't answer that. I'm more of a okay, no. Okay, so you can't answer. Wait, 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 wait. I, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. If you can't answer. Read hey, on with the question. Hey, 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 hold, hold Deuteronomy on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30. <laughs> Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. That happened to us as a nation. We had no power over our women. The whole world, we was put on slave ships and scattered to all four corners of the earth, and they did did whatever they wanted with us. Even to this day, there's certain Arab countries where there's still black people being enslaved, and there's still black women being raped. Read on. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. They use us for slave labor to build up houses, to build up their roads, their 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 uh, trains. Uh, Train tracks, the railroads, they used us for that. Free labor. Read on. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, then shalt not gather the grapes thereof. They used us for their agriculture. They had us picking cotton. They had us uh, doing in the sugar canes. They had us in tobacco. Read on. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. They took all our livestock, the choice meat. Okay, and gave us unclean foods to eat. Read on. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face and shall not be restored to thee. That's why in reparations we always say, where's our 40 acres and our ass or our mule? Read on. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies and, shall, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Nobody came and said when they were robbing us of our land, our heritage, and our culture, this is wrong. It went on for hundreds of years. There's no other race of people that fit what's taking place here. Read on. Read the next part. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Now, they don't read that in church. They don't never ever say that. And that didn't happen to no white Jewish people that are claiming to be the people of God. These prophecies are specific. Okay? And we are just the only reason why I gave you the analogy of the movie because they do make slave movies that bring that stuff to life because a lot of you people have never seen it and you've never experienced it, so you don't believe it happened. But historians... Uh, movie directors and people who have documented history have done movies repeating everything that happened here, and they never did one with no Jewish people, no Chinese people, no Japanese people. It all fits the black people, the curses that God said would happen to us for disobeying him. So that's why I asked the brother, do you know what's going on in the Bible? Okay, because he don't know nothing. That's why he's denouncing it. Just like, just like the bro, black bro, woman that calm came out. Calm down. You don't know anything. You don't know the dictionary. You, you just know, admitted that you own to, life. Bro, you, you just used the movie. Why you used the movie? Why That's why based on, on real life. Why would you use the movie? Based on real life. Based on real life. What you real life? Show me the evidence. Are you dumb? Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. 
What's a no? I ask you, do you believe? No, I don't believe. I know. Do you know anything in the Bible? No, I don't know. You don't know nothing. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know anything in the Bible. You don't know anything. You just use the movie. Delete this fool. Delete this fool. I just told him that the movie was a biography of a man's life that experienced slavery, and they took that scene and they put it there from his uh, his account. Okay? Can I go now? Who's this? Is this Ren? It's Cole. Cole. Go ahead, Cole. Yeah, so I just wanted, you know, I've been in here for hours cooking with you guys. I didn't want to leave because, again, I'm so disturbed by the message of sacrificing yourself uh, if you're pregnant and you find that you can't carry a, a birth to term or pregnancy to term because you've had an eptopic pregnancy or they have discovered something late in the pregnancy and you have a choice to make. And Jay Rue, who is... Uh, according to him, a mortician, a uh, social worker, and he has some other things listed in his profile mentioned, uh, fetal movement in utero. And so I also mentioned that there were recent studies, recent findings that the human, that a corpse, that the body still moves after death. So I found the source. It's that it's published in several journals um, and documented. These studies were done within the context of forensic science, um, and these studies were done over months. They say the body moves up to 17 months after the time of death. Uh, the purpose of the study was to better train forensic scientists to figure out the, the time of death. So, you know, when you find people that are like in the woods, for instance, scientists has to figure out how did it get here? Why is it in this position? You know, blah, 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 blah. So in any case, um, as I said, um, it, there's no consensus between Abrahamic religions. They're all related that uh, conception, that life begins at conception. Um, Islam has its own prescriptions for when viability occurs. They allow for abortions. Orthodox Jews, who include um, African Ethiopian people and other African people, also allow for abortion. Um, uh, the saying is, uh, uh, death happens when you take your last breath. Life happens when you take your first breath. And Sister. no one has to feel compelled Sister. to commit suicide if they have an eptopic pregnancy. And let the me ask you a question. Has to be. Um, uh, 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 let me ask you a question. Turn. Let me ask you a question. Sure. You being a woman, you being a woman, you get your menstrual cycle, right? Uh, sure. Okay, and you get a menstrual cycle once every month. What happens at the uh, uh, once you once that egg comes and it's not fertilized? What happens to that egg? It passes. And you push it out by blood comes, it passes, it goes. That's by, that's how God designed your body. Right. But but if, there's if, a process. Let me finish, I want to simplify it because nobody's gonna look up what you said. But 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 I'm they gonna, should. Everybody well, should be I'm educated on the gestational you're process. To a black audience, and they're not gonna the look it up. The gestational process is nine months. There's a lot that can happen What's between this? What's conception this? What's this? and birth, including Spontaneous abortion, which is a miscarriage, eptopic pregnancies, which are which can't go on because it will kill the the, the person giving carrying the the fetus. Um, all sorts of things, still births occur. Like all sorts of things can happen between conception and birth, and that's why a lot of couples don't even announce that they're pregnant until at least the the begin after the first trimester because the, it, it, anything can happen at this point so i I'm agree saying that I so agree so i i feel like it should be emphasized that a woman should not feel compelled to sacrifice herself because she feels like terminating a pregnancy particularly if her life is uh found to be in danger or that the pregnancy cannot continue to carry because the egg has implanted in a fallopian tube that um, it's, you know, like I wouldn't put that type of burden on any woman. Um, you make your own choice, but 
This is not a consensus. This is not a consensus. To a moving corpse is crazy. This it, 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 it's documented sis. and it's been sis. studied by. You experts. believe in the Bible? Areas, you believe in the Bible? Sis? Areas of expertise is uh, dead dealing with dead bodies and identifying when sis, when a person actually died. <laughs> So there, these studies have occurred. It's like not magic. Sure. It's just sure. observation. Equating a fetus to a moving corpse is crazy. <laughs> well, no. J. Ru, uh <laughs> mentioned that he didn't understand the phenomenon behind a fetus moving. And we all have know, nerve never said signals never said flowing that. from our you brain. You equated it to that. Crazy. You crazy. You didn't period. say that. You never said that if, 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 if. if a baby, if a baby in utero is not alive, why do they move and kick? And I'm explaining that the nerves send signals throughout. Drop this sister on the box for me, please. It's an electrical current. Thank you. Hey, as I said, I'm going to simplify this. Go to First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. First Timothy, chapter 6, and verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed unto, committed to thy trust. What was committed to his trust? The words of God. Read on. Avoid and profane and vain babbling. And that's what we heard. We heard a lot of babbling come on here. Read on. And oppositions of science. And if the science, if, if the science is in opposition to the word of God, God says to avoid it. Okay, because you'll have another scientist come up and flip everything that was said upside down. So that's why this is written. Avoid babbling and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Okay, because even the science of the white man, they were able to advance to certain levels because of their experiments on black slaves. Painkillers. They learned that with black live subjects. Abortion, they learned that with black live subjects. The study of the brain, they learned that with black live subjects. So they're beasts, they're animals, they're monsters. So as I was saying before, a woman, if the sperm from the man, which is alive, when it leaves his testicles, it's alive and it's swimming. And it goes to meet that egg. If that sperm don't meet that egg, it dies. If that egg don't get fertilized, it dies. So according to God, it's alive once that sperm touched that egg. So to hell with science, to hell with everything else. If you Once that sperm has fertilized that egg, in the eyes of God, it's alive. So I don't need no science book or no science terminology to tell me nothing. That's why I keep asking the people that come in here, do they believe what God says? Because God is the one that defined our bodies to, sh to, uh, to show the point of conception where it's, a, ch where it's a, a, a living soul. And the living soul is when that sperm leaves that man's testicles and fertilizes that egg. It's alive and nobody should touch it. So I agree with the sister that came on. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't understand a dead fetus, uh, a corpse. I don't understand that what she was saying. If, if, if I may have came in late because I was driving, I couldn't come. But I'm not even going to go into that. I'm just saying for the people here who want this simplified, because the scriptures tell you, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. And that's what we've been hearing here. Confusion. You got people who don't know shit about the Bible running their mouth. And they don't know nothing. The man I ask him, do you believe in the Bible? I'm not a believer. I'm a knower. Do you know about the Bible? No, I don't know. That when I tell you you don't know nothing, he's running his mouth. Okay, God is not the author of confusion. A lot of y'all that came up here, y'all coming with massive confusion. Okay, and as we said, this is a biblical-based room, and we're going to tell the people who believe in God why this is wrong. The rest of you who don't believe in the Bible, to hell with you. You're going to die. You're a waste of life. You're going to burn by fire, as the Bible says. Okay? So we don't care if, if y'all listen or you don't listen. That's why I said let the other idiot woman ramble. This is for the people who believe in God, 
that we want to show them the ignorance of our people and at the same time save the one third that God has slated to be delivered according to the word of God. And as I said before, you black people who don't believe in the Bible, you don't matter. The white people in power took the Bible to put themselves in power because they know the power of the book. Okay? The black people that are fighting are the stupid black people that they created to go against the book. You don't have nothing else to replace it with. So your life does not matter. Even though black people, black lives is telling you your life matter, in God's eyes, your life don't matter because you don't know nothing. Give me a... Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. Through the lust of their you people are living now. You'll be, I'm sorry, go to 22. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You people are fools. You come in here with stuff and you're not, you're not making no sense. You're fools. I never heard that. I don't believe, but I know. Do you know this? No, I don't know. That when I tell you you don't know, you mad at me. You're a fool. Read on. And changing the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. That's how these people are speaking. You're corrupt. Man is corrupt. You don't know nothing. All you know is what the white man in TV told you and history told you. We denounce the history of the white man. We denounce his teaching of the Bible. Read on. And like the birds and forfeited beasts and creeping things. And you replace God with images. Read on. With, with idols. You replace God with idols. Read on. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Because when it says God gave you up, what it's saying is God don't care about you. You're irrelevant in his eyes. He don't care about your life. You don't matter. That's what it means when it said God gave them up. Read on. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You dishonor your body by life coming into your womb and you just want to kill it. You're a disgrace. You don't deserve life your own self. Read on. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The white man and you stupid niggas that listen to him. That's who changed the truth of God into a lie. Okay, he's asking a question. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The white man first and you stupid niggas that listen to him. Read on. And worshiped and, and, worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. The creature is you. God is our creator. And you're saying things to serve the creature, man, over the creator, God. Read on. Who is blessed forever, amen. Because God is blessed forever. You niggas are not. Especially you dumb ones. Read on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. So that's why the woman is, you see woman saying, it's my body, it's my choice. Her vile affection for herself a disgust that she has for the life growing inside of her. God don't want nothing to do with you. You're a waste. You're a waste. Your judgment is going to come. That's why the Bible speaks of judgment day. Okay, I'm showing you in the Bible that Jesus don't love all the little children. And God don't love everybody. I'm giving you specific scriptures that say some of you God has given up on you. You're worthless. Read it again. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. That's why they have no problem taking an unborn child's life. You don't care. It don't matter to you. Because God, you don't matter in God's eyes. Read on. For even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So now that you don't appreciate life and you don't appreciate God, you got women using their bodies into things that are against nature. Read on. And likewise, also the men, leaving the, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one to so another. So the, the women have fallen so low, and the men now are uh, having same sex with each other. This is, this is what makes the Bible true. This is what makes the Bible true. The woman don't know the natural use of her body. 
or of another woman, and the man is confused about how a man is supposed to be with a woman, and now they're with each other. And this world pushes that. The same people who took the Bible and distorted it, they passed laws for that behavior to exist. Read on. Man with men work in that which is unseemly. So with them pushing homosexuality, you don't see why the woman would fight to kill an a, 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 a unborn child, a child that's in her womb, that's alive in her womb, that has not come out. Because men have been corrupted. Men are lost. Men are confused. Men are stupid. Men have no connection to God. So a lot of times when you call these people to the stage, the first thing I ask is, where is their belief system? What do they believe in? And just as we heard tonight, you're going to hear idiots come up here, denounce the Bible and denounce God. And when you ask them where they stand, they don't know shit. Read on. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Meaning God is going to get you. He's going to recompense you in your error, which is meat. Read on. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Because I'm trying to put God, I'm trying to give them a knowledge of God and they don't want to retain it. Read on. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You get idiots. I'm not saying it to be rude. I'm saying it because it's true. Your mind is reprobate. You know nothing. That big mouth woman that was out here, she don't know nothing. Thinking because she uses big words that we're going we're, we're gonna to give her the floor. I gave you the floor to show the people how stupid you are. Read on. And how worthless your life is. You're worthless with no, without the knowledge of God. Read on. To do those things which are not convenient. Which is not convenient to kill a life growing in your belly. Read on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. And yo, you, you spoke all that came out your mouth was unrighteousness. Read on. Fornication. Wickedness. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder. So, so let's let's start with it. Where, where uh, God gave them up. Watch this. Watch this. Read it again. And even and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God because you don't want to know. Because you don't want to know what God says concerning life and human beings. Read on. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You know, you're clueless. You don't know nothing. So you're going to make up stupid shit and try to bring it to us. Read on. To do those things which are not convenient. It's not convenient to kill a life inside of you that God created. Read on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. You're unrighteous. You don't know the laws of God. Fornication. You fornicate and have children out of wedlock. And when you realize it's not going to work, you say, I want to kill the baby. Read on. Wickedness. You're a wicked person to kill a defenseless child that can't fight back. Read on. Covetousness. You're covetousness because you say, if I bring this child into the world, it's going to mess up everything that I covet. I can't do, I can't have a hot girl summer. I can't live my life. You covet other things instead of valuing the life that's inside of you. Read on. Maliciousness. You're a malicious person to sit down and feel that child moving inside of you. Or know that you could bring forth life and you want to maliciously take it. Read on. Full of envy. And you're full of envy. You envy the life that's inside of you. And you put your life before it. Instead of saying, I'm going to be a good mother to this child. Whether the father's there or not. Or if you can't take care of the child, give it to somebody else who'll love it. But why the first thing that comes to your mind is I'm going to kill it. Read on. Murder. You're a murderer, as the Bible says. Read on. Debate. And now you want to argue with us. You want to debate whether this is right or wrong. Read on. Deceit. And you get deceitful. Because when I ask y'all questions, y'all don't want to give straight answers. Because you're full of shit, just like your life. Read on. Malignity. And you try to malign others. That's where the word malignity comes from. You try to malign others. Read on. Whisperers. And you whisper. That's why Z had to ask you who you in cahoots with in the back chats. Read on. Whisperers. Backbiters. Haters of God. 
That's what you heard tonight. You heard people come on stage that hate God. So you're not going to expect, I don't let you speak because I want to hear what you have to say. I let you speak so I could use the word of God to condemn you and to let the people who believe in God be edified. You hate God and I need to pull it out. Read on. Despiteful. And you're despiteful. That's why some of you come into the room thinking that you're going to get, all you're going to take is L's in this room. You come in this room to despitefully try and uh, uh, run circles around us because you think we're a bunch of dumb black Christians. Read on. Proud. And you're proud with your stupidity. Read on. Boasters. You're boasting. You come in here in the room boasting and you know nothing. Read on. Inventors of evil things. And y'all invent bullshit that we don't care about. Okay, the people of God that knows that this place is about to be destroyed, all we're waiting for is for God's uh, kingdom to come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We don't care about your inventions. You guys just uh, solidify our faith with your stupidity and your evil that this world needs to be destroyed, as God says, and a new kingdom needs to be established on this earth. Read on. Disobedient to parents. The way y'all talk on here, we know your parents never taught you no respect. Of how much women I heard them ask a hundred times to be quiet so we could speak. Your, your parents never taught you nothing. So that's why you come up here the way you come up here. Read on. Without understanding. You don't know nothing. Read on. Covenant breakers. Because we'll even try to get you to be quiet so we could speak and you can't keep that uh, 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 peace between us. Read on. Without natural affection. And the, the swears that came out your mouth's hair, I know none of y'all are in relationships with natural affection because you don't know God. And all relationships, all true meaningful relationships start with the belief in God because God is love. He is the example of love because he gave us life. You black demonic monsters, you evil niggas that don't know God, you deserve the death that the Bible says is coming to you. Read on. Implacable, unmerciful. You have no mercy inside of you to go to an abortion clinic and sit on a table because the white man found a way to rip a child out of you and you're fine with it. No mercy is inside your heart. Read on. Who knowing the judgment of God? Who you knows they, written in this Bible, the judgment of God. Read on. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. So I'm glad we had to read to that point. So nobody says I'm using my own words. You are worthy of death. The child that you kill, you, you're, you're going to die right behind it. It may not be right now. Give me that in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes where uh, be because uh, it's yes, not executed speedily. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Because when you murdered that child, God didn't judge you on the operating table. He may wait a couple of years or he may make you get old with that child that you killed. Because sentence against that murder of that child, you didn't give it a chance, a fighting chance at life because God didn't get you right away. Read on. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's why a lot of you come up here and you talk shit because you think that God is not going to touch you. That's why the Bible speaks of a great day of judgment. That's what God has awaiting you. So the next one of you sisters that think that it's, oh, you just, you made up in your mind because of science or some stupid, some stupidity that the white man told you that it's, it's okay to kill it because of the stages that you catch it or whatever. You remember there's a God. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither, can, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Once God has your paperwork in his hands and it's time for you to die, there's no, there's no escaping it. So you think about the next time that you go to rip uh, innocent life from your womb because of your covetousness, because of your, your maliciousness, 
because of your hatred for God. Because the only thing I'm going to use to say that abortion is wrong is God. I'm not going to no white man science. I'm not going to no psychology books. I'm not going to nothing else. Because all that matters is God. With that, I mute my mic. Hey, ZB, you still there? All right. It's been another episode of Biblical Smoke. Uh, make sure you hashtag Biblical Smoke on your social media, and email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com as we wrap it up. Uh, we're going to close it out with Matthew 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she have wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she have poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her. And with that, we'll see you all next time. Shalom.